Okay, let's move on here. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Shoot. So sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, Terabuck, please put the name plates on for each individual. I gave you them beforehand. On the left hand corner, we have Asmongold. He's going to be the co host. He's going to help me uh, moderate, uh, move along topics, and kind of you know, let people know how much time they left, have left on the topic if, if, if we reach the end point. Um, so welcome, Asmongold. Thanks um, for having me. Next to Asmongold, we have Destiny. Um, for those of you that don't know him, he's one of the original string personalities who has moved on from gameplay streams to focus on a lot of political content, including debates and discussions on his live channel that typically pitches a left versus right um, sort of thing. Um, Destiny, w w would you like to explain what your political stances are? Um, well, do you want to introduce everybody and then we can do that? Or? Well, I was going to do one by one so we could just do that and then after each person's introduction. Um, yeah, sure. I guess broadly, you would probably describe me in the United States as a progressive. Um, economically, I, I, I don't know where I would necessarily fall. I'm a defender of capitalism, um, but I also believe that we need a lot of government intervention for capitalism. So either like a neoliberal or a social democrat, um, I want one of these terms, depending on what you want to take. So yeah. And then generally, um, I argue for like progressive social issues. So making sure that everybody in society is nice and happy and accounted for. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and yes, this... I am reading off something. Okay, I'm, listen, I'm very nervous. Okay, I haven't felt this way for a while, so I'm reading oh, off. Oh, that's something. okay. Okay, if you great. keep talking about how nervous you are, it usually makes you less nervous. So. Yeah, true. Okay, <laughs> listen. Okay, listen. Okay, um, below below Asmongold, we have Sargon of Akkad. He's a popular YouTuber, sometimes known as a skeptic. He's a member of the UK political party UKIP. Um, you know, did some. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, welcome, Sargon. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. It's uh, great to meet you. Uh, cool, my pleasure. Would you like to uh, tell us about your political stances? I'm just an English liberal. I think that the less the state inv interferes in people's lives, the better. I think that, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that uh, I should live in a sovereign country, which is why I'm a member of UKIP. I'm for individual rights. I'm pretty socially liberal and I'm, I'm quite fiscally liberal as well, to be honest. I think, uh, I, I think capitalism is definitely uh, the, the best alternative of the options available, the best choice of the options available. Pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have to the right of destiny, Hassan Abi. Um, he's a former Young Turks contributor. I'm still uh, at the Young Turks, bro. What the fuck? Damn. This is a harsh way of telling you you've been fired, man. Uh, <laughs> Live on air. Sorry. Uh, Hassan Abi, he is a Young Turks contributor, a social, a socialist content creator who has recently started streaming on Twitch. Wait, am I... did you lie, Hassan? Are you a socialist now? That's not, I mean, well, I, I, I mean, I say I'm a leftist, but I don't mind if people say socialist. Well, okay. why don't you explain where you are coming from then? Like, what are your political affiliations? Where are you coming from? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I'm broadly speaking an anti-capitalist. I understand that there are um, uh, certain structural inefficiencies uh, built into capitalism that uh, create a lot of conflict. And I think we need to address those problems, uh, not just at the social level by... Uh, advocating for social change, but slowly but surely through uh, democratic procedures, uh, ultimately uh, give ownership back to the workers. And, you know, that's my perspective. Okay, Great. that makes sense. Thank you for being, thanks for being here. It's, uh, it's a pleasure having you on, Hassan. Um, and yeah, thank you. Uh, next, under Destiny and to the right of Sargon, we have Nick Fuentes. Is, did I pronounce, pronounce that correctly, Fuentes? Yes, correct, correct. Awesome, awesome. We have Nick Fuentes. Um, he's a self-described American nationalist. Um, who attended the Charlottesville rally and claims he had to leave Boston University because of subsequent threats, correct? Correct, yeah, awesome. yeah. Would you like to describe some of your political stances? or? Sure, sure. Uh, I also do a podcast, America First. That's kind of uh, old news trying to put that behind me. But yeah, to describe my political views, I would call myself a reactionary, a nationalist, a paleoconservative. Um, if we're talking about the size and scope of government, I would probably say I'm basically indifferent to the size of government so long as the will of the people is executed, so long as virtue is upheld. On uh, economics, I would probably say I'm a capitalist, although uh, with major skepticism, with major uh, trepidation, because I think um, things have not really gone so well in the past couple of decades with capitalism, so I am for a significant amount of regulation. So that's about where I'm at. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so before we start, let me, uh, and this is weird, but let me grab a Coke. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a little parched. Okay. Give me a second here. Um, 
Okay. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll get this started. We'll get ready for the first topic. We're going to give the first group of people about five minutes or so to give their opening thoughts, and then the other group can give their rebuttal, and uh, we'll go from there. We've got a number of topics set up for you guys, and uh, we'll get ready for them as soon as uh, train is ready to go. I am... Oh, shoot. Uh, okay. Give me... Okay. Shoot. I forgot what... Listen, I forgot what monitor this is on. Give me a second here. Um Okay, it's on. Never mind. We're good. We're good. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that, boys. Okay. Um, so, so this first topic, um, as most of us know, Blair White was supposed to be here with us. Um, but, you know, I got a last second, you know, in the time from two hours cancellation. So the first topic was, you know, we had it in here. I, I wanted to get her thoughts on it and see what she thought and kind of get everyone involved. Blair White is probably one of the least informed people on trans rights. So it's probably better she's not here. Don't worry. Okay. Well, since. Okay. Well, that gives away the topic then. The first yeah. topic, obviously, we want to <laughs> oh, I go thought over... these were published. I'm sorry. Uh, surprise. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the first one we want to talk about is the uh, Trump obviously made a uh, transgender ban to where transgender individuals are not able to serve into the military. That becomes effective on, I believe, April 12th. And um, there's been a lot of obvious, you know, pushback on this for a number of different reasons and people stating how much money trans people cost, et cetera. And um, I think that we probably should start since, you know, we have the, uh, this is kind of like their home team here, Destiny and Hassan. Why don't we go ahead and let the, uh, the out-of-state team begin, and uh, Nick and Sargon, if you guys want to give your uh, opening thoughts on this subject. Sounds yeah. good. Uh, who wants to go first? Sargon, do you want to take the lead on this one? Uh, honestly, I actually don't have any particular feelings on the Trump transgender military ban. I mean, joining the military isn't a right, so... I mean, it's really down to the administration in charge, I would say. Personally, I probably wouldn't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm open to hearing arguments from both sides. I'm really not invested in this one. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. Well, Nick, I'm sure is. So let's hear. What, what do you think, Nick? Absolutely. That's a little rough. little rough, Sargon. You're leaving me out to dry here. A bit of a, a centrist. That's okay. I'm, well, I, I'm I'd say we're not on the same side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Well, well I'll, I'll try to convince you. I'll try to win you over. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, my feelings on this are basically ambivalent also. Um, you know, I look at all these people who try to get involved in the military and I just sort of scratch my head and wonder why. You know, we look at women who want to join the military. We look at transgenders who want to join the military. And I think, why should anybody want to be so gung ho and excited to to do what? To go fight for Israel in the Middle East, to go and uh, do all this other stuff abroad that really has nothing to do with our national interest. I will say, however, that if we look at the the end game. What is the mission? What is the purpose of the military? Well, the purpose of the military, well, I guess theoretically, what the purpose of the military ought to be is to defend the interests of the United States of America, foreign and domestic. And I think that if you're looking at how we can fulfill that end, if we're looking at how we can fulfill that directive, we ought to have people that are the best and the most capable to perform those tasks. Um, and I'm sure probably the opposition here understands what my position is going to be on this, but Basically, I don't recognize the legitimacy of this gender dysphoria, transgender identity. Uh, this is my position as a Catholic. This is my position as a conservative. I look at people who begin to transition either chemically or through surgery or even just superficially changing their dress or something. I look at that as somebody who has some kind of issue with early childhood development, probably somebody who perhaps is suffering from other um, issues mentally. Now, I'm not going to say that everybody who does that is mentally ill. Fortunately, we live in a country and we're on a streaming service where we recognize the rights of everybody. So uh, sure, uh, I guess in this current paradigm, everybody can basically do as they please. But I feel that uh, somebody who decides to embark on that kind of, you know, if you look at the surgery, it's barbaric and ghastly what they do to their own genitals or their own bodies. Uh, if you look at the chemical components, again, it's very rough. Anybody who decides to do that, I don't believe is, is in the frame of mind where they're able to go into a high stress environment. Uh, you look at normal people who go into this high stress environment and they come out with PTSD or other kinds of issues. I just don't think that's the best thing for what we're trying to achieve, whether that is uh, you know, the right thing we're trying to achieve, which is serving our own interest or serving somebody else's interests. So while I am basically ambivalent, you know, uh, I do believe that if we're trying to have a military that has efficacy, that is 
you know, effective in what it's trying to do. I don't believe that having transgenders involved is really going to advance that cause. I don't think it's really going to facilitate that directive being achieved optimally. Do you so th- I'm, I'm basically against it. Do you think that it will actively work against it just for the, you know, to get down your, your position a little bit more? I do. I do believe okay. it'll uh, work against that. All right. Hassan, what do you think? Um, yeah, Wait, can I, open, the, I open on this if you don't want to. I, this is my one of my favorite topics. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to throw it up to destiny in a second. The only thing I was going to say is that, uh, unfortunately, the um, uh, the way the military industrial complex is set up, the United States currently treats the, the United States military as a jobs program. And uh, the Department of Defense is the largest uh, like single body that hires the most trans people worldwide. And the fact that um, Donald Trump on a whim has decided uh, to to ban trans uh, gender troops from uh, serving uh, and and leaving out uh, more than twelve thousand uh, active duty uh, service members in the street uh, without a future is kind of disrespectful. Um, but even beyond that, uh, it it is also not cost effective. It actually costs more money to track down whoever is trans and 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 um, kick them off service. It's, uh, it costs, even if you were to allow all trans members to get gender confirmation surgery, it would cost a fraction of what it costs for the military to pay for Viagra. So, uh, and, and as far as combat readiness goes, uh, medical professionals happen to disagree with Nick, but I'm sure given the fact that he already said sneakily that normal is the opposite of trans uh, during his conversation, that his perspective is a little uh, bigoted. <laughs> and maybe a little misguided too. Isn't, isn't that just definitionally correct though? I should have said, I think normative would have been technically definitionally correct as opposed to, okay. I think, I think normal well, I, would I think we can, correct. we can debate the, the definition of normal is normal. What's average or is normal? What's acceptable. I, you know, it can go either way. Uh, destiny. What about you? Yeah. Okay. So firstly, um, the, the premise that we have the best and most capable people in our military is already not true. It's volunteer military, right? So basically some people volunteer if they pass whatever requirements we set for them to pass. So whatever your uh, requirements are, like we had a basic training or whatever, uh, background test or whatever, as long as you pass that, you're, you're good to go. So this was already studied by the Department of Defense. Our militaries already had transgender people in the military. There's some, it's anywhere between like 1,000 to 10,000 people um, who are transgender, who are identified as transgender people are in the military and they perform fine. Um, this idea that everyone's gonna get PTSD or all these people are gonna die in combat, 80% of military roles are non-combat roles. Like a lot of what our military does, like not all these people even deploy, you know, let alone actually see an active combat zone, um, let alone when you are deployed or even deployed into things that are even near combat zones, right? There are plenty of jobs that could be filled um, occupationally in the military that are non-combat roles. Um, um, I mean, for the other stuff in terms of the, like the other kind of loaded things, like the surgery is barbaric or the chemical parts, or I mean, I don't know, I can only go by what the science says there. And I mean, all of that is approved by the APA and it seems to be effective in helping transgender people, you know, live their lives. So I don't know how that's relative or how that's relevant to any of the military stuff. But um, yeah, I guess for the military stuff, like most roles in the military are non-combat and the effectiveness of transgender people has already been evaluated by the military and they've already been integrated into the military in an effective fashion. I don't know why we would change that with weird executive orders. Could you president. elaborate a little bit on what you said about the effectiveness of the transgender individuals? And sure. So for instance, so yeah, so in the military, there are tons of non-combat roles, right? These are support roles. Mm-hmm. These are, um, these can be things domestically. There are just tons of these types of roles. Um, transgender people already seem to be able to fill these roles and they do it in an effective manner. Um, so for instance, um, one of the things I believe Trump said was was that, well, you know, when you get transgender people in the military, they have all this gender dysphoria and it's ruining their lives and they need all the support and their help. Um, none of that was ever borne out in any of the research. The military already did, um, you know, a lot of research related to transgender people to see if it was effective to have them in the military or if they were wasting a lot of money, you know, helping them transition and all of this stuff. And none of that ever seemed to be substantiated. It seemed like the integration of transgender people into the military was working pretty effectively. Do you concede in any way that transgender individuals per capita would cost the military more than a normal individual or excuse me, not normal, normal? <clears throat> individual uh, um so uh, per capita is kind of a hard way to say that like okay. if we were randomly selecting transgender people from society and throwing them into the military then yeah but the people that make it into the military are already passing a, a, there's already a selection happening there these are people that have made it out of basic training and these are people who've already been evaluated to be like good members serving in the military so once they've made it past whatever requirements they have to go through to get into the military then yeah then they're fine sure 
So Nick, do you think that them passing those different uh, qualifications to be into the military grants them the uh, ability to maybe have the government potentially pay more money for them? Or do you think the means outweigh the, uh, or the ends outweigh the means or what? Uh, I don't really care about the fiscal cost. It's actually sort of okay. interesting. Well, maybe not ironic, but interesting that Hassan Piker would refer to uh, the cost right out of the gate. You know, my my qualm about this was never about fiscal cost. You know, people talk about, especially on my side, things costing a lot of money. The government prints as much money as they need. And so I tend it's to look the, at it from it's the a most moral common argument Republicans use when they don't want to seem like they're being bigoted. And it's wow. incorrect. Wow. So I just wanted Hassan, to put it out there. I am an I am first of all I'm an Afro Latino and a civil rights activist. I don't really identify as Republican, and it's it's sort of a shame that you would lump me in with them. It's actually a little bit prejudiced, I think. Well, um, we so just had a left a little versus bit right debate, so it's understandable that I would uh, address that perspective. Well, you can yeah. rationalize your bigotry all you want. Well, I, but, I think uh, that we should we should focus we should focus our discussions and our debates towards the opinions of other people that are on this show <laughs> rather <laughs> than <laughs> the. Uh, uh, Okay, rather than the larger Wait, political party that may or may not be associated with. Can we be, serious, yeah, can we be serious for a moment? Yeah, yeah, for a moment? I think Hassan should apologize. There are good people on both sides of that Charlottesville march, okay? Yeah. <laughs> true? No, true? you're right. <laughs> Apologies well, to all the Nazis. Sorry, boys. Well, Nick, you were actually at the Charlottesville thing, right? Weren't you? Correct, correct. I was wow. at Charlottesville. You Wait, were, we should we should finish the we should finish the transgender right now. We should finish the transgender thing. No, we're going to. We're going to. And I just want I have one at a time, please. So obviously, uh, uh, Nick, you you said that you were Catholic. Do you feel like your religious persuasions have any sort of, uh, you know, they educate your decisions or your opinions on transgender individuals at all? And do you think that manifests the way that you feel about them serving in the military? Of course, of course. Okay. From a philosophical perspective, we believe that what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman is something that is greater um, than this sort of ad hoc adjustment that a person could make in the middle of their life. You know, I look at a man who decides to have, again, a barbaric, I will use that, it is a loaded term, a barbaric and ghastly surgery to move things around and snip things and put them inside out and all this other stuff, and they can wear a dress and go on different hormones. But we believe that sex and gender, number one, are the same thing, but number two, are, are greater than these material adjustments that a person can make. And moreover, we find that gender is deeper than the individual. We find that gender does have with it certain responsibilities does have with it certain natures and temperaments. And so I, I basically reject this idea that uh, gender is something that doesn't exist or it's so arbitrary that anybody can serve in the military or it could be changed. You know, I guess it really, it really lays bare this fundamental difference in what we believe about what gender is. I think that's why it, it really is a greater debate because, and I'll, I'll point out the reason I basically indifferent to this issue is because as uh, Hassan and Destiny have pointed out, you're correct. Uh, the military is this large bureaucratic enterprise. It does act as a big employer. It is volunteer. Most of the roles are non-combat. So having transgender troops in the military, is that the end of the world for our operational capacity? Uh, frankly, I don't think so. I think it is a symbolic issue. And you look at Trump instituting the transgender military ban, of course, this is playing to his base. Of course, this is not something I don't believe that should be the priority of the administration. And you're right, probably the costs are high to adjust it. But it is a, it is a symbolic issue. It's symbolic about what our country is going to be, what the administration says the country is going to be, and personnel, procedural things are a big part of that. So I think that's really the fundamental issue we're trying how, to get at. Uh, Wait, how can I ask about... about? Oh, okay. I'm really curious. Do you think women should be allowed to serve in the military? And I, know I was I, I was actually about to ask the same yeah. question, but with gay people. So was I. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, no. So how do you feel about that, Nick? Yeah, no, I think it should just be straight men. That's uh, really that's, should, is there a particular the reason why you don't think women should be able to serve or gay men should not be able to serve? Or yeah, well, <laughs> feelings? sure. Well, we'll start with women, I guess. You know, it's actually kind of funny to me. What kind of world do we want to live in where we're sending our daughters, sisters, mm -hmm. mothers into the Middle East to get exploded. Well, you were just talking about symbolism, which is precisely why well, I have an issue with it because well, I'm looking at it currently, as I, I described before, can I from a perspective of perspective hiring here? practices. It seems Nick. like you just want to go ahead and insert your talking points. You want to hear what I'm going to say here? Because I'm going to lay out an argument. No, can I just want to make I, sure that you don't frame it in the okay, way that just, you want to frame second. it. one can second. Can I interject here? Uh, <laughs> as, as we've stated before earlier, only 20 or so percentage of the population of the military even sees any combat. So I do think that it could be, Nick, do you feel like it's disingenuous for you to say that you're sending your wives and daughters 
out to war whenever less than half of them would ever even see any sort of a threat at all. Well, I don't think it's disingenuous. You, you that, sorry to jump okay. in. I, I'm actually not that sorry, familiar no, with no. U.S. military practice here. Um, do women actually see frontline combat in the U.S. military? They do. That was Greenland oh, very recently. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. So, so you're right. So you're right. Trans it is people, by the way, person. just for the record, trans people see combat as well. Uh, okay, okay, thank you for that. The point being is that if women are being sent uh, overseas into these horrible conditions, I think that's actually shameful for a country to do. You know, and, and you say, well, there's these non-combat roles where women can be in. I don't believe women should be in the non-combat roles either. I don't think women, frankly, I don't think they should be in the business of government. I believe that, uh, again, and I, I talked about this with my Catholic values, this is where my position comes from, is informed by the fact that when you have once you acknowledge that gender is distinct and different, once you understand that men and women have biological differences, which are physical, they're mental, temperamental, I mean, there's, there's far-reaching distinctions between the two, you must necessarily then recognize that there are consequences for their function and role in society. We don't simply believe that we are, we're all humans, we're all pink on the inside. The only difference is arbitrary uh, genitalia, reproduction organs. No, we believe that men and women in their distinctions have different capacities and therefore different functions. So to see women going out and doing all these different things, I think that well, we should take care of our women. I think that our women should be frankly raising the children. They should be taken care of, not in these sorts of positions. So um, I also think it, it has something to do with the dynamic when you have a uh, mixed company in a bureaucratic institution, you know, the military, I believe should be a boys club. Maybe you can have women, and other non-combat jobs in the private sector, or maybe even in the public sector. But I believe that in the military, uh, it is it should function in such a way that you have this brotherhood, you have this element where everybody's on the same page. What tends to happen when women uh, enter into a situation where it's formerly an all-male space is it changes the dynamic. And we witnessed this all over the place in many different um formerly male dominated spaces, you know, we know that there is a dynamic that exists between men and women that does not exist between men and men. And this kind of goes along do with why we should allow for, Do you have any like data to back up into your point? point? I don't, I don't I'm really cut you off, but like you keep going on these tangents and I'm, I'm afraid it always feels like it's just your kind of personal perspective and like what you want society to look like or what you want the U.S. military to look okay. like. And I would really be... Well, uh, I do think find yeah, out what your where, that how, is a very good that is a very good question and uh, Chris, yeah. you do bring up Hassan Nick obviously you are bringing up a lot of different assertions right that mm -hmm. women change Certainly. the dynamic of a workplace they change uh, the way that the military would function and whether that's true or not true is you know it depends but do you have anything specifically any empirical data or evidence that shows this or is it just your personal observation? Well, I basically reject the validity of empiricism over a priori kind of uh, rationale, a priori justifications. Okay. So, uh, well, so can, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. So an a priori justification basically says a thing is true in itself. A thing is true. And we basically know this because... It's simply common sense. So I know uh, Destiny and perhaps even Sargon are, are big believers. <laughs> Wait, I just have to interject believers. for one quick second. A priori and common sense are not the even remotely similar okay, to one another. Yeah. But keep oh, going. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Yeah, yeah go for that's it. That's great. That's great, Steve. So basically, Steve and I'm sure Sargon and maybe even Hassan believe in this stuff where everything must be determined by a person in a lab coat. Everything must be determined by a study. We have to crunch the numbers. Um, I think we know. I think we know our own nature. I think we know from history. I think we know from tradition what works, what does not work. We're all human beings. I think everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. So we could also look at all kinds of other uh, studies. I mean, there's a lot of things that suggest that uh, men and women are biologically distinct. I don't know if you need to study to demonstrate that, but um, maybe you do. Biological distinction aside, um, I was asking about combat readiness or like women uh, serving in the military and whether there are like negative consequences. Your assertion wasn't just that like, uh, men and women are different. You also then, uh, you have a fundamentally different perspective than both Destiny and I do in regards to uh, the efficiency of, of uh, women and men co-mingling inside of the, the, the military or even in the public space or even in positions of government, apparently, which I didn't know you 
held I, that I think position. I think Nick's argument mostly is that the presence of women in these well <laughs> sure well whatever you we got Ben call Shapiro it, right? over here what, what he's I'm trying to saying. argue what he's trying to argue is the fact that women do change the dynamics so even if they're not necessarily affecting their own combat readiness and even if they don't directly contribute to this they do it indirectly by being present is that correct yeah so I basically correct. Okay. I think um, this argument, we don't go anywhere here because we have to get a little bit more fundamental, right? Okay. So um, Nick's positions on well, hang, military... Hang on, this, Nick. Before, you, you... before you jump off, I, I actually am interested in okay. Sans' answer to that. Um, do you think that women don't change the social dynamic of male-only spaces? I don't think that that change in that social dynamic is actually uh, yielding negative consequences. And if you put up like rape statistics or some shit like that... Um, that is uh, that is not on the fault. That's not the fault of the women who are serving the military, but more so the fault of the lack of regulation or our culture I, I surrounding. Think the regulations um, the, already well, against. Oh, that, that's assault. actually a very that's a very good point, Hassan. So you're saying that the the problems that good occur points. are not necessarily the result. And it happens of the women with the same themselves. sex as well. It's not necessarily because of the women themselves, but the men that are causing the problems because of the women. Now, Nick, and it's not just you, the men that are causing the problems as well. Men are causing well. problems for themselves as well. I'm saying these are like issues the, that the, exist. This, look, man, this happens in Warcraft guilds. Like I fully understand how this works. It's it's very basic. And Nick, I I think that the argument that you're going to use and I correct me if I'm wrong, is you're going to use a pragmatic argument and say that even though this is true, you still think they should go with whatever works best. Is that correct? Or uh, where are you on that subject? Is that are addressed to me? Yeah. Yes. That's you, Hazania. Who, me? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not going with the pragmatic argument. I'm arguing that... Um, well, well, I'm arguing that you can show me a study that says it doesn't change its operational, whatever, and, and I'll tell you that it's politically motivated. I'll tell you that what we know about gender, what we know about who we are, supersedes that. I mean, these things are necessarily following from these conclusions. And I think it's interesting because you asked Hassan, you said, do you believe, or I think it was uh, Sargon who asked Hassan, do you believe that women change the dynamic? And he jumped right into, um, well, maybe that's the case. However, it shows that it doesn't change our operational readiness. So if you concede that we have these biological distinctions, we have social dynamics that change as a result, it necessarily follows that an all-male military is different from a military with men and women. And just simply look at the dynamic that is caused by introducing women to the military. Can we say, without having to look at some fucking lab coat showing us, well, according to my calculations, can we say that uh, you know the latter military with men and women and you have all these dynamics and relationships is more efficient than the former, than one which is full of men? I don't think you can. So uh, I, I would, I would wonder... I, I want to hear, do you concede that... Do you think the United States military as it stands well, today is more efficient than the United States military when uh, there were less women enlisted? Because women have always served in some capacity. Di different different time, dated different the war effort in some capacity, but uh, you're, you're talking about efficiency, and yet you have nothing to, nothing to put it up against. Well, like, um, so I think beyond this, like uh, this is a silly talking point because I'm using this as uh, I'm using this as an analogy for the world that Nick wants to build versus the world that I think we should exist in, and mm -hmm. and we all we both understand this concept. Uh, I, I it, it, he, that's precisely why I think like combat readiness is only as good as a talking point. But what we're talking about simply is like women working and coexisting alongside men as equals or same with trans uh, men and trans women. That's precisely why I'm talking about this. Otherwise, like, I don't care about the military's imperialist mission of going out and like fucking killing brown children uh, so that some Halliburton executive can make money. Yeah, so, I, I agree. We both hate the we both hate the military's current objectives and what it stands for. Um, you know, I, I think we're on the same page there, but I think that's actually that is the fundamental distinction. You say, well, we don't want to live in the world Nick is building. We want to live in a world where we treat everyone equally. And I'm saying that by the very nature of who we are, we are not equal. We may be equal before the law and we're equal before God. But we are not equal. And if we're not equal, if we have these distinctions, which are qualitative and quantitative, then it necessarily follows People have, we have to have a society where difference is allowed, where you have specialization, where you have people living in accordance with their own unequal, different, distinct nature. And so it's actually you who wants to build a world. I want to live in a world where it's conducive 
And it works alongside our nature, not going up against it. You want to live in a world where we're going to bend the society, bend our nature to our will. We will force everyone to be equal. Even though equality has never existed in history, empirically, I mean, there's just in no way, shape or form. Is there any evidence you talk about empiricism for equality? But because you think, according to your ideology, that this is the positive good, this is the vision we all must strive for. We are going to force society to its knees to bend it to our will. And I just think that's folly. I think that's. Uh, I think okay, so. Wait, 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 Hold on, hold on. I got to. I got to. Changes, right? Oh, okay. Right, I got to talk about both. Okay. Right, so the problem is that right, right now, okay, this issue, well, th we can't resolve this issue because these are natural extensions of our underlying philosophy, right? So even if we could demonstrate okay. to somebody like Nick, even if we could say, look, women serving in the military makes the military more efficient, Nick is going to say, well, women serving in the military are contrary to kind of like the baser nature of what a woman is, right? Would you agree with that, Nick? That even if women did make the military better, that doesn't necessarily mean you want them there because you don't think that's what their role in society ought to be. Right. Uh, well, I would say that you probably wouldn't be able to be shown legitimately that they improve the military. But yeah, even if you showed me a study that yeah. said something like that, I would say, yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. So, this, so this entire conversation is already kind of talking past the point, right? So now, even if we could demonstrate, so I think it, it has been that there is trouble on integrating women into the military because, you know, there's sexual harassment, there's rape stuff, stuff that doesn't necessarily happen when there's only men. All that stuff still does, still does happen when there are men. Um, what somebody like me or Hassan would argue was that because we're liberals, right, that we would argue that building a society that enables people or empowers people people to make decisions um, rel relative to what they want to do is more important than trying to force everybody into some kind of like naturalistic setting, right? Like, well, women tend to have these features, men tend to have these features, therefore we should relegate them exclusively to those roles in society. Most people, at least in liberal society, are not okay with that. Um, I, like, typically the, the weird thing when you go down that kind of like that naturalistic route where you say, well, we ought to do what we were born to do is we, we end up drawing very arbitrary lines in some places. For instance, I could be wrong, but I don't think anybody in here regularly hunts for their food or grows their own crops, right? You know, we're very small. We have small, weak bodies. We don't exercise as much as we probably should. And the reason we don't is because we have other people in society that take care of that for us, right? We don't necessarily have to follow any hardcore natural distinction in terms of what our bodies are designed to do because we built a society that allows us to explore other options. And all I do is I merely, and I imagine Hassan as well, you just kind of extend that argument to other things as well, right? Is it possible that if this was like a life or death survival scenario that like a tall man might be better in the military than like a small man? Yeah, sure. But we don't live in life and death scenarios in every single aspect of our lives. So we generally allow people to do things that make them happy. That's usually what we prioritize over what their bodies are intended to do. This is why we give insulin to people with diabetes and we don't let them die in the streets. This is why we have farmers that grow food for people that otherwise couldn't hunt for it. And it's why we enable people to make decisions in society that would otherwise make them happy, even if it's not 100% what they would have been born to do. Are people happy in this society? We have probably the freest, most liberal society in America today. And, and tell me, you look at the suicide rate, you look at the rate at which people are consuming antidepressants. Do you really believe that given total and complete agency, absent tradition, absent the natural law, people are really happier than they were 100 years ago? Because I would probably disagree with that. And maybe people might say that people are less happy because they're forced to conform to certain expectations or Republicans or white supremacy. But I think we all know that the pursuit of happiness ends in misery. The pursuit of satisfaction, of fulfillment, living in accordance with our nature is what affords people that deeper happiness, that deeper satisfaction, that people are acting according to their teleological purpose, people having a purpose. So for example, I would posit that a mother who has five children and took time to raise them and know them and rear them in the way that she wanted to, according to her morals. I imagine that that mother is probably more happy than a 20 year old girl who decides at, at her uh, peak childbearing you know, age, says she's going to get educated. And says she's going to get educated Nick. and have a career and she's going to go make spreadsheets for okay, some, but why did they fight for it or then? something. Do you, do you think that they Let didn't know finish. any better? Well, yeah, I do. Well, I think, I think it was oh, complete. Okay. And so, so you know better yeah. than they do. Um, it was a, it was a minority a argument anyway, quite recently, and yet you don't want to you don't want to admit that women may personally feel, per, perhaps personally feel that they uh, want to also uh, participate in society in meaningful ways. They're misguided. Also, I, I I don't I don't disagree when you say stuff like uh, we are losing our sense the, of purpose and whatnot, but I think that's a consequence right of alienation. Wait, what? Uh, Nick, you think people should have the right to be misguided because it's not necessarily even if you accept all of these things to be true. I mean, I don't take the laws, wait, the natural orders, gold, Why are you? Why are you speaking up the assert? Like he's just saying that they're misguided. Like, no, I, I understand that. I'm following. He's building through. on the premise. And yeah, the premise of them being misguided. Do you think that they should be forced, or yeah, basically forced into fulfilling these different gender roles? Before that, we continue, before we continue this, if someone's on a point, let them finish. If you'd like to rebuttal, please let them finish all the way. And this goes for everybody here. Please, thank you. Um, Asmund, continue. 
Yeah, um, I, I was asking, like, obviously, people can do, like, they can be a mother of five or they can do spreadsheets. And I think the question here and, uh, you know, what this ties back to with the transgender military ban is the fact that they actually don't have that choice. And do you think that it's fair in a free society to prevent people from doing what they want to do? That's a great question. And um, I, I think, and I'm going to answer this question directly, the problem with with this kind of idea is that we at once want a culture where people are encouraged to make the right decisions, but maybe they have a little bit of liberty to maneuver outside that. Okay. And this is a pretty open-ended question because the question is, at what point do you say you have so much liberty that you get a society like we have today? Because I would say, for example, today, I think a lot of people who come at this issue where I come from would say that we have a society that is corrupt, which is misguided, which is to a great extent, there's a lot of evil. There's a lot of misery, which is self-inflicted. And we would say, well, at the one hand, on the one hand, we would like a little bit of liberty. At what point backwards in history can we trace back the moment when it led to this inevitable consequence where it's a free for all, everybody's making the wrong choices. So I would probably say you look at maybe like 60 years ago, for example. And although there were not laws against certain things, there was a culture which discouraged people from sort of stepping outside of line. I think that's probably what we have to have, but I don't think you're able to do that without a long tradition of these traditions and, um, and, and natural instincts and so forth being put into the legal code. So it's a very okay. tricky issue. What, okay, uh, well, well, I don't, I don't think it's... Yeah, uh, real quick, that, closing thoughts here Destiny or Hassan, uh, if you'd like to respond yeah. to that, please go ahead and we'll wrap this up. Hassan, Destiny. Ahead, Destiny. No, yeah, sure. I, I don't necessarily... Up. Yeah, I don't think this is necessarily a tricky issue. It just like, well, like, unfortunately, like this conversation, we're talking past each other because there are more fundamental things that need to be resolved, right? But like my answer is always going to be that people should be allowed to fail rather than forced to be relegated into some role that society is predetermined is optimal for them. That generally in Western society, um, like, for instance, you talk about like a mother having five kids is happy than a CEO or whatever, that may or may not be true, but we would say a woman should be allowed to choose what she wants to do. Um, same thing with any man, right? If a man is born and he happens to be a little bit you know, more powerful than a, another man by the time he goes through puberty for whatever reason, we wouldn't tell that man, you know, stop working on computers. You need to go to the mines and work because you know, you're a stronger man. We generally in liberal society let people make these decisions because that's just the thing we've decided to value. Um, I mean, I guess we can go fundamental and, and try to argue on, on, I guess, more collectivist stuff versus like liberal stuff, but th that seems to be the 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 case that we've made today, this idea that, um, this idea that we're, we've been like on this inevitable path towards destruction, you know, solely due to liberalism. I don't know if that's necessarily true, right? You know, you could argue that capitalism, for instance, is the result of a lot of these things. The fact that we prioritize profits and companies over anything related to happiness in society probably encourages a lot of people that aren't happy. Um, the the explosion of technological growth is something that also, you know, has probably gone against a lot of people's happiness, people's obsessive use of like Facebook or other social medias that kind of, you know, fuck with their heads and whatnot. Um, now, maybe in your society, you would argue you that you have the ability to, to legislate against that harder you would do something like make like social media illegal if it was contrary to a society or something but I don't think that most people in, in at least liberal societies today would be okay with that the idea that some essentially like a, a Catholic dictator or a theologian would kind of dictate to them you know this is what you ought to do in society you ought not be allowed to engage in this because it's against like the, the natural order or the natural role of what humans ought to do I don't think most people would be very satisfied with that type of society well the trick uh, can really I, is can I ask a, yeah, can yeah, ask a Sargon, can please let Sargon go um, ahead. Yeah. So do you think that there is any kind of social responsibility destiny? Um, to, to who and for what? To the civilization that we've inherited to the future of that civilization. Um, ooh, this is getting real financial. So I would argue that you have some responsibility to um, participate in society in a way that's not detrimental to other people. Uh, but I mean, as long as you're not necessarily hurting other people, um, then I think that for the most part, your rights should be respected. To, to do what you want. But what, what, what if this actually level. leads to the end of the society? Is there is there any moral? Um, what do you mean by end of society? Like humans go extinct, or like we lose yeah, a well, war? I mean, or... not humans, but like that society in particular. For, I mean, I guess at some point we're going to talk about birth rates. So let's assume that women just decide they're not going to have children. Um, I mean. I think I would be, that's a rough one, but I think I would be more okay with that than saying that like you are going to become the birthers and now you need to have children. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting, like Nick posits this idea that people have these natural roles that they want to fill, but you know, in the World War II era, um, 
you know, it was it was attempted in several countries to incentivize people to have more children. Um, you know, people offered these massive payouts to people with more children. There were penalties mm -hmm. if you didn't have enough, um, and it just doesn't work. Like, if given the well, opportunity, that's not to true. It does work. In in Denmark, they did uh, just an ad campaign where they just encouraged people. Look, Denmark's birth rates are going down. Have kids, and there was like a five percent spike on in the first year. It does work. It's all about uh, well, what you, I know, I know that what this you is... persuade people is important. And if you think that your civilization is a good thing, then how is continuing that civilization not also a good thing? How is it not a moral responsibility? Um, well, th 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 that's a really heavy question on whether or not you have a moral responsibility to supersede an individual person's liberty in order to further the human race by forcing them to I have children. I didn't say it superseded but, your but, but, liberty. I, I'm saying it gives you a duty, an obligation. Well, sure. Well, also, I'm, I'm uncomfortable yeah. on the empirical grounds. I don't know yeah. about the Denmark thing, but I know that in World War II, um, like I know that there were several countries that tried to heavily incentivize people to have children, and it failed. It never worked. Sure, but um, in, they, in they Denmark worked. recently, it did work. So okay, Denmark's I, I think, Denmark's Denmark's uh, birth rates are still below replacement. It's 1.7 yeah, births per I'm woman. Aware. Yeah, I'm aware. Okay, but there there was a there was an increase. So it's it, I think that culturally we could just have a cultural norm that it is the right thing to do to get married and have children, right? I mean, you could, but I mean, like, you're essentially saying that, like, culturally, we should push people to do things um, that, that dramatically alter the course of their lives that they might not necessarily choose on their own. And I'm really uncomfortable with that with that type of push, unless you really, unless you can we make the... do that anyway. Um, hopefully not to that extent. Or can you give me an example? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, culturally, we push people not to use certain naughty words. You know, we, we've got lots of cultural carrots and sticks. Sargon knows all about that one, right? Sure, yeah, but like, exactly. push, push, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, yeah, I'm going to so, say the N word. Right? Yeah, sure, so I, I'm talking about in, in terms of like having like dramatic impacts on people's lives. Like, yeah, we push people These not to like. Can um, have a dramatic impact on your life. Do you think that not using uh, dirty words has the same, the same impact in you as pushing somebody towards having a child? Maybe. Who knows? But the, okay, the if you legitimately is, believe that, then I, I mean, we, I can't. The, the, I, I think that we're like, talking about two different you, things, right? Listen, I mean, like, right? Not well, letting people say the N word is less substantial than forcing them into having a child. Like, I, I mean, can no, you? No, one, no one is suggesting that anyone can be forced by cultural factors. Okay. But there's, there's definitely, um, there's definitely a cultural push in that direction, and I, I really do think that we are at the point where we have to start considering: is Western civilization worth continuing? Because I mean, we're getting to the point where it, it might not continue unless we actually make those decisions. And the, it is it is essentially, in a way, a kind of an excess of liberty that has done this. Technology has done this to us. It's actually freed us from all of the necessary bonds that we had in previous eras because most people just weren't free enough to be able to choose a life without a family or without, you know, well, having the various um, various conditions thrust upon them by nature. So would but you now go we're back? In that would you would you take back time and, and and go back to an era where technological developments weren't at the place that it's at and people weren't as economically stable, I guess, um, as no, they are on I average in Western in, in developed Western way. nations, in an effort to like in an effort to ensure that the birth rates are similar. Like, how much do no, you let's, personally, let's... Sargon, care about protecting like the 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 Western race? In a similar fashion to Nick, I just want to understand and distinguish your well, thoughts from his. Okay, so I'm not I'm not yeah, really interested in answering that question, Hassan, because it's obviously loaded and pointless. No, no, no. I um, I, I don't think you agree with Nick. That's why I'm trying to make the yeah. distinction well, here. I, I, I'm not really I, I'm I'm not really interested in people like that because it's never going to happen, right? But the the thing that we're, we we can talk about, and this isn't a, a racial question. This is a civilizational question. Um, I mean, like the you know the idea that American civilization somehow excludes black people is ridiculous. They've been there from virtually day one, so it's <laughs> that's not a good point. You know what? Well, <clears throat> just because they've been there from day one, I'm pretty sure if you came over as a slave, you probably feel pretty excluded from society. Just the fact that you were there probably doesn't make you feel very included. No, they had a place in society. It wasn't a good place, but they okay, were so this is, okay. Oh, sure, but generally, oh, when somebody oh, says oh, somebody oh. is inclusive, they don't necessarily mean just a, a place. I never like said if I bring a friend to. Well, you I said they were included. Inclusive. I thought you said included. My bad. Well, okay. they, they were a part of it. No, but inclusive is a, is a particular ideologically loaded word. Yeah, it, it is. It means something to progressives. They were still a part of that society, and they had a particular role, and it wasn't a good role. And I completely agree, obviously, with the abolition of slavery and Jim Crow and all this sort of nonsense. But the, the, the point is, from the position we're at now, Western birth rates are actually declining quite rapidly. And it looks like that this could actually be a bad thing in the long run. 
I mean, so the question is, is our society worth continuing? And then it's like, okay, well, how do we continue the society? Well, we have to make the voluntary choice to have, you know, about at least two or three children each. So is that worth us doing? Is it a good idea? Because if it is a good idea, if we do think that maybe the West actually figured morality out better than the rest of the world, we do have an obligation to keep that going because otherwise we're going to get people who are not believers in Western values, who do not come from Western cultures, who are just simply going to exist longer than we will and will basically forget about us when we're gone. I'm super curious. Where does that obligation to continue society come from? <laughs> our moral judgment that our society is a good society. Where do those moral judgments come from? Because if we're going to make this argument, we got to go real Ourselves. foundational here. We, so, we our own moral perspectives. So if you, let's say that you have a family, and this family, all, all or I'm sorry, I say family, a, a husband and wife, okay? Hmm. These two people want to be programmers. You think that you have the moral authority to tell them, no, you are going to have children because you have to, because we have an obligation to continue Western society. That's or dichotomy. Well, okay, okay. Let me soften that a little. Um, let's say that you think that you have a society full of people that could better allocate themselves into jobs where they would be personally happier. Do you think that you have the moral authority to push so much um, kind of cultural norms to these people that some of them decide to have children instead? I think that we can have people who procreate and work at the same time. Well, yeah, but it seems like given the option to choose to have children, people seem not to if they have the ability not to. That seems to be, I mean, for yeah. all that Nick talks about, like, natural choices, that seems to be naturally what happens. Uh -huh. If you look at countries, yeah, as they become natural, more first. That's, that's it's absolutely totally artificial. Do you feel like that's an outcome of the, uh, of, of the current economic climate? Like, no, I think, no, 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 no. Hey, this is like a very well-observed phenomenon. As countries enter first world status, people just yeah. have less children. They don't need to yeah, have as many children. Not except them. for Israel, except for Israel. Israel's birth rate's going up, but... N never mind that there are still a Silicon Valley. Okay, okay. that's all right. 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 time for one, one second. For one second, please. we did not focus on fucking Jewish people. I know it's real yeah, hard yeah, for okay. you, Nick. I, but okay, let's okay, keep okay, moving. Hold on, hold on. One at a time, a please. Wrench in there. No, no. I'm, I'm before I'm before we get fully into foundational philosophy, uh, I just want to. I I really want to understand what you mean when you talk about Western civilization. Can you point to a specific example that does not include um, uh, other cultures and other civilizations? Uh, and other technological achievements uh, created in in um, like the Islamic culture, for example, in the golden age of Islam, that that the Western civilization has backed on, that uh, that has uh, built itself upon. I mean, Hassan, I'm not saying the Western civilization has not been influenced by other civilizations. It's not just influence. I mean, this is how it works. Like we've always had globalism. Like we've always had globalization. <laughs> We've always, uh, as a consequence I, I of trade, agree. people wars. have always talked to each other and traded what? with one another and fought with one another. I agree. Yeah, humans I, move. Yes, I agree. Okay, so quick, when you talk about the preservation of Western civilization, let me interject, Hassan. Hold that thought uh, one second. And, and, and you talk about birth rates. What? Uh, let me interject real quick. Uh, on Hassan, please continue after. Let's wrap this up and get to the next topic. I think we've really uh, went off on a tangent here. Dude, uh, I've I've been yeah, able to no, finish. Not you, point. not you. I'm referring to everyone else, not just you. You continue, uh, okay. finish your point. I know, I know your chat like spamming fucking Pepega and shit when I'm talking, but holy fuck, let me just like get one thing out. I will put go. it. Um, there you go. Okay, okay. continue. Bad. All right. Relax, more guys. importantly, more importantly, the thing that I'm trying to understand. Look, like. Uh, it, 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 why are we trying to preserve uh, civilization or Western civilization or uh, why are we trying to make sure that like mankind continues is an interesting conversation I guess maybe it's not to me what I'm specifically trying to understand right now is that um, why we're talking about birth rates without talking about the actual factors that contribute to birth rates declining uh, we know that it's technological achievements is one of them socioeconomic status is one of them and we see this with like immigrant cultures that are also coming in or immigrants that are coming into like American society and integrating into American society and by the third generation completely adapting and their their birth rates adjusting um, to sure. the the existing uh, like ethnic groups that are already living in America or in yeah. Western civilization in general. This is consistent across time and it's consistent in all of these other countries. So when we okay. talk about like the declining of the birth rates, it's not a matter of like other people are coming in and replacing the origin the original like ethnicity of that country it's more so that people are actually uh, fucking less quite frankly because they have more access to technology and they're wealthier and they get yeah. um you know they get they use condoms and shit so sure, what do you want to do I mean, how do you want to reverse no, no, okay, that if, if, if you want to actually reverse hang, that hang on, hang on. right i i don't I don't really care about the ethnicity. It's not really the question, right? Because what you've identified correctly is that this is a malaise that is going to affect humanity 
eventually when all all nations will eventually reach a sort of level of technological expertise and wealth where the the question of is really do we have a responsibility to what we've inherited to pass that down to someone or are we allowed to be selfish enough to be the end point of that that's a big question yeah are we going to move on to the next topic I, I I think that I mean unless Destiny or yeah, Hassan has anything to add, like yep. let's just go ahead and go to the next question. Destiny yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I would just I... like to, the summary of my point. Like, um, fuck, Nick said so many dumb things that I didn't get to respond to. <laughs> um, the idea that like uh, that that earlier statement. This is like a really common thing about like, do we really want to send our our wives and daughters off to die in war? I mean, do we want to send our husbands and sons off to die in war? Like, nobody wants to go die in war. Like, that's a really dumb point. I think um, that's not true. I think there are people who absolutely are fine with dying in war. Well, wait. Yeah, in America, they already make those decisions, though, by joining the military. Women are yeah. more delicate. Could you imagine if an intruder broke into your home and you sent your wife down there with a baseball bat or a handgun? I mean, I mean if I was married to, like, awesome. Ronda Rousey, she'd have a much better time against them than I would. So, <laughs> I mean, it depends <laughs> on who Good it is. Good God, man. That's Good true. God. I'm, I'm just I'm stating facts here, man. Yeah, I, mean, we're, yeah. I mean, looking at you, I'm not talking shit, but we're both pretty no, fucking small right. people. There's a decent chance that whichever women you and me wind up with would probably be more <laughs> equipped to defend their houses than we would be, okay? So, yeah, I'm we're going to refer to uh, Ronda Rousey. I know most women and the average women are Ronda Rousey. You know, that the average sense. woman is probably around your same size still, Nick, and probably maybe a little bit bigger. So may, I wouldn't be actually, talking this much shit, okay? okay. Right now, I don't okay. think he's going to fly with your audience, my friend. You really want to go there? I don't give a there? fuck about my audience. I think my audience is probably fantasizing about other stuff than that. Wow. I don't know, man. I don't know. I look Shank's nephew, but this stuff really doesn't fly with a oh, young good one, Nick. Good one, Booger Nick. <laughs> calm down. Oh my god. Make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, calm down. Before, before we ran into Destiny, the fucking ad homes. Let, yeah, so let's, I'm sorry. let's go wait, to the next topic. Wait, 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 no, no, wait, because I wanted to just finish. Yeah. Let, de let Destiny finish. finish. We'll get one rebuttal. We'll yeah. move on. My, my point, real quick, wasn't to body shame Nick because I included myself in that for a reason, right? I'm a pretty small person. I mean, it might be that a, that a woman could defend a house better than me. I'm not entirely sure. Shame, yeah. um, I, I wouldn't like rel but again, like I would make that decision based on kind of like the individual situation, right? And the way that a liberal would. Now, I wouldn't like hardcore, I wouldn't look to like naturalism or open a Bible passage to tell me who ought to be defending our property. Um, in general, I don't think that I want a society where my decisions <clears throat> are hardcore relegated to me from, from a top-down approach, whether that's a governmental system or a theocratical system or a theocratic system or some other like moral arbiter or, or moral police, I guess, telling me what I ought to do. Um, I think that generally in a liberal society, I want to be allowed to make those decisions and I think other people should be allowed to make those decisions. Um, and if you want to make... Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I respond to that? Because that's, that's, I, I, honestly, these are really great points. And I, I wish we had more time to dwell, to dwell on them. Um, but the, the thing is, society itself is kind of the moral arbiter. There isn't really any independent moral decision making, really, in society. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you're constrained by that whether you like it or not. And yeah, the, but we're and, talking and about again, how we form that society, right? Yeah, but, it, but again, it really does come down to the sort of, uh, do, should we be able to just end society? Is that sure, a responsible not? thing to do? Well, because... It seems to have been a good thing that we were handed to us. Yeah, but if society really would have ended before us, then we would have never even been here to have not have had it. So, yeah, I mean, we're all just yeah, I know, that's the thing. They, they, they had a responsibility that they fulfilled. Do you have one that you should fulfill? And you have. You've got kids, haven't you, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I have a responsibility to my son, but I don't know if I have a responsibility to like my great, 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 great grandkids to make sure society still exists. If that means making my own life. Well, miserable. obviously, you won't have that option. That's not something you can do. Well, but that's kind of what you're talking about right now, right? Should we enact policies in society to encourage people to continue? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm not talking about policies at all because I'm completely with you on the the sort of the big state argument regarding this. Okay. But the question really is about what we as a society do. Like Hassan earlier said, mm -hmm. you know, I think that women should have like a full role in society. It's like Hassan, women is uh, women dominate society and always have done since the dawn of time. I, you know, well, they, they that's another point. Do. I don't, yeah. So it's it's like this this well, dynamic, how much do you think political frame, how much do you think political voice matters? Well, it depends on what you're talking about, doesn't it? But society I mean, is something vote, that happens example, separately. Do you think that's state? an important the right to vote or the right to actually earn your own society? That's not society. That's that's politics. That's the state itself. You're not talking about society. Society is like, you know, women taking the kids to a crash or something. You know, um some kind of, you know, any clubs or anything like this. Social groups that people live in. Women dominate them, man. The, I mean, honestly, at this point, it's men who we have to start worrying about actually being engaged in society because men are the ones checking out and just getting minimum wage jobs, drinking beer, playing Xbox, and living with each other well into their thirties, like yourself, probably. In fact, hey. you know, <laughs> it's 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 you're 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 the one who's not going out and engaging in society, are you? 
you know, what clubs do you go to? Like, what are you part of a bowling club or something? You know, and even it, it, this is the, this is genuinely a problem. And and usually, yeah, the government was the purview of men because, I mean, hell, honestly, mate, it was a way of getting them to do something <laughs> because they become wasteful and destructive if they don't. But it's women, it's one of women's, particip is, women's participation in other marginalized communities, participation in society, greatly predicated on how much political power they had that gave them access no. to even join these sorts of clubs to begin with. Unless no. you assume that women's role in society is just to be the caretaker, women, and that they're going to be comfortable these doing that, clubs, you have to realize that political action in this re respect is, not about is, is incredibly important for women. And then they were able to achieve that only recently. So no, obviously we're, we're they not, didn't have that same kind of... We're not talking about politics. We're talking about society, social groups, things that are outside of the state. Okay, did you not hear the first part of what I just said? Sorry, Women I must have were also it, excluded from participating in certain activities. Without yeah. political power, they were not able to actually uh, go out and, 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 and open these environments so that they could also participate in them, including the workforce. So well, can you give me an example? It's, a, it's unfortunately a slow and, and really draining process. But historically, what you're saying is untrue unless no. you assume that uh, women's only participation in society is child rearing and, and taking care of children and saying, no, sitting no. at home. I, I, don't, I don't think you understand what I mean when I say society. The, the, the collective action of groups of people is society, right? And, and each individual is a, is a member of usually several different groups it's, you know, for several different reasons at different points in their lives. And women have always been the driving force of this, you know, because men, as you say, men were the ones who were generally involved in politics, which is something different. Now women are also involved in politics. And frankly, society is declining. You know, the, the actual sort of health of the society, like think about like in, uh, was it World War One or Two, where they went around gi giving out white roses and stuff like this. You know, that's not going to happen now. No one's, no one's gonna, there's not gonna be any kind of social pressure. All the social pressure was always driven by women. And that's not a bad thing or anything like that. It's actually a very good thing. But, um, but these are, these are, these are aspects of civilization that are kind of falling away now. And the question is, where, where, was it a good thing that we had them? But, uh, I, I mean, I'm happy to move on to the next. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's let, talk about Donald well, Trump. Well, no, how for, about that? <laughs> Let's see. Since the uh, since Sargon and Nick started the topic, let's uh, allow oh. Destin Hassan to. Uh, is there anything else? Like oh, to you're say? right. Yeah. If you guys yeah. want to have any closing statements, if you have any closing uh, statements, Destiny please go ahead, and then we'll go. move to the next topic. Destiny or Hassan? I mean, there's like this is like a whole other bag of worms. I mean, the idea that like society, first of all, even the idea that society is declining is something that has to be justified, right? With respect to what? I mean, technologically, in terms of economy, we're obviously on the on the upswing hugely. In terms of like mental health, uh, mental illness, it seems like we seem to be ticking downward. I mean, like there's a million ways that we can measure progress. Um, the idea that like the idea that women were in control in the past, I guess because they fuck guys or I don't I don't even I'm in sure there's like of wants. well you tell me you're the one saying that like women yeah, I, made I, these I, I don't have a closing statement let's not get yeah yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah I don't want to do it. Yeah, I don't know there's yes. like there is so much like random shit in there I don't I don't even know what I could possibly address the idea that like society is declining because women are in politics now it just seems to be like a really ridiculous assertion to me but, yeah. it's okay um, okay so right. I will in yeah go I'll go ahead and introduce the next topic um I'm just gonna read it how it's prepared um so it can be very clear to you guys. And Asmin, if you want to kind of put that in layman's terms or just kind of uh, wrap it up, we can go ahead. Um, the next topic is the, uh, the Mueller report. Um, and this is kind of how it's laid out um, as I laid it out. Um, the, uh, so this is, this is the entire question. Okay, here we go. The as of yet not publicly available Mueller report was finally published after a two-year investigation into the possibility that the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government to rig the election in their favor. Despite an unprecedented, unprecedented level of access to any political campaign, $30 million spent, 500 witnesses interviewed, 19 lawyers retained as a special counsel, 40 dedicated FBI staff anchored to the investigation, and 500 search warrants executed, it found zero evidence of any collusion. There wasn't enough to charge even a low-level volunteer with any form of tampering or improper electoral conduct related to Russia. Given how many news networks have reported inaccurately that Russian collusion had occurred and that the proof of collusion would be forthcoming, does this outcome not validate Trump's claims about media bias against its administration? Well, I think that last time we let uh, Sargon and Nick go first. So Destiny or Hassan, whichever one of you two wants to start that off, go ahead. Let's go. Um, you want to go first, was, Destiny? Um, I, yeah, if you want to go first. 
Well, it's a two part discussion, right? The first mm -hmm. part obviously is about Trump and the Mueller report. And the second part is more about how Trump was talking about fake news and the role that fake news had played in the Mueller report and the whole investigation. On I mean, I have my own personal perspective on this, but uh, I think uh, Destiny, I might disagree on it a little bit. I just want to hear his uh, his side first and let him describe and then uh, we can talk about it. Yeah. So firstly, um, the Mueller report in itself hasn't been made available to the public yet. I don't remember if the House committee got it yet or not. I, I don't know whether at on, on that uh, status, but th supposedly they're going through some redactions for the full report to get released to the public, I think, if, as long as McConnell or whatever doesn't stop that from happening. Um, that being said, um, this idea that um, there was no proof of... Well, okay. Oh, fuck, there are a million different ways to go this. The idea that there was like no proof of collusion or any of that, that's not necessarily true. Um, I, I think that what the Attorney General's summary, what Barr's summary of the Mueller report was, is that there wasn't enough to like maybe actually press charges. There's like a million different ways that that can be read. We don't 100% know um, until we actually have the report you know, itself. So the idea that you can already say, well, the media was reporting things that was incorrect isn't necessarily true because those things might actually be borne out in the Mueller report. However, maybe Mueller didn't feel like there's enough here to like 100% nail anybody to the wall on conspiracy against the United States. Um, so yeah, the, okay. The Do only thing that, okay. the only thing that we can speculate here uh, is, look, Attorney General Barr was uh, appointed to this position specifically because he said that the bar to prove uh, collusion is going to be incredibly high and even beyond that most importantly obstruction of justice even if it's proven does not matter if that bar for collusion uh, can be passed so we already know that obstruction of justice occurred so this is more of a, more so a matter of was there how collusion? do we know I mean, that we already know that obstruction, obstruction of justice occurred justice because uh, trump went on national television and in front of millions of people on lester holt's uh, channel said i stopped james comey I stopped the investigation because he was searching, uh, because he was looking into the Russia investigation. Now, I myself, unlike uh, some members of the Young Turks uh, who have a different perspective, uh, thought that uh, the Russia collusion narrative was a little self-serving. I talked about it quite frequently here on Twitch. I talked about it in my coverage as well. Uh, originally, I thought it was very sketchy, and I do think that it was a good investigation to conduct, absolutely, given the fact that Russia had conclusively tried to meddle in our elections, and beyond that, Trump had asked Russia to, on again, on national television, hack into the DNC, which did happen. So, uh, obviously, uh, that, I think, is enough for anyone to, uh, to, to set up this sort of investigation. I don't think people were actually uh, against it at the time. Uh, what happened, however, is that they focused too much on the collusion aspect of it. And the reason why they focused too much on the collusion aspect of it, I think, especially on the liberal side, is because they wanted to justify why uh, the, the hive mother Hillary Clinton lost to a demented dipshit manchild like Donald Trump. So they continuously pushed this narrative, and they, in some respects, similar to the fucking QAnon uh, crowd on the right, lost their minds and started attributing everything, including even people like myself, who are further to the left than the average Democrat, uh, as uh, you know, Kremlin agents who were causing uh, problems. The real issues in America are, are deeply ingrained in American body politic. So like when Russia can, can easily, by spending, what, a million dollars in ad spend, change the outcome of a fucking election, then maybe we have to stop that conversation on whether or not Hillary Clinton lost because Russia was helping Donald Trump. Or, uh, and, and take a good hard look at how American politics is conducted and what our problems are as far as white supremacy, racism, as far as economic inequality, uh, and, and all of these things that Russia could easily, uh, uh, Russia could easily trigger like some sort of outrage over with a couple dollars spent in the right direction on the internet, which I don't even know if this is legal or not. Yeah, can I, can I clarify one thing is that you did say that Donald Trump was involved in obstruction of justice. Was he ever charged on that or is that your evaluation? My evaluation, but beyond that, um, okay. we don't, my evaluation. Now, on top of that, however, um, the reason why we know for a fact that um, there was nothing, like no, um, there, like Attorney General Barr did not indict anyone on the, on the report is because the bar was set incredibly high and it didn't matter if there was obstruction of justice or not. Well, and so to be clear, I, I think Barr said that Barr's very narrow interpretation that I don't think most legal scholars agree with is that obstruction of justice can't occur if the crime itself didn't occur. So, for yeah. instance, what Barr is saying is that if collusion or more specifically, if conspiracy against the United States can't be proved, then there's no way he could have obstructed justice against it, which a lot of people yeah. take issue with that. Yeah. Which okay, is, in, in my personal perspective on this, beyond everything else that we've talked about and beyond like other people's coverage and like liberals coverage, is that 
Um, 100% we should continuously push for transparency, see the entire report. Uh, but I think every single person who is even remotely sane understands that Donald Trump is not only a most likely a criminal, but also a really bad one at that and constantly fucking stumbles and, and, and fuck shit up. And the fact that they just like uh, narrowly focused and, and, and tried to cover their own asses, both the media apparatus and also the DNC tried to cover their own asses by promoting this message that like only we should be looking at like uh, Russian involvement in the election was really counterproductive. And that's probably why we fell. Um, that's probably why the Democrats at least um, looked terrible. And both of you do agree that the Mueller report should be released to the public in its entirety, right? Oh yeah, oh, I have a hard one with that. I don't know. Really? Okay. Um, my worry I'm, is that, like, um, my worry is that what's going to happen. I'm just looking at it from an optics, pragmatic point of view. Okay. Is that there are a lot of Democrats that are very fucking desperate to pin the Russia shit on Trump, <laughs> and if the report ends up getting released, they're going to find like one or two lines in there, and they're going to make it all about that, and they're going to throw the 2020 election away because they obsess over a couple of things in the Mueller report that they probably should let go. I, I mean, like overall, I, I, it should probably be released. I just hope that Democrats don't go full fucking moron with it or whatever. Yeah. Pragmatic argument, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Sargon, you're not in the U.S. From an outsider perspective, where are you coming from? Uh, I actually, uh, I actually think Hassan gave a pretty lucid account of the problems in the Democratic Party. I mean, Trump didn't need Russia to be able to win the election. That's just the be all and end all of it. There are there are deep societal issues and and governmental issues in the United States that just haven't been addressed for a long time. And I think that. Um, I think the way that the media effectively drives the discourse in America is part of that problem. And I think that it took a giant orange dick to be able to break through that. And, uh, and that's what's happened. The, what was the other thing? The, um, the, the interesting thing, I've, so I've spoken to people who uh, were in the White House with Donald Trump, and I, I read the uh, book Fire and Fury, and the conclusion that I've come away from with that is that they simply are not going to be competent enough to have colluded with Russia. I think this requires a level of expertise that the Trump campaign, frankly, wasn't in possession of. Okay. I if agree. Any, if, yeah, right? If Wait, you was, can agree, but you're both wrong on that. Manafort literally has conspired with foreign agents in the past. That's literally well, what he was indicted and charged with. Not, How can you agree with that? Trump. No, I'm talking wait, about... No, no, wait. I'm talking no, no, about... It was, it was Donald Trump's campaign manager while he ran for president, sure. so it would have been involved but, with him, right? Well, he okay. had more, That's precisely he, why he, I think that the Russia yeah. investigation was worthwhile, because well, I, Paul Manafort had worked with other Russian oligarchs, which I reported on back in fucking August 2016. Like, this was so I'm even, just saying it's possible that somebody around Trump could have gotten him to do it. I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying it's impossible. My, I yeah. don't think it was something they were really capable of and keeping secret, then, maybe, I should say. Um, and I think that the... I think. I mean, it's a total waste of time. It's it's a red herring because I mean, Trump's base doesn't care. You know, the 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 two and a half year investigation has come to an end. No further indictments. No further investigation. Okay, it's it's a dead issue, and I think the the left is absolutely foolish for pursuing it. But you got idiots like Rachel Maddow who's going to double down and destroy themselves trying to pin something on Trump that, like you say, destiny. So, is so you actually worthless. agree with destiny on this? Oh, I, mean, I think their okay. their analysis is generally quite correct. Um. Uh, I think they're right on what they're saying. I think there's it's it's not really something that's worth pursuing. I, I like that my works. perspective changed after the report came out, where I originally was like, "Oh, we shouldn't pursue this," but I think as a political as a political move, we absolutely should. The Democrats should absolutely fucking continue to push this. Not the narrative that like there's collusion, but the narrative that crimes had been committed. We know the campaign finance mm -hmm. violations that were pretty flagrant. We need to investigate those. I think that uh, the the uh, the fact that we would just like throw out this two year long investigation after the Republicans openly admitted that well, they hang, utilized hang, hang and weaponized second, the Benghazi sorry. investigation. Well, well, yeah, hang, hang on a second. Let yeah, me finish my point. Even none of you know American politics as well as I do, unfortunately. Before so we get, you know, well, well, be, be, before we get to the rebuttals, can we please hear Nick's yeah, uh, let's perspective? Least, yeah, let's yeah. 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 Yes. So, yeah, so, thank you. Benghazi was weaponized. Okay, okay, okay. As well. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> all right, all right, Nick, go ahead. Uh, okay. sorry, 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 Sargon, go ahead and finish. Yeah, off. Sargon, go ahead and finish Excuse and then give it to Nick directly. Just finish, finish yeah, your point. Yeah, so basically, I think it, it was essentially a red herring all along, and it's if the Democrats don't let it go, they're going to destroy themselves on it. But yeah, carry on. Okay, oh, go ahead, good. Nick. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Um, OK, well, I will look at the size and the scope of the Mueller investigation. Uh, I think train wrecks read it off from the beginning. It was two years, millions of dollars, the exact figures disputed. And actually, n and nobody has pointed out, actually, uh, everybody has failed to mention the fact that there were indictments delivered in the course of the investigation, many 
indictments, indictments against Russians, indictments against Americans. And we find that the indictments against all uh, the Russians. On, sorry, so, sorry to jump in. I don't think. Oh, but cool. Can I just get a point out? You can get <laughs> it sorry, out. Can I, can I just I, finish? I think that was an inaccuracy. That's all. What is an inaccuracy? I, wh were there any Americans indicted? Yes. 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 Six people. I think yes, yes. Many yes. were okay. indicted. Okay. Yes. That is, yes. Except, yes. except yes. however, the Russians were indicted separately from everybody else. They were indicted for trying to meddle in the election. That's something Destiny and Hassan got right, that the Russians did attempt to meddle. It wasn't tied directly to the Russian state, but they did find Russians who were buying Facebook ads. I believe it was two companies and 13 individuals. And they also found that yeah, it was something like six American individuals, people like Manafort, Papadopoulos, a number of others uh, were indicted as part of the investigation. Every single indictment that was brought down, even against low level people, all the indictments had nothing to do with collusion. It was either lying to the FBI, which is something that everybody knows. If there's an inconsistency, if you don't place something exactly right, they can get you with that. So it's it's not difficult for somebody to get you for lying to the FBI. Or in the case they of Manafort, what they did, in the case of Manafort, what they did is they dug up financial crimes from 2013. And if you know the story on that, what happened was, was he had done some kind of weird, shady business deal with the Ukrainians. This was back many years ago, like five or six years ago. Uh, you had people looking into that in the government, looking into that financial crime. This is well before Trump even announced or anything like that. They shelved it. And then when the Mueller investigation happened, they came back to those previous financial crimes. And that's how he got charged. So to me, and, and somebody said this earlier, Trump's base doesn't even care. That's totally correct. I mean, we're going to talk about foreign meddling in elections and Really, the hill we're going to die on is like Russian Facebook ads or like a phone call in Trump Tower from the Russians. Has anybody heard of APAC? Has anybody heard of you know anything other countries are doing, Qatar, Saudi Arabia? I mean, everybody meddles in our elections. So I'll say that. But if we are going to talk about specifically the Mueller investigation, uh, you know, I just don't think you can look at the size, the scope, the indictments the media pressure, everything that was going on, all the access that was given, and come away with that and say, oh, they, they just didn't find it. They just didn't have enough time. I mean, Mueller had all the time in the world, and they were covering that every night on MSNBC and CNN talking about Sergei Kizilyak and Jeff Sessions, even though Sessions was the uh, chief of the foreign <laughs> policy subcommittee in the Senate. So I just think it's totally ridiculous. But even if it did happen, wouldn't care. Frankly, I don't think it was uh, I don't think it was that big of a deal, even if it happened. Well, how do you think the media's role in the uh, reporting of this Mueller investigation affected them in any way or affected Trump's presidency or potentially his reelection? Uh, it was obviously biased. And this is something that was talked about even before 2018. I just don't think it was fair. The fact that the media every night and you look at media control, what is it? Ninety five percent of media is controlled by six conglomerates. So you're going up against one man against like 95% of legacy media, which is print, television, and radio, and just about all of them, with the exception of Fox News and Rush Limbaugh, are beating the same old drums about Almost these meetings. all radio Rush leans Limbaugh. very right. That's not true. Ra oh, radio, yeah. media? radio is really a contemporary medium. Exactly. You're the one that brought it up. You brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the point was to demonstrate that you have a big, uh, a big scope here, what we're talking about all these different media companies. So all of television, a lot of radio. Sure, you're right. Uh, you've got Rush Limbaugh. You've got a few others over there. You've got Rush Limbaugh, um, Glenn Beck, Michael yeah. Savage, Billy Cunningham. Uh, you're Sean right. Hannity. You're right. I Rush mean, we Limbaugh, even Jesse you're right. Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity are equivalent to ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC. Well, hold on. You're right. Wait, wait, wait. Exactly I wouldn't make an equivalency well. between a radio. Those are the largest radio hosts in America. They're not the same as the cable news. If you want to talk about cable news, the largest media network in the United States is Fox News, which is conservative. So, I mean, if you want to talk about media on, yeah, on it, TV, it, yeah, it, you're it, right. You're it right. All the networks. Recently, and it? that's that's only cable news, also, by the way. But you're also. Talking <laughs> we can move. We can run the goalposts as much as you want. I'm just making sure the facts right. No, 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 no. Because you said Fox News is the biggest one. Yeah, they're the biggest cable news network, but you're not counting all of the others combined. And you're also not counting social media. You're not counting Twitter and Facebook and YouTube where they're actively- Oh, do you want to go on YouTube and see who the largest theories. political commentators are? Because that's overwhelmingly right-leaning as well. This really? narrative that conservative- I Yeah. The bigger, really? Who? Uh, what do you mean? St fuck, we've got Sargon of Akkad here. You've got Stephen Crowder. You've got that Mark Dice guy. Those I mean, what do you mean? There's the biggest, those are not the biggest. The Young Turks, I'm pretty sure, is the biggest political yeah, lie. That is the Frank one largest one, sure. But now, but earlier when I used to... <laughs> it's just the largest no, one. I, what are you I, talking about? Wait, hold on. When I just said for Fox News, when I just said that for Fox News, you want to talk about the totality of all the cable news? Yeah, but sure, that's yeah, yeah, so when yeah, you're talking you about YouTube, now you're going to point to the one Young Turks network, but if I talk about the totality of conservative YouTube creators, now that's not a good argument. You're trying to narrow the cable news. Yes, you do have to look at the whole picture.
Hey guys, you actually, you actually you actually this one? Um, can I, can I just jump in here for a yeah, yeah, Hassan, Hassan, deliver, let's go, Hassan. Uh, deliver uh, some information here. I, I just want to clarify my position. I think the, the Russia investigation is largely uh, frivolous, but I think the government conducts a lot of frivolous investigations and then weaponizes it politically. And I think if anyone would disagree with me on this perspective, either they weren't around during the uh, election coverage, uh, like, you know, a couple of years back, where they consistently talked about Benghazi and Hillary Clinton's emails as a consequence of the Benghazi investigation. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because Kevin McCarthy, the Senate majority, uh, Senate House majority leader, openly admitted that they used the Benghazi investigation, which took a longer time than the JFK, uh, the, the JFK assassination and Watergate investigation combined, which took a longer time than the 9-11 investigation. They used that to weaponize it against Hillary Clinton, who already sucked, mind you, but they effectively used that and consistently talked about it, and they still do. I mean, Sean Hannity still fucking brings up uh, uh, Benghazi every now and then. Yeah, Benghazi Donald Trump still brings it up. So for you to say, for you to sit here and be like, oh, they spent all this money, when you and I both know that they took back way more money, for, uh, they were able to seize more assets from Paul Manafort that would pay for the investigation and 10 times over, uh, uh, is is really silly. I thought you didn't care about that sort of stuff as long as it fit your narrative, right? Yeah, obviously you lack understanding. I didn't say that to say that oh. it was it was such a high cost. I said it in order to demonstrate the scope and scale of the investigation. Yeah. In other well, words, there was no shortage. Scope and scale in other words, of the excuse me. Was in other words, there was no government. shortage of resources. That was the intention. Not to say that I'm so mad that the government is spending money. The government spends money every day that we don't even know about. The point is to say that they had every resource at their disposal. And they were not able to come up with enough evidence to indict anybody, not even yeah, the president, it's, anybody. It's bullshit. I'm saying that you use it politically. What? Uh, just, uh, just can I can I address Destiny's point about the YouTube right wing bias? Uh, that's not yeah. true, Destiny. That we've got the numbers. Um, the right gets two point five billion viewed recommendations a month. The center gets two point five billion, and the left gets five point seven billion. It's heavily skewed. How do you account billion? For that? Well, how, yeah, how do you account recommend, for that? viewed recommendations? Yeah, YouTube's huge. Wait, viewed um, I've recommendations. Left, I, I've left a link in the description in the chat okay. for you to have a look at afterwards. Well, how do you account for the difference? Wait, between you the consider two? Jimmy Kimmel live as left? The oh. Hell? Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Like, it's it's like, Jimmy it's Kimmel. like Jimmy Kimmel live is a part of the left in this. I mean, it, okay, here are the here are these. Think just, these are have a Democrat bias. Of, of wow. people of people that aren't like mainstream media, so like John Oliver or whatever, of just people that are like YouTube personalities. Here is the top ten list that I have for views in the last thirty days and millions of people. Okay, you have one and two are the Young Turks and Philip DeFranco. If you want to consider Philip DeFranco, yeah. you, I guess you could call him left. He's more centrist. Then after that, you've got Stephen Crowder, Prager U, Infowars, Daily Wire, Mark Dice. Infowars. Yeah, Secular Talk. Which is info which is also been banned. Secular from talk is left. Secular talk is secular yeah. talk. Oh is yeah, left. yeah. Secular talk is left. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. and yeah. then Paul Joseph Watson been banned from YouTube. When it, when was this data compiled? Um, this was compiled. This is what I have. Is ten months old. Okay. And anyway, you is say no longer without with John. Sure. Oliver. Infowars might not be with us any longer. Sure. You say without John Oliver, how can you exclude John Oliver? I said yeah. Jimmy because Kimmel. I was laughing. John, at you for I don't know if it's like the no. same. I don't oh, know if it's the same as having like a mainstream like media like, network show like on YouTube. Like, he's comparing what a joke. No, it's completely different. He's comparing people that are originated and their content exists on YouTube primarily. John Oliver's content does not exist on YouTube primarily, and so he would be considered another component. Now, it doesn't mean that he doesn't count it just means that he counts in a different way yeah i understand that i understand that i understand the point being made but okay. only if you're looking at a very very narrow definition for example if you say if we look at cable news correct the yes. biggest primetime shows are on fox news but if you're looking at all of news and people watch not just cable news and you add them all up, it's obviously greater than Fox News. And the same is true with YouTube. If you exclude Jimmy Kimmel, who talks about his son and why we need Obamacare and the individual, the individual mandate on a show, yeah, if you exclude Jimmy Kimmel and John Oliver and all the other big ones on YouTube, and you look at the top 10, yeah, the top two are left, and a few in the top five are left, but look at all these, I mean, only under very narrow definitions, qualifying it totally arbitrarily. Can you in any way, shape, or form say that there's a quality 
or a conservative advantage in media. Please, what planet but it's not are really we fair. living let's say, on? Let's say, like, let's say, for instance, well, let's say, for instance, all of Twitch was like right leaning. Okay, let's say for like a hypothetical. Let's say all of Twitch is right leaning, and then let's say that like um, for, for uh, you know, every now and then Obama comes on and, and gives like some. He's working for some charity thing, and they do like a political thing on on Twitch, and that's like the only time or the only thing related to that. He's not like a Twitch streamer or whatever. And in those times, let's say they get more views than anybody else on Twitch. I don't know if you would then say, well, Twitch has a fair representation of left versus right because sometimes Obama goes into it. That just doesn't seem to be. I mean, I guess we can argue over methodology. I don't think it's organic. You're, you're obfuscating. Yeah, it's, you understand I'm not perfectly obfuscating. well. obfuscating. It's trying to get a better understanding of. Are. You know, and this is always what no. you obfuscate. Oh you say God. you come up with these totally convoluted hypotheticals. Everybody knows the media is left leaning. And by the way, John yeah. Oliver does not come on YouTube once in a while like Barack <laughs> Obama. John Oliver posts every show on YouTube, and everyone knows that. And everyone yeah, knows John he's Oliver's left fan base didn't come from YouTube. He's not part of the YouTube community. Nobody would call John Oliver a YouTuber. Right? He's got a show on HBO. Trivia little details. We're oh, talking I'm, about I'm media. Sorry if the, or, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You exactly. call it a yeah. trivial little detail. I, mean, I can no longer obfuscate. Unironically open the conversation true. saying that talk radio is fucking left leaning. And now you're saying that I'm the one obfuscating the data. I didn't like, say I mean, talk okay. radio is left leaning. I'm pretty sure you brought that up in part of your. I said, I said 95% no, of media I, I is owned that, by no. six conglomerates, of what, which we're talking oh, okay. about legacy so media. You said, yeah, that's, you said destiny. Running down them goalposts. No, you could so rewind the tape. No, it's not no, shifting no, no, the goalposts. No. Well, I, I remember what was said. Earlier. Destiny said that obviously a lot of the right wing, uh, you know, a lot of the shows on radio are right wing. And then Nick responded by saying radio isn't relevant. Correct. That's what happened. Radio is radio is still tremendously relevant, especially. And I only brought up radio because he said block that's I'm just, that's, what they, that's what you guys said. Yeah, but he brought yeah, up radio absolutely. beforehand. That's why I brought it up. I wouldn't bring it up yeah. anymore. It's well, Sinclair Broadcasting is another one. Mitchell I mean, look, look, right wing, right wing uh, uh, commentary is prevalent on on YouTube and all these other no, platforms, not. unless no, they. <coughs> okay. Um, it's it's I mean, outnumbered by almost uh, by almost two to one for the left wing. It's okay. just not. That's have, just not correct. Uh, I, I, I would love to. I would love to engage with this study a little bit further and get back to you. But like immediately, the first thing I see is Jimmy Kimmel Live when I scroll my mouse over it, yeah. and that is a little suspicious to me because Why? Jimmy Kimmel Live had like one segment where he talked about uh, his daughter's uh, cancer, and it's literally the largest. It's after the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. It's the largest uh, bubble on there, uh, and the Sorry? fact that you would use like clips such as. Hey, Jimmy Kimmel goes out and like talks to children on the street as a uh, as a uh, how how powerful leftist media is on the internet is kind of it just kind of makes the study I think, seem I think, so I think it's it's it infused I think with it's his political bias, yeah. isn't it? It's it's mm -hmm. disingenuous for for you to say I believe that Jimmy Kimmel only referenced something political once. I think he does bring that up. Semi okay, Jimmy Kimmel talking about politics and and uh, being compared, being put up against like no bullshit, for example, which is a political <laughs> YouTuber in the same study is absolute madness. If you look at the top really? few Jimmy Kimmel clips, the first three are going to be political, and then the overwhelming majority are just going to be commentary or mostly comedy. It's crazy to me Would that you matter. Guys if they were equally persuasive. Well, like, so, yeah, no, so, like, no, here's, I, here's like, a problem. So, like, well, so, real quick, right? So, like, I see people listed on here, like, Philip DeFranco, okay? Philip DeFranco is somebody that I would consider political. I'm pretty sure, fuck, I haven't done this, but I'm pretty sure if I go to Philip DeFranco's channel and I, and I sort by top, all of his most popular shit is going to be political. Jimmy Kimmel's channel, the most popular clips are Jimmy surprises Bieber fan, celebrities read mean tweets, number seven, number two, I told my kids I ate all their Halloween candy. Like, these are the views yep, that are being counted as, like, left-wing political YouTube, like well, I hold on, that's a that's a valuable no, lesson in social. I, I feel like things <laughs> are like going to come from a politically left wing position. Yeah, I yeah, but like, like if I were to compare his things to somebody like Mark so Dice, dumb. right? If I were to go to Mark you, Dice's you, channel, you, that's going to be all political videos. Why it's would not, it matter if it was equally, uh, it was equally persuasive? Because you can't use it, you can't use it to to out, you can't use it to boost your numbers. You can't just like drop random shit in there just because like they every now and then talk about political subjects, but for the most part are like comedians. You know what I mean? Well, uh, I, yeah, I, like John Oliver. Like Steve, Stephen well, Colbert is a comedian. Would you, but, okay, well, let me well, just just answer this for me. Do like you think like leaders. Fox News and 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 um, I mean maybe not even Joe Rogan, but like Norm Macdonald and Fox News is not an app comparison. Norm Macdonald is a conservative, but I would not never consider like a Norm Macdonald YouTube channel to be like, hey, this is actually a right wing uh, political uh, podcast. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm actually no, I'm actually going to take a hard disagree with Hassan here. You know what? You guys are absolutely right. Now my question is, why isn't PewDiePie listed on the site under the right? Uh, <laughs> well, because he's never oh, so, <laughs> Never mind. You're right, Destiny. Well, you are correct. No, let yeah. me ask. Let me yeah, ask PewDiePie, a question. PewDiePie, PewDiePie, after all, PewDiePie platform. Out. Ben Shapiro is Ben Shapiro not a right wing political yep, commentator? That's why true. is he, he not listed on the site as a right wing commentator? For meme review. 
Wait, what do you mean? Oh, oh wait, are you, te- are you telling Jimmy me that Stephen Chimel Colbert- eating candy? <laughs> Jimmy Chimel eating candy is actually political commentary, but fucking meme reviews with Ben Shapiro is not? Tell me, what's beauty wise position on Obamacare? Do you know what that is? <laughs> It doesn't matter. He's obviously well, well, because we don't know what his position is because he doesn't talk about oh, explicit so you politics. Know what you probably is don't on, even watch uh, it because Jimmy Kimmel on, uh, openly talks about it. Every show is an anti-Trump tirade, oh, and you know Nick, that you can't be this Kimmel stupid, there, right? You can't be this stupid, okay, right? Can, can, can I ask you? Pewdiepie talks about Pewdiepie talks about culture war quite frequently. Why is no bullshit and Sargon of God mentioned in this if they don't really talk about policy that frequently, but mostly talk about social commentary and the culture war? That's the thing you're saying. Thing, one at like, a time, please. The, one yeah, at a time. Let's let's, talk during, Sargon. During let's go let's Sargon. Sargon. Sargon, go ahead. Kind of irrelevant because you're right. These people do have political biases that come across in their media, even if that particular piece of media that you point to isn't necessarily a political piece. These things are political. I agree. PewDiePie probably should be on the right wing side. You no, know? I still think it's silly. Like that's my <laughs> but, point. It's yeah, silly okay, to put Jimmy Kimmel and then not put PewDiePie. If you're not going to put PewDiePie in there, you shouldn't be putting Jimmy Kimmel in there. My point isn't like Jimmy to look Kimmel at the study. is very. My political. point is to not look at the study at all because I have no idea what the fuck the study is. And beyond that, it doesn't but seem like a con- like, a, like a reasonable study. I think the more interesting question is why do you guys have a problem with accepting left wing media dominance? Because the, because conservatives that? usually use this to push this narrative that like oh no we have no voice anywhere when it's just not true there's oh, plenty oh, of voices in conservative media on YouTube oh, on radio even on print arguably and then um, and then on cable news Fox News is still the largest cable yeah. network in the United States like this idea that conservatives have no voice anywhere while they control both halves of Congress while they have the president like it's just really strange I don't know well, wait, can we look at can we look like at Fox News for a moment okay. I think that's actually an interesting yeah, go, go ahead, point Nick. there because you look at the prime time show on Fox News, which is Tucker Carlson, the highest rated one. And have you been watching the show lately? I probably not, but if you look at the advertisements, they can only now advertise, what is it? Fox News' own commercials, My Pillow, and a Trump pack. Yeah, so people really usually like to be associated with white nationalism. Uh, one at a time, uh, please. Goldman Sachs you one at a time. doesn't celebrate gay pride. Wait, you, you think it's really? Goldman Sachs? Oh, like, oh, shit. Please, oh, one at a time. Yo, please, one at a time. Nick, why finish. are we all talking at the same time? Are not left wing? Let's at least let's at least let Nick finish. Guys, Nick yeah, finishes, then Destiny or Hassan can rebuttal, okay? Nick, please finish. Look, Back to the it, everybody, everybody knows this, and this is what I mean by obfuscation. You're going to say that because Tucker Carlson and Fox News have a big presence, they have a big network, that this outweighs, if we're, if we're looking at the scale here, that this outweighs, again, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, all the networks. And then you factor in the corporations. Then you factor in the fact that somebody at Media Matters doesn't like what Tucker Carlson says, and you've got an advertiser boycott. Can you repeat now, does what that he said? happen? Excuse me, does that happen on any other channel? Have we Can ever heard of that? He when you had a contributor, I, of course, of course, I watch your show. When you have a contributor, for example, on... Uh, Joy no, Reid. No, no. Why, why do you think advertising? Joy Reed. Hey, out? can I finish my point? Or are you going to get a rebuttal? Or how does I'm this just confused. I, wanna, I want I want you to elaborate. To it doesn't matter what Tuckle Carlson said. It, well, the point being, it matters. you say he has a voice. Matter? You say he has a voice, but he says the wrong thing, and all these corporations bend to the will of media matters. Now, Joy Reid can say like homosexuals or abominations and all this other stuff, and that gets revealed. There's not a boycott. There's not an outcry. She doesn't even get fired from her job. So you can go Tucker around Carlson trying to pretend like there's job? any kind of parody. It's it's just. I don't even absurd. like Joanne Reed. I don't know why you're bringing up Joanne Reed. I don't give a Tucker shit. Carlson, what right? Listen, Hassan, it, listen, it, guys, it, please, it, please, it, please, it, give well, me a second. Guys, can't accept guys please, please give me a second here, okay? Listen, you will have time to rebuttal. If you have an issue with a certain thing, write it down. Let Nick finish all the way, and then you respond. And the same goes to you guys. Let Hassan and Destiny finish all the way, and then give your rebuttals. Please keep it. This okay. Way. The only times I try to the only times I try to interrupt is because I genuinely want to understand Nick's perspective, or if he's saying something that I I, I just I'm not very. There's nothing genuine about you. There's so nothing genuine about your about. questions or anything about you. No, I, I don't yeah, know if that I, was entirely true, but can Destiny and Hassan, can you guys, do you guys agree with uh, Sargon that the majority of the mainstream media, right, the MSNs, CNNs, MSNBCs, Foxes, the majority is left leaning? No, I, oh, I mean, like, I, 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 you know, I probably would, but that's really fucking hard because, like, I mean, okay. based on my engagement with the media, it seems to be that way. But for instance, if you go to like certain parts of the country, if you like, you know, Nick is here to laugh off talk radio. I'm pretty sure talk radio actually reaches like more customers than even fucking Facebook does. Um, a lot of people listen to talk no, radio. A um, billion and a half people talk radio. Reaches? Please let Destiny finish. Wait, I'm talking about in the United uh, States, unless our population grew fivefold. I, I don't think we have yeah, a billion. Yeah, I was and a half referring to the United States when I said a billion and a half. You, you didn't. 
understand well, wait, my Then point, why are you talking right? about being, the global uh, Facebook totally monthly users if you're talking about the popularity of left or right media? Oh, because you're, you're saying that Facebook uh, reaches as many people as talk radio. This is obviously ridiculous. When I say and as no. many people, I'm, I'm referring to politics within the United States. Mm -hmm. The talk radio is still a really popular way to advertise things. Yeah. How many people uh, have a Facebook account? In, the, in just the United States? Are you going to say yeah, Facebook sure. has a many, left, oh, left oh, wing? I, I, can't, I can't believe I just got sidetracked so fucking hard. Slippery Nick, doing it again. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember what the fuck my original point was. Anyway, um, yeah. there are You really some... shouldn't get started with the names. There are going to be some ugly ones with you, my friend. <laughs> So I've heard it all, buddy. Don't worry. Um, this idea that we somehow like segued also um, from like, is media popular to are people restricting advertisements to certain people? I don't. That's like the most non sequitur thing I've heard in my entire life. If you want to argue about like, are right leaning views more popular to advertisers than left leaning views? Of course, I'm going to agree that left leaning views are more popular. Tucker Carlson almost fucking took a hard right into white nationalism. Yeah, no fucking shit. A lot of people aren't going to be platforming his shit or supporting his shit via advertisers as much. But that's a totally different argument on do conservatives have a voice in the United States? Is there representation in the media for conservatives? which I believe there is. Now, is the media, you know, like slanted to the left in terms of their bias? Uh, maybe it's possible. You know, my engagement with media is generally on the internet, which is going to be more left-leaning than, say, somebody's engagement who's only on, like, talk radio or local news, right, which is going to slant right. So, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to quantify which one is, you know, more left or more right in terms of all the media. And I don't think you can do it with a study that lists Jimmy Kimmel as a left-wing political commentator on YouTube. <laughs> Nick or Sargon, yeah. any responses to that? That I mean, it's just um, it's just utterly ridiculous. If you're going to deny I this agree. this basic reality, there was a there was a study that was done by the Media Research Center a couple of months ago, which said that it was like 92 percent of coverage was against Trump. And it's I don't so think it's strange that 92 percent of coverage. It shouldn't sorry, be sorry. Uh, Guys, why with talking? the interruptions, right? It, it just look. We can disagree about um, obviously the Mueller report, and we can disagree about whether the coverage was accurate or not, but. To me, if we can't even agree, if it's so such a controversial thing to say, the media has a left wing bias that culture making institutions generally in America or, you know, just major conglomerates in America. I mean, if we're going to pretend like that institutional bias doesn't exist, I mean, I don't even know how we're supposed to have a conversation. It feels like you're living in another world. I mean, especially given what I do for a living, you know how hard it is to make a living trying to just say common sense, right wing things without them coming for your Discord, your Streamlabs, your YouTube, your Facebook, your Twitter. What did they just pass the other week on Facebook? I mean, it's just, I really do feel like we're living in two different dimensions here. If you're going to try and sit here and say that uh, the people that run these social Nick, media Nick, I, I, I know networks, what you're trying to say. What you mean is they're speaking from a position of privilege. <laughs> that's right. That's okay. right. Um, that's that's right. a really it's, funny uh, meme. And I unfortunately have to true. kind of uh, provide a little bit more perspective, a little bit more background into what uh, Nick is trying to say. Oftentimes when people come for specific channels or Discord servers and whatnot, uh, if it's not led by uh, right-wing uh, people like uh, Destiny, the conquest that like ended up with Destiny losing his Twitter account, which happens uh, quite frequently to the members of the left as well. Um, but more often than not, it's for things like Tucker Carlson defending a child rapist on a talk show oh, or Tucker please. Carlson calling Arabs primitive apes or primitive monkeys on a talk show now beyond that if tucker carlson's white nationalism gets to a point where it's not profitable unfortunately that's capitalism baby if you hate that then maybe you should reconsider what your perspective is on capitalism yeah but that's not just capitalism is it i mean there are there are I well mean, it's funded marketing, yeah marketing no, no, dollars hang on, hang on, away hang from on, tucker carlson's on, show is on. absolutely a product of no, capitalism. Hang, hang on right <laughs> They're, they're a very, very well-funded and well-engaged and well-staffed and well-manned on social media um, networks of activist groups that are very, very insistent on getting people like Tucker Carlson defunded. It's actually, it, it's actually somewhat of a fucking cancer to the dialogue, and it's making the left look like a predatory group of people who are out for blood, the way that they try to hurt people at every given turn. And it's not something that, like... Nobody's seen. I mean, surely you guys are well aware that things like Media Matters, Hope Not Hate, all these sort of activist organizations are well connected and do a lot of damage to their political opponents. This is, this is, I hate, I fucking hate that I have to do this. Who, do we, just, who do we just lose? We just lost Oh, Hassan just dipped. Oh, okay, good. All right. Oof, I can do this without him hearing then. Fuck. Oh, he's is back. he back? He's back, yeah. <sighs> okay. Ah, oh, okay. I'm gonna do it. I'm sorry, boys. Okay, if you're left wing and you follow my stream, fuck off. I hate you. However, 
This idea that media corporations are doing something to further like positive public dialogue is a absolute fucking fantasy. This is capitalism 101. What the media companies are going to do is as soon as it becomes politically expedient to do so, they're going to throw their money in that direction. This idea that some media company is going to stake its reputation on progressive values is hilariously stupid. There is no board of directors that no CEO has walked in front of and said, listen, trans people might not be popular, but I think we're going to go ahead and push our company in that direction anyway. Absolutely not. Companies absolutely right. follow lock and step with cultural so norms. And cultural that is well, okay, so unless, 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 Please, oh, let, oh, Destiny oh, oh, Please let Destiny finish. Please let Destiny finish. Please let Destiny finish. I do acknowledge right. that there is a framework by which you can view this. So if you're somebody like Nick that believes that Jews control the whole fucking world and they're the ones pushing <laughs> narratives, right? Because multiculturalism destroy the white man. Sure, maybe they do. But for the rest of us that live in reality, this is capitalism 101, baby. Okay, Black Panther <laughs> wasn't put out as a movie because they thought that it would help black people in the US. They did it because they knew it would make a fuck ton of money because there are a lot of people across the entire fucking world that engage with types of media and having more diversity helps and shit like that. That's where it comes from. This is a capitalism 101 okay, thing. Okay, 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 companies okay, moralizing okay. Well, issues. Right okay, okay, okay so no, no, hang on, hang on. I, I got to take go this ahead, right because you, you were just fucking wrong, mate, right? Listen to the director of Black Panther. Just listen to him. Like, have you watched any of his interviews or anything like that? It's all about the politics. If you look at, look, was it Tim Cook at Apple? He sounds like a preacher. Hold He's on, giving hold on. sermons. The director He's, of no, Black no, Panther, no, who no. funded his movie? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. It was Probably a large company that was looking to make a lot of money, Sargon. It wasn't yeah, him. I'm he sure didn't make an indie film. Like a lot of money, but the idea that you think there isn't a political and moral goal in what they're doing is just wrong. You're there just is wrong. a political goal. The political goal is to show society whatever it is they want to see so they can make no, the most fucking true. money off of that's it. That's true. absolutely just true. No, why didn't not. we get it? If that was true, then why didn't we get a Black Panther movie like this like 20 years ago or more women in media 20 years because ago? This because is a new, this, this particular variant of politics is a relatively recent phenomenon, and it's taken the, the media establishment, the Hollywood establishment by storm. There seems I wish to be no one with any Sargon, kind of director your might world, have Sargon, if your world was the I, director I, might have personal political goals but that doesn't change the underlying reality that Destiny's trying to get you to understand which is that big corporations are never going to fund a movie just for political purposes and wrong. if you were if you if You're you wrong. were to You're understand this a little bit better we would make the comparison between whoever the director of Black Panther was which I don't even know versus Boots Riley an, an outspoken avowed communist who's been Listen, uh, a director and activist why Boots oh, Riley, hell. Sorry to Bother You is an indie movie that, that <laughs> makes a decent amount of money but still is not being funded by uh, these sorts of like, the, the, you know, some uh, Chinese corporation or whatever. And Black Panther is, is because Black Panther is actually trying to make money versus the other one is genuinely trying to promote social change. And, and it actually, this makes me so be, sad. This on, makes me so sad. Well, it makes me so sad because like this no, is all kind of- No, 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 Destiny, hang on a second. Right. <sighs> so there, there are loads of examples of movies that have not done well because of an excessive focus on politics. With things like Black Panther, you're lucky because you're stumbling, in, and same with Captain Marvel, you're stumbling into a kind of cultural um, pocket that is capable of both pushing an agenda and making money. But these, there are many films that are just complete losses. I mean, I don't have a list off the top of my head. I'd have to go. But Ghostbusters, how about the female Ghostbusters? Was that how about big, Ghostbusters? Uh... Two? How about Ghostbusters two? That was all men and also sucked. What? I mean, what do you mean? So People make shitty was, movies all the time. Does that mean that money Ghostbusters big wasn't an agenda? Money. Right. Wait, and they are, they are, of course it was. Listen to Paul Fee. He says it's all about the agenda. Same with the um, the guy who made Black Panther. Same with Captain Marvel. Like These things are agenda-driven. And this is something that's driving Disney into the ground, man. Look at Star Wars. What? They just acquired... Disney owns like fucking 80% of the fucking theater these days. Didn't they just acquire like the largest fucking... Yeah, I know, mate. Because, but I don't think it's going to last forever. Look what they've done to the Star Wars franchise. Wait, who, who is cares? your argument genuinely that like <laughs> Disney? Wait, I don't really watch your videos, Sargon. But is your argument actually that Disney is like that? Disney has a moral objective to like uh, make the world more progressive, and because of that, they're just like burning cash right now, and they're failing. I didn't say Disney. No, people no. in Disney. I mean, I don't know about like the high ups. I'm sure they're fucking hating it. But Are you familiar? Do you not see, so do, do you, do not, you not think that the board of directors has a vested interest, a fiduciary mouth. responsibility in ensuring uh, a shareholder uh, it, maximizing profit and ensuring okay. that Hassan, shareholder I think the value problem, is right? I think I, the problem that you have is that you view these things as monolithic. Yes. You don't realize I, that these I, from a materialist are, perspective, yes. It, thank yeah, you. I, I know, I know, what I'm I know. Doing. but then they're not monolithic. There are people operating. No, not monolithic, materialistic. Yeah. Okay. I'm what I'm saying is the, the, the thing is more than the sum of its components, but the components within it are individual actors with their own agendas, and they come to these things with a particular perspective, and me, in many cases to push a specific agenda. And this agenda is costing them money. They have their hits, but they have many losses as well. 
And it's something that I don't think is sustainable. I mean, so haven't they stopped making Star Wars films at this point? Just, just to summarize your argument, what you're saying is that Disney as an organization or a corporation is not necessarily doing things politically, but there are people who are making decisions at Disney that do have political yes. leanings that are doing That's that. In order so you think like 75-year-old right. executives at Disney are like thinking, we, <laughs> we, really gay rights. Make, we really need to make the world more SJW. I'm a millionaire or a billionaire, an executive at I Disney. Didn't say that he literally just said the opposite of that i i yeah i mean i i realize that you as a marxist have a problem with like 75 year old millionaires but i'm literally not saying that so if you no, can... no he's not saying there's a problem it's just like the, here's the do you know why you know it. about paul freak's uh, fucking political stances or why you know that some directors have the reason why they do that is because capitalists that want to make money on their movies throw them onto the fucking media because they know reactionaries like you two are going to make a fuck ton of videos talking about them <laughs> remember all the videos that were made Wait, about okay, how captain okay, marvel is going to fucking fail like this, because man. captain marvel was so politicized and sjw that movie went on to make over a billion fucking yeah. dollars the only reason you know the political views of any of these fucking people is because um it's because the big companies put them out there so that they talk about it so that it drives up hype for the movie that's the only fucking I, reason i don't agree i, I wish yeah, no. i if i but wish it, capitalism it worked like how you thought it did talk on because it i would be such a stronger capitalist but this idea that pe that companies are actually putting morals ahead of like just maximizing the amount of money they make for their business is comical like even in fucking china where the black panther it's was true. released the fucking posters for that movie had to cover the actor's face because people in china don't really like black people that much like and, and like there's so much dumb shit that happens for people to make money this idea that yeah, I don't know. The yeah, businesses are actually trying Sargon to is liberal. their problems. I'm beginning like, to realize that Sargon is genuinely fact. liberal because he unironically thinks that, like, you know, having more female, you know, uh, prison guards is actually what the liberals are pushing. Our business is driving morality and, and culture. I, I, yeah, yeah. Like, not, business is never driving well, morality. Not even moral, I am saying because because it's it's guys, 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 with the please, Nazis in Sarg World War II. Oh, okay. okay. Sargon, please respond to that. And then, Nick, if you'd like to go in and Destiny Hassan, and we could wrap it up. Okay. There is there is just no doubt about this. You guys living in Alabama, it's fine. Wait, wait, you're my cutout. Could you repeat that? You said there's Sorry, no doubt about this, me? and then you said yeah, there's, there's no doubt there's about, no this, doubt about this. this. You guys can live in denial about this if you want, but the people who make these movies have morals of their own. They And the people who fund these things have morals of their own. Of course, they obviously have physical, pragmatic, necessary, re necessary requirements on them, and this is why I think that there's probably a lot going on behind the scenes about... Well, re probably serious conversations about sort of like you know the profitability of woke movies, and in many ways they don't seem very profitable. But there's no doubt that there's a push towards this. The directors will tell you this, the actors will tell you this. I don't see why we would sit there and say that they don't have this agenda because we're Marxists, I guess. Because we but sit there the and think every capitalist is evidence evil. is not on your side. I thought they're all making a lot of yeah, money. Concluding statements here is well, that let's let's Sargon is yes. let's concluding statements. What Sargon finish is concluding? Not about not this all, all the time. I'm sure, right? Isn't this like kind of your bread and butter? I'm surprised that you actually don't have any empirical data to back up your statements right now, given the fact that this is like oh, the majority of your on how many analysis, right? Because you're saying these movies are failing. Like the two highest grossing movies last year were The Black Panther and The Avengers: Infinity War. Your argument about the right wing media was that the two just because biggest were leftist doesn't mean the majority. And it's well, exactly aren't the majority of movies now like SJW propaganda? Isn't that like your argument that all the movies today are like all SJW shit? They all seem to be still be making a fuck ton of money, SJW right? Like, shit. no. Well, I think the big the two movies that people are probably talking about is Captain Marvel and uh, Black Panther, right? Uh, Sargon, if you want to conclude your concluding statement, and then we can go over to Nick. Yes, the, there is there is definitely a political agenda being driven in movies now. Luckily, some of them, like Captain Marvel and Black Panther, do very. Many of them don't do very well, and I don't. I think this is going to be something with diminishing returns as we go into the future. There we go. Okay, Nick, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously the it all started out about Mueller, but it quickly became about media bias. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows that the media bias is in news media. Everybody knows the liberal bias is in Hollywood. We know it's uh, it exists everywhere, and we're living in it. I mean, it, there's just simply no disputing that. And we we're talking about movies like Captain Marvel and Black Panther, but you could look at advertisements, you could look at sitcoms, you could look at video games. Why is it the case now that, you know, every movie I look at, the protagonist is, there's a girl, but she's special. There's something different about her. She's actually kind of quirky, and she's going to kick ass and save the world. I mean, that's every movie now, and that's every, that's every video game. Battlefield Five that new Far Cry game where the protagonists are like black lesbians or something. I mean, we know this, the Versace advertisement, they're trying to sell fucking perfume and what do they got on the front cover? Anybody want to take a look? So, and again, and I do want to clarify, there's the last thing I'll say. Uh, 
which is what Sargon said. We're not saying that the people at the top, we're not saying that the major, you know, CEOs and CFOs and owners are saying, yeah, yeah, get a little interracial kissing in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, make this that character homosexual or something. We're not saying that it's coming from the top down. What we're saying is that the people that are actually directing these things have an agenda. People that are directing the advertisements, for example, in uh, Stranger Things. This was a popular thing that was going on on our side of the internet. In the second season of Stranger Things, I guess a white girl kissed a black boy or something to that effect. And it came out like, why did that happen? Well, it wasn't even in the script. The director said, why don't you just do that? Now, did somebody come down from the top and say, hey, we need a kiss like this. This is going to make more money. Or was it a director with a personal bias who said something like this might be good for my agenda, whatever that might be? So and and that this is controversial, that this is even an argument just shows how out of touch and uh, and disingenuous you guys are being, because I think everybody knows the world we're living in. That's that's one thing we can't. OK. All right. The fact that you want to bring up an interracial kissing as a part of your like media analysis genuinely shows me how far, like, how far you're going to be thinking. thinking uh, imagine well, thinking on, that, like, two can. children Wait, can kissing. I, can I ask, Please can I let us on finish. Right, All right. I'll let him finish. That was really good, Nick. That was a really clever rebuttal. Um, yeah. Well, ha hang on. Before we move on, I love so that you want to. I love that you want to uh, be taken Hold seriously on, as, a, as a commentator, and yet uh, you unironically get triggered by a Personal black attack. person and a Personal white attack. person kissing in a Netflix movie. I don't think anybody said that is social progress. Who gives a fuck? That's the whole point. Like, who gives a fuck one way or the other? Ultimately, is it making money or is it not making money? If you think that, if you think that movies have a moral interest in pushing a narrative and changing social culture beyond like the people who are trying to do it in like little ways in the way that you apparently, you know, interracial mixing is also uh, a, a problem. But beyond that, if you think that there is a, 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 this larger idea, then you have to prove it. You have to tell me that like this doesn't just this isn't just uh, successful because people want to watch this sort of stuff. You have to show me that despite the fact that these companies are failing, they're still doing it. Okay, what, what do you consider proof in this regard? Is the, the directors and the actors well, saying let's, it? Let, let's continue. Let, let, let's conclude the, the statement. I think Sargon right. wanted to make a quick, please, very quick yeah, very, uh, very, uh, correction. Very um, he wanted, he just, wanted, he wanted to make a correction name. to his past. Uh, make the correction, then we'll go to Destiny immediately. Please yeah, make yeah, it very sure. quick. So in 2018, Disney's profits were down 18%, 17%, and they've canceled all the other Star Wars spinoffs. Because they got woke and went broke, you know. They, they it's killing what? Disney. No, it's because they're shit. The prequels were shit too. I mean, they're <laughs> shit because of identity politics, mate. What, why were the prequels shit? Yeah, <laughs> the prequels are shit because George Lucas is now a touch old. Do you see the difference there? Do you see why identitarians get so mad at you? Because you just said that the prequels are shit because they're bad movies on their own merit, but the sequels were shit because of identity politics. Maybe they were just yeah. shit movies. They certainly were shit movies, but the cause of them being shit movies isn't the same for the. How, can you tell me what part of the Star Wars movie was ruined because of identity politics? Was it that the main character was a woman, or was it a black guy? I can give guy? you like, my opinion if you like. Sure. I'm but the point curious. is, this, the new Star Wars movie are not raking in the dosh, and they're being cancelled because Disney is costing money. Like Hassan's, Hassan's like you know Wait, evil Jewish. If you're the, the, the new Star Wars movies aren't making money, the fact that movies are losing money, they're still pushing these movies because they want to push the moral narrative. Doesn't then, that mean that Star Wars would still continue to make these movies then? Holy shit! If oh wait, you you're right! You're just trying to What are you talking about, Sargon? You. They canceled the movies exactly because they weren't making what I'm money! Saying. Let Sargon Listen, finish completely, right? please. Hold your thought. This, this there, is there are, Hassan, Hassan, listen, right? The, the Jewish billionaires that you are so interested in and hate so much, they are concerned with their profits. The people down the chain who are interested in morals are the ones losing their money, and they've cancelled the Star Wars films because the people further down the chain are fucking it up, so, pushing a moral message. I don't know how much clearer I can make that. Okay, okay. wait, can I just, okay. I just want to give three facts real go quick, ahead. real quick. Wait, 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 three quick facts, okay? You the Force Awakens, the Force Awakens made... Please let Asma go, let Asma go, please let, go, let go ahead and then Destiny. Let me what he's saying, just so everybody is on the same page here. What you are saying is that the people in the middle, Sargon, are basically making decisions that are making the people at the top lose money Absolutely. In, in and in response to that the people at the top are preventing the people in the middle from continuing to make films well they're canceling the franchise yeah right yeah they're canceling yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay so the, for, the force awakens okay one of the most cucked films of all time okay the story of a cucked white man getting uh taken over by a strong black man and a female lead made two billion dollars okay mm -hmm. the the last jedi another story of horrible evil white men blah 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 made mm -hmm. 1.3 billion dollars these are the yeah. sjw failing horrible movies yeah. but then our movie that has strong white lead male character solo 
that only made three hundred ninety-two million. That's yeah. by the way why those movies, why the Obi Wan movie is getting canceled, is because of how fucking horrible Solo did, which was a yeah. white straight male. Do you think that You'll they fucked that one up because? Slide. Wait, do you think that instead? Do you think instead of um, Solo for having this the white straight male, should they have like made like a female lead or a black lead? Do you think well, that might have saved Rogue the... One Um, Rogue One box office. 1.05 billion fuck it's so the it's, fucking... it's been a consistent decline since the last jedi well, your movie makes a billion dollars i don't think that's a i don't think people see that as necessarily I'm like sure a... you don't but they've canceled further spin-offs because they're not well i'm pretty sure the cancellation i'm pretty sure the cancellation of the spin-offs happened because of how horrible solo did not because Rogue I'm sure one made a billion dollars no just, I'm just sure a second. that's the case yeah but the other three made over a billion dollars, right? You said Rogue One and the other two Star yeah. Wars movies. Yeah, and also Rogue One made a billion dollars. That came out before The Last Jedi, which made $1.3 well, billion. Dollars. Dollars. So it's... The, the okay, this conversation, conversation is getting ridiculous. Can we pass this point now? Because obviously, I think Sargon already uh, admitted that the profit motive is still very much in effect when uh, Hollywood factors in uh, making new movies. I don't think we we're arguing the same not. thing. No I think you're arguing that making is a profit making business. I don't think anybody disputed that. What we're saying is that there is obviously a social agenda being implemented by the people making these features. And that's not, again, if you're looking at a corporation as it's Walt Disney who makes the movies and mm. he's the head of the company. So you're saying that eventually, eventually oh, movies either. are going to not make profit. That's what you're saying. If no, they continue what we're to saying, go well. I don't, I don't know what this fixation is on the profit. The point is that the people that are directing these things have a social agenda that they're implementing. The point is not that there are people at the top that are commanding down and there's this grand conspiracy working. Clearly, who are the types that produce films? Who are the types that end up in these creative type positions. We know they're biased. That's all that the argument was about. You're trying to say, you guys are wrong because they're canceling unprofitable movies. Well, nobody said that they were pursuing this in spite of profit. We're saying there is a social agenda, which is two different arguments. Well, no, it's literally a dichotomy. You either pursue a social agenda or you maximize profits. It's one or the other. If, we're if saying that maximize profits. Two different two different person, but we're talking about a, an, an organization okay. which is not monolithic, as Sargon said earlier. What, what, what Nick is trying to say is that there are two separate parties. There are the people that are trying to make all of the money mm -hmm. and the people that are trying to assert their social opinions. Is, is no, I understand right? that. I'm just, it's but frustrating for me because like, distinct, I, are you guys aware of how distinct. Hollywood works at all? Or are you just like speculating? There is no <laughs> way that there is not a single, there, there isn't a movie that gets made for $200 million where every inch of that movie isn't regulated and, and, and goes all the way back to the financial institutions where they can take a look at like what's going on and ensure that it's still profitable uh, and, and means tested and, and market ready. Do you really think How that they're just going to, they would not allow like mid-level uh, people to just like sneakily include social justice messages into it. It's, it's, it's the psychotic to assume Hassan. it. It's the what? directors that are doing this. Okay. They're very if, open about it. Okay, but they would never be able to get away with it, is my point. They How can't, did they lose money then? If it wasn't, if it wasn't <laughs> financial they viable, movie. they would never okay, be able to get I, away with it, which is precisely I, I, why you can't, you can't honestly bring up uh, a yeah, point I, I where a company has gone under because they've like tried social justice too much. I, I think this conversation sure has gotten to be a little bit ridiculous. So I, I agree. I can, can I ask, I said, can I ask Nick a simple Let's yes or no question? And then I won't, I won't have a, I won't have a rebuttal. Well, we know it's not going to be a yes or no. No, no, it'll, it'll be really simple yes or no. I'm, yeah, I'm genuinely just curious. I, I, no, no, you don't have to answer yes or no. You can explain more if you want. Do you think it's immoral in media to show interracial relationships? I don't think it's immoral. I just don't okay. want a social agenda being pushed by uh, a social agenda, which is so deliberate. I mean, that's what offends me is the fact that it's so obvious and out there. And yeah, it's not something that I believe in. It's something I disagree with. I don't believe okay. that uh, people making advertisements should be trying to control or manipulate what we believe about certain things. And certainly not in that direction. Okay, but you don't okay, have no, any no. problem. Yeah, well, no, you said certainly not in that direction. Does that mean that you have a specific inclination against interracial relationships? Yeah, I don't think it's something else? that should be promoted. I don't think okay. it's... Okay, all right. <laughs> Let, let's go ahead. Let's just go on to the next topic. I, agree. I, li um, I like the laughing. Yeah. That'll okay. be really funny when you guys are well, bred out of existence. 
All right, yeah, oh, dude, that's man. me. That, you don't Let's know, man. Go. My life is so fucking hard. I can't you know, find any girls because they're just not black enough. They don't want anything to do with white people anymore. All, man, all right, me. all right, all right, all right. Yeah, so Destiny's speaking, speaking Nick, of how that, does it make you feel Guys, that I am <laughs> here we go, the 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 in white genocide? You sound like all right. I love all these. I want to point out also, by the way, I do, I'm the only one here with a kid. Besides, I, I don't know. I think Sargon is here. Where's your where are your children at? Abandon the kid, but you got where's your where are your children at, Fuentes? Hey, at least I made one, man. I'm contributing to the white population. Where are your kids at? Let's Wait not bring shade. Maybe if you drop you gotta his paleo, you, you, you got it. You, you got to finally get some pussy dog. Hey, listen. Oh hey, God. hey, pussy guys, pussy guys, okay. guys, stop. Okay. Listen. Let's go, let's go to the next topic. Yes. How about that? Then again, your, so your gene pool is diluted, come on, so you listen. technically are also going to Guys, stop with these ad hominem. Hey, stop with these ad homs. Relax. Okay, all right. See, that's... That's why I tried to end. As soon as Nick said that, I tried to go to the next topic. It didn't work. Though. As we can talk about like, the next let him one. Drop that well, in there. Let's go. All right. Come next on. one. Next okay, one we want man. to talk about is the New Zealand church shooting. Now the tragedy, and this yes. is what we. I'm going to be right reading this off the same as Train did. The tragedy in Christchurch, New Zealand, where 50 people were killed and 50 others were injured while attending a mosque, has promoted many media outlets to ask what part of online content creators play and the radicalization of terrorist attacks. The debate following the shooter's posting on 8chan stating subscribe to PewDiePie and referencing many popular internet memes in the manifesto he released prior to the attack. He also stated plainly in said manifesto that he had done these things in order to try and sow dissent between the left and the right and try to further right radicalize others, a point that hasn't stopped the subsequent calls for censorship. Does this panel honestly believe that the shooter was radicalized or directly incited to commit this crime by YouTubers and content creators he followed? And if so, is the appropriate response to deplatform anyone who is considered irresponsibly right wing? I think that we should start this off. Bef actually, by Asman, before before we actually start this, I wanted to take I wanted to give you guys the opportunity. If any of you need to use the restroom or get a water, this would be the time. Um, I actually had a that sneak. does sound good, actually. Yeah, if Ooh, you guys yeah, he's gonna fucking yeah. run ads, boys. He's gonna run ads. Yeah. Take, take the time. <laughs> hey, to go hey, I gotta pee. I gotta pee real bad. Hey. Let him talk. Let him talk. Let him talk. Yep. All right. Uh, what's a good time? Two minutes. You, you want two minutes? One minute? I'll I'll need more than that. Five at least. I'm five minutes. For a cigarette as well. So okay. Five minutes. We'll take a five minute little uh, uh, break and then we'll continue with this. I'll read it one more time once everyone gets back. Uh, go ahead and turn your cameras off if you'd like. Um, and. We can get I'll started drive. again in five minutes. I'll put a timer on.
Yeah. I, you think um, he does? To, well, no, I mean, I largely agree with you. To, to come to the middle a little bit, Nick, I, like, I, I kind of sort of, I, I mean, like, there's probably a chance, or I would say there's a high probability that any individual actor, not like an actor, actor, but any individual like player in, in, in large media might be able to push a little bit in, in some direction morally, maybe if they want to cast an interracial, maybe they might have that much sway. I don't even know if I give them that much. Um, but the, the massive <laughs> idea that like capitalism um, is an effective means to kind of like push progressive societies or, or to push like progression in, in moral systems, I just don't think that's true. I think that businesses usually lack behind cultural trends like pretty hard when it comes to pushing you, you know unless it makes money you have unless, to well yeah that's what i mean unless it makes money unless society's already ready to accept it i don't think we're gonna have like the media's not gonna be like a driving okay. narrative there all right guys everyone's back um i'm gonna go ahead and re um go through it again ask the question again go over it um for everyone that's new that missed it um that's in the chat and for you guys just kind of give you a little uh recap um so this next topic will be regarding the Christchurch shooting aftermath the tragedy in Christchurch, New Zealand, where 50 people were killed and 50 others injured while attending a mosque, has prompted many media outlets to ask what part, to ask what part online content creators play in the radicalization of terrorist attackers. This debate following the shooters posting the 8chan, stating, subscribe to PewDiePie, and referencing many popular internet memes in the manifesto he released prior to the attack. He also stated plainly in said manifesto that he had done this, done these things in order to try and sow dissent between the left and right groups to try and further radicalize others, a point that hasn't stopped the subsequent calls for censorship. Does the panel honestly believe that the shooter was radicalized or directly incited to commit his crime by YouTubers and content creators he followed? And if so, is the appropriate response to deep platform anyone who is considered irresponsibly right wing? I think the best place to start here would probably be Nick. I mean, he was part of the Charlottesville, uh, you know, the, what would you really call that? Uh, the get together, the riot, whatever you want to say. And um, obviously- with Nazi protest. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, you were involved with that. And so how do you feel like, do you feel like this was in any way influenced by that Charlottesville event? And uh, do you feel like this person who did commit the shooting in New Zealand was influenced by these people on YouTube? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I'll say, I'll say at the outset that um, advocacy for violence by people on the right, and particularly the white identitarian or white advocacy, even people adjacent to that, is basically not tolerated. So for example, if you look, if you look at any number of um, right wing or white identitarian content creators, you really can't find among them one that is explicitly calling for something like this, even somebody like Richard Spencer, who I think what everybody, everybody would say is the leader of the alt-right um, and the progenitor of even the term alt-right as the uh, protege of uh, Paul Gottfried. They created that term. Even he doesn't say that you should go out and commit acts like this. So it's hard for me to say um, that there is a genesis for that um, in, in content creation explicitly. I will say, however, um, and this isn't whataboutism. I know people are going to say this is whataboutism. But I'll explain myself because it's, a, it's an important point to make. You had this shooting on a Friday. A few days later, you had a shooting in the Netherlands committed by a Muslim. The day after, you had uh, an Italian migrant from Senegal set a school bus on fire with 50 children inside. And he was protesting these migrant policies that Salvini was implementing. And I don't mean to say that to say everybody does things. Um, you know, every well, and that, that is partially true. But the important point to make here is that the natural consequence of multiracialism, the natural consequence of multiculturalism is conflict. And so I see an act like this being carried out as basically inevitable. This is something I've been warning about for years. You know, a lot of people say that I'm alt-right or a white nationalist. An alt-right white nationalist type of person wants to create an ethno state. They want to take America and either deport, deport non-white people or segment off their white separatists. They want to segment off a white section, secede, something like that, which is not something I believe in. I think that we've basically made our bed demographically. You know, things are going to happen. White people become a minority. But I believe that there are certain consequences from this, which is that you have a lot of different people coming together with a lot of different values, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different beliefs. When they're all living in close proximity and they're fighting for the same resources from government, um, they're fighting for the same jobs and things like that. When they're, again, right up against each other, sharing the same transportation, sharing the same public facilities and so on, the natural inclination is violence. And you can say that that's a bad thing. I agree. 
I'm not trying to justify or rationalize. I think violence is always a bad thing. I'm very anti-violence. However, I don't think you can separate the consequence of this multiracialism policy um, so cleanly. You know, I think you see it. Everybody, when they get smashed together, you get this kind of conflict. So sure, you know, you could see that he probably uses some of the same talking points as a lot of YouTubers. You per- YouTubers don't call for mosque shootings. But I think um, regardless of who you look at or what content they look at, this is the consequence of a lot of different people, diversity, essentially, living together in one country. Do you think types of uh, YouTubers led him in the direction of doing this? Maybe they didn't necessarily tell him, go shoot up a mosque, but they led him down the ideology that gave him the conclusion to shoot up a mosque. Well, insofar as he was stating facts about white displacement in white countries, um, you could say that he got that data, but that data is available from the government. I think who was really culpable for this kind of thing is the censors, is the media. Because you want to know the truth, and this is something I've been talking about on my show for a long time. The reason you get violent people is they say, there's no way for me to fix what I see happening in the country through government or media. I can't talk about it. I'd lose my job. I'd get my social media account shut down. The people in media aren't talking about it. The politicians aren't talking about it. I cannot affect change within the system through legitimate means. What's the only alternative in that event? Now, it's not a rational thing to do. You know, a rational person does not say, I'm going to be a martyr, because obviously not only are the effects the opposite of what you want, but also this is not, I mean, this is not something that a a sane, normal person does to go up and, you know, shoot up a place of worship. So I think that more than anybody who's culpable is the people saying that, you know, if we're trying to express grievance about what's happening to countries or what's happening with demographics, and that conversation is shut down, people are denied a seat at the table. I think the conclusion then is for certain types, for certain types of psychopaths in the society is, well, I'll take matters into my own hand. So, so I think you, the real so uh, argument. The real... Okay. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you oh, off. But I, yeah, I, no, go I ahead. do. Well, let me, let me finish this. I, so your argument basically is the out that this violence is an outcome of these people not feeling like they can achieve any sort of a change or be able to even approach a change on their own terms. And so they they resort to violence is that basically right. what you're, okay well let's let's go over to sargon sargon you have a youtube channel and uh, a lot of people call you right wing accurate or inaccurate that's what they say uh do you feel like this person was influenced at all by people on youtube maybe not like yourself but like other people that are on there that are making content that could lead him in this direction i think it's a very misleading question to to think that um, any one political direction ends in violence. The, the problem isn't that communities exist. The problem, I think that Nick actually really hit the nail on the head there, is when people feel that they cannot actually get any kind of legitimate redress for their grievances. And I think a really good example of this is actually the YouTube shooter. Um, oh, yeah. She, she was just demonetized. She didn't come from a deeply ideological community. I mean, she might have done, but that wasn't the reason that she did this. She she went and did it because she just felt she had no rights against YouTube. And it was obviously something that was deeply important to her, the fact that she could make videos. So I think that it's kind of a red herring. Because, I mean, if if it was the alt-right that was just a, a so effectively like a jihadi community, then why aren't we seeing alt-right murders literally every day? You know, like we do with jihadis, in fact. You know, it's it's not something that I think is necessarily inherent to any one community because, I mean, literally everyone has their shooters. You know, every single community. Point to a community, and I'll be able to point you to the shooters that come out of it. I think it's a I think it's an act of desperation by individuals who just feel they just have nothing else to lose. So you and guys are I, in agreement there, basically. Well, yeah, on on, the, on this okay. particular analysis, yeah, I think. All right. And, I mean, it, again, like, to suggest that this is any one person, well, I mean, we know what radicalized the guy. He was very explicit about this in his manifesto, and it wasn't social media. So this is, a, again, a total red herring. Wait, why and did he do the shootings? You said you know because why. Because he went to France. Okay. And, um, what, and then what was his do thing Do you want me to read that? it out for you? I actually have it up on my screen here. Uh, well, 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 I mean, I've read on. it all. I'm just curious what your interpretation is. Sorry, go ahead. Let's go ahead. Well, I mean, my interpretation is his literal... Let's have a. Uh, What's your interpretation? Let's, let's have Hassan. Wait, you, I'm sorry. His mic cut out real quick. Your interpretation yeah. of his literal what? 
his literal words. Okay. okay what? What? Why did let's, he do the shooting? Real quick, yo, real okay, quick. Yeah, 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 okay. Let's okay, have so, Has wait, hold on, real quick. Let's have Hassan and Destiny uh, uh, give us their right. take, and then we can get the, we can confer. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, or, then, or you then guys we'll can talk confer. about what he yeah. said specifically. Go exactly. ahead, Destiny. You, you started off. Um. I, so, the question of whether or not like a YouTuber made this particular guy go out and, and do a shooting um, is going to be really hard to establish that chain. Um. If you if you did read this guy's manifesto, this guy was like an extreme like alt right figure. Um. So, for instance, he viewed all Muslims in every country were seen as foreign invaders, and at this point, he thought that government was ineffective as a means to actually remove them from the country. So, like Nick said, he did feel like he couldn't rely on government to do something, but he wanted to rely on government to literally kick out all Muslims from New Zealand. So he felt that he needed to go to a place and target and kill the most amount of Muslims possible, and he went to a mosque and did it. Um, I don't know if I don't know what the alternative to that is. If Nick is suggesting that maybe we need ways for these people to address their grievances about Muslims existing in countries, um, I know that he vaguely referred to a, a couple of. Um, I guess attacks by migrants in other countries to show that migrants are bad or something. Um, I am familiar I just, with the one I thing that he referenced. That. Please let Destiny finish. Okay, yeah, I am familiar with the one um, th that Italian uh, hijacking that dude that was going to blow that bus up. The the person that actually stopped that from happening was actually a little Egyptian kid that Italy is now granting citizenship to because that thirteen year old kid actually called his dad on the phone while he was pretending to pray while the guy was collecting phones. I am familiar with that story. I don't know about the rest of them. Maybe they're bullshit. I don't know. Um, but regardless, um, I mean, I do think that like hateful rhetoric can lead to hateful acts of violence. I, I mean, that chain is, is to establish that is very complicated. You know, people maybe listen to a few jokes in one place, start posting on poll in another place, start getting drafted into more extremist groups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of people that are really good gateways for this. I mean, people have written up so many different types of studies for how you can start watching a, a Joe Rogan video and then go to Jordan Peterson and then wind up with more extremist figures like uh, Nick Fuentes or maybe uh, Lauren Southern or something like that, and then eventually go down that extremist road. Um, but but establishing that chain is, is a very complicated, very difficult thing to do. But, but do you, I mean, to you deny do its think existence it's possible? Really though right uh it, yeah for sure yeah of course and also i i think at the beginning of your statement you did kind of get give a little bit of uh credence to nick and also sargon's point that maybe he acted out in this way because he didn't feel like he was able to discuss these issues without being uh you know isolated or uh you know hated for it Oh yeah, sure, but that doesn't mean okay. that I think that those views are legitimate or need to be platformed. I think that's okay. a I think that's a bad dichotomy, right? If somebody okay. says like I want to kill all black people, like well I'm going to fire you if you say that on Twitter, and then they go out and they actually kill black people because they got banned from Twitter, you wouldn't say, well hold on, like should we be suppressing this man's views? He felt like he had no way to express them, and now he actually went, well no. I mean the idea is we need to not have people have these horrendously anti-immigrant views in society, right? Mm -hmm. So views like Fuentes pushes, for instance, where he seems to be anti-immigrant or anti-person of color or whatever, moving into certain countries where he feels like it violates their Western culture or whatever. However, he dog yeah, just okay. a lot of straw men here. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and let's go over to Hassan. Yeah, Hassan, go ahead. Okay, so before we get started, um, I just want to say I want to commend Nick for being a, a phenomenal orator and sneaking in uh, multiple lines in there. For example, uh, including uh, calling the uh, shooter a martyr uh, and and making it seem as though it was a, a, an unavoidable and ultimately. Uh, rational cause that uh, he had to go out and shoot someone. I mean, obviously, I mean, there was just no other way. There was simply no other way for this shooter to express his outrage uh, for coexisting with humans that look a little different than them. <laughs> and maybe, which is insane to me. But beyond that, the problem right now is that these sorts of lone wolf style attacks is considered as, uh, and I might have a hard time saying this word, stochastic terrorism, okay? Stochastic terrorism is when um, there is uh, an overwhelming amount of public demonization that leads to a person or a group uh, that, that goes out and, and radicalizes uh, through social media or other forms and, and commits an act of terror. There is a reason why there are um, different uh, restrictions placed upon uh, hate speech or, or, um, or this, sort of like, uh, this sort of information being disseminated in other Western democratic nations. And that reason isn't to like hide the truth. It's actually to stop the misinformation from, um, from flooding. And obviously this has happened over and over again, and it's continuing to grow. And overwhelmingly, uh, it's, it's uh, right-wing nationalism that is a, is a gigantic problem here in the United States and, um, and somewhat uh, worldwide as well. Well, let's look at how much of a problem that actually is, because Sargon, you said a minute ago that you actually did have the manifesto uh, up mm. there and you want to explain what the shooter's actual intentions were. So if you want to go ahead and expand on that. 
Okay, well, before before I do, I think I I think uh, being the resident centrist in the room, <laughs> um, I think it's important to note that the only reason we're concerned about right wing nationalism is because of the cultural dominance of the left. Left wing ideas are platformed everywhere. Radical left wing ideas are platformed everywhere, and this is just something obviously the the the, the two left wingers here can't own, but it's definitely true. And the reason that the the far right, the sort of the counterbalance to the Hassan Pikers of the world aren't being platformed everywhere else is because of this. And it's not because their ideas aren't horrific. They are horrific. But it's I don't the think radical left. Could you think, describe no, what my no, perspective no. is that is okay. violent, just as violent as like a Nazi uh, claiming that uh, inbreed, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, race mixing is, is uh, the same as like genocide. I don't think Sorry, he's what, saying what, that. Yeah, I don't I, think I said that. Uh, well, no, no I, you I said that left wing ideas that are extreme yeah. are being platformed, right? Yeah. Whereas the right wing equivalent of those ideas are not. And yeah. the, there's a, there is a major difference between the radical extreme ideas and the radical extreme uh, right wing ideas. So I'm just Not trying essence, to make sure that you understand genocidal. that if well, someone that is, is talking is about if someone is talking about an economic structure, which is what I do quite frequently. Good um, and and uh, re like seizing the means of production or mm. redistributing wealth or giving people yeah. uh, universal uh, health care. I mean, these are concepts that have been proven and have worked in all of these other countries. Okay, and, okay. no, no, um, no okay. talking stop, about them, stop, stop, talking no, no, about no, no, them, no, no, no. Is we nowhere can't, we near. We go this... down this, right? It's wait, too wait, big a subject. It, no, no, because you're not finish. Is stop. No, because what you've said is demonstrably false, right? And it's going to lead us into a massive conversation about Marxism. And it's not really worth getting into that because that will be no. Into the it's not worth getting into it because it I don't. I think you're a little out of your depth, and that's precisely. Well, I know I'm not. Oh, oh, okay. You apply this flat logic, and I'm just go, trying to. Sure not, but we can discuss it another time. Let's we can take do a stream where we discuss okay, it. Okay. The problem is let's Nazis take... are not the same as like people who are on the left. Communists. You know what I mean? All right. Well, yeah. I don't think Nazis and communists are not the same thing. Guys, let's calm down. Let's fall back to the original question that Hassan had. Can you give us an example? Hassan asked a question to Sargon. Can you give me an example of extreme left-wing opinions? Well, um, yeah, just any like, any communist is an extreme left-wing opinion. Like well, do you think communist. that communist opinions are socially acceptable in the society right now? No, I, well, they they are, but they shouldn't be. I mean, like for example, in my country today, right, um, there's so you there's, want censorship for the Nazis and the communists? Well, no, I think they should both be talked to actually. But it's what what I mean is, um, I give you an example from my country. We're a bit more left-wing than America. But your, your universities are overrun with this. But um, so there's a, a program called BBC Question Time. It's B, the BBC is meant to be a neutral, impartial arbiter of discussion, and uh, the the panel that they had was four left wingers, including a literal communist, and then a kind of centrist conservative being the counterpoint. And that just that in my country that goes show you just the overwhelming left wing. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So your counterpoint to the the left version of the New Zealand shooter is a BBC show that no, nobody cares no, about that no has four Destiny left wings not, on it. No, it's not Destiny. But I know that you'd like to think that would well, be. The we'll case. keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Could you talk about examples of left wing violence that is similar in in nature to right wing violence that we're seeing all around the world? And then once you're done yeah. with that, could you point yeah, yeah, yeah. back to uh, okay. Marxist theory that I made? So the terrorism worldwide. You've got the jihadis. Then you've got communists. Then you've got other. And it's a massive gap between the jihadis and the communists, and then the communists and other. So, you know, don't give me this, right? Communism Wait, is an inherently... Is there, a, is there like a network no, of no, communist... I realize you don't want to hear it, but from the liberal perspective, no, communism I do. I do is want inherently to violent. And there's no getting around that. I mean, it's in the manifesto. Wait, what's it's inherently violent? It's revolutionary. Oh, communism. Okay. We're Wait, really gonna... Uh, that's not we... true. But it's absolutely it's okay. true, which is why communism has never even been attempted without violence. Okay. Um, the reason there are many different schools of thought. There are lots of excuses. <laughs> that, well, that, I, well, I mean, well. also, well, hold on, this real is quick. Why like, I didn't wait, 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 where does capitalism fit? Guys, 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 one at a time. Destiny, go ahead. Destiny, go ahead. Where does capitalism exist without violence? Like, like you, you're part of your nation is like one of the most imperialist histories of all time. The United States was founded on destroying the entire native population here, and also rabid imperialism. Where does capitalism exist without violence? Did I say it wasn't? Well, no, but I mean, if you're trying to then point don't out bring something, it up. stop missing my point. I've made. Wait, my wait, point. no, no, wait. Now... Your point is vacuous. If everything is no, it's violent, absolutely not. No, absolutely not. There is. You cannot well, say. Wait, let there me refocus. Yeah, well, let's refocus. So the question was, what are some examples of left-wing violence? Because we we have examples yeah, okay, of right-wing violence. Communist and... revolutions. 
Do you want me to give a list? I mean, I can pull up a Wikipedia list. Wait, what about? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, no, what no. About, what, like, no, no I'm not, I'm not no, no, interested. No, no, hold on, hold on. So if you have, if you have the USSR, right? If you have the USSR, for example, the history of the USSR is a, if that's your point of reference for a violent uh, communist act or whatever, okay, which is not violence done in the name of communism. It's just, it's still technically. Is it not? Could, okay. Just listen. <laughs> if that's your example, okay, sure. I'll concede that. That's I'm not a Stalinist. Unlike, unlike what you think, I'm, I'm actually not a Marxist Leninist. I don't believe in the vanguardist perspective, but oh, hold God. on. Can you, what, what about, what about what the fucking United States government does every single day? What, what about, about the, it? what about the unjustifiable illegal wars violent? in Iraq and does Afghanistan? What about the fact that we have violent? seven proxy wars that we're currently engaging in that are does incredibly violent? capitalism murdering does people? Point? Does it make communism less violent? <laughs> yes, it 1000% does no, because it the doesn't. only example you can no, give when we're talking about here and now, the only example you can give is structural violence. The only example you can give against the structural violence that occurs every single day is the USSR, the communist revolution no, against the fucking example. I could pull up dozens of examples. Hassan. Yeah, and I like could pull the, up a hundred times worse shit that unambiguous. the United States has no, done couldn't. in an effort to fucking end communism all around the world. Okay, We're Hassan, talking about terrorism right now. Have any We're, about about left -wing We're talking about left-wing left -wing ideology. The worst thing that happened Real to humanity in all of human history. Okay, that's right. Right. Okay, okay, listen, I'm going to step in. I'm, wait, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step in. Let Hassan finish his point. Sargon, you can respond. Then let Destiny so, and Nick go into well, no, it I, however they wait, like. We're going off into the weeks. We're, the we're going only off example, the, the, the only example of I, systemic I, violence that, brought yeah, about by bringing communism into action is nowhere near as bad as all of the fucking death toll under capitalism. <laughs> we talk about oh. people dying in famines and whatnot under a uh, communist dictatorship. Seven million people every year die because they don't have access to fucking food we have an abundance <laughs> of food and people are still Amazing. dying people are still dying because of famine and other uh, other diseases Amazing. that are born out of famine that is a consequence of the capitalist structure that we exist under and yet you never point That's the right. finger at that the That's issue right. that i have with this is that we're talking currently <laughs> about right-wing terror versus left-wing terror okay <laughs> right-wing terror versus left-wing terror there's nothing to, like yeah. it, 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 it's such a dumb rebuttal to be like it's not. Give me examples of how this has happened recently. Like, yeah, like left wing in terror fucking... groups are the what? most populous terror groups after jihadis around the world. You've got all sorts of like how, Marxist, leftist, revolution. Can you just, Sorry? yeah, can you give me how some? How do you quantify that? Okay, well, fine. I'll look it up. Well, oh, okay. I mean, I didn't know if you had enough. So you might as well, you don't have anything? Like, you don't, you just well, say it? Honey, he's you gonna look say it up. things Please. without backing it up, well, like, or not knowing that it's like an actual uh, like. Let him look thing. it up. Sorry, what 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 are you asking me there, Hassan? You said that uh, the left wing populist left wing groups are the most populous groups, terrorist groups after yes. jihadi groups. That's what you said. Yes. I thought in the United States, isn't most of the like the most of the um, people that were killed last year or was it 2017? Where no, because that's of right wing extremist groups. ADL study. You're gonna trigger Nick, but it's oh 100%. fuck. Is there any non like Jewish controlled study people that like look into these types of stats that Nick would trust or? You know, it's funny. I noticed that me and Sargon are actually trying to make cogent points and it seems like there's just no shortage of misdirection, disingenuous, sort of smarmy little remarks from you guys. Um, you know, I think Sargon is trying to make the point that, and he said this at the beginning, everybody has their shooters. That was the point. The point was to say that if you look at any political ideology, that you could even interpret as moderate. None of them intrinsically are more violent than any other, even if that's the case, then it's marginal. Because we can, look at something like, we can look at something like Islam, for example. Are we to say that the 30,000 terror attacks since 9-11 committed in the name of Islam is because Islam is intrinsically violent. Now, you would probably disagree with that, but you say that to simply observe these massive demographic changes that are happening in Western countries is in and of itself something that is a call to violence. So, so this, this sort of argument, which is so derivative about wh which has killed more, capitalism or communism, I think the point was to say that if you're advocating communism, certainly we can find people that have killed in the name of communism. If you're advocating socialism, we can find people. We can find people who have killed in the name of paganism okay. in the last 10 well, years. Well, yeah, so the, the okay, problem is like this. But two, more importantly than that, sorry, Destiny, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I just need to make one point. One, you can't, and two, you can, there are actually. some people who have done that, but more importantly than that, the ideology itself is an economic reorganization versus Nazism or fascism is based upon exclusion. And the principle of exclusion 
is is a, a, a never ending fucking series of people becoming more and more violent in an effort to push out these people. And the many debates that you had with Destiny outed you for having this sort of perspective. Uh, am I, am I incorrect? Really uh, again, with the passive aggressive sort of untalking. No, incorrect, incorrect. Number one, you can point to people who have killed in the name of left wing ideologies. The Kurds in the Middle East are communists, and they're among the most violent ISIS? people in the world. Yeah, they killed no, ISIS. ISIS. No. Are you stupid? ISIS is fighting the Kurds. The Kurds are Marxists. They they I also know, fight the Turks. Turks. ISIS, ISIS Turkey. dumbass. No, are Turkey Turkey considers them communist revolutionaries. What a joke. Turkey's not they killing them because of communism. No, no, Turkey's no, killing them because they're an ethnic that minority that Turkey oppresses severely. What a joke. What a joke. You get the gotcha you think moment. The Kurds I'm, are I'm ISIS. Fully in favor of a fucking. Ro I'm fully in favor of an independent nation state of Kurdistan. Okay, brother. Let me tell you. I don't know what I don't even know what you're saying at this point. You said yeah, that because the Kurds you have no ISIS. knowledge over the things you speak of. You just speak it's quite in generalities. The it's and like quite the opposite. Vague... You think that the Kurds are not left wing and Marxist? You, no, of you course they are. But the people that are being That's violent against are either the Turkish That's military what I just or said. ISIS they commit terror. <laughs> Excuse me, they commit terror attacks in Turkey all the time. Read yeah, about it. The the PKK, which is a terror cell, which I disagree with, and I don't what, like. What oh, okay, okay, you okay. but you can't the have it always. Then. I said the Kurds are killing you ISIS. Have it always, then look okay. at how ridiculous you look. You just admitted that they have terror cells, but I disagree with it. Nick, I, Nick, I don't think that because I don't think that an entire ethnic identity is a monolith. Okay, guys, let's calm down. All right, guys, I have this. I'm not an identitarian. You're guys, let's calm Your down. Is less than guys, guys, relax. Let's calm down. As we go, go ahead. Less than hundred, but you thought oh, I said the Kurds guys. are ISIS. I said they're killing ISIS. You have no what? understanding of please. Geopolitics. No understanding. Yeah, yeah. You're really mad, dude. Guys, really guys, mad. guys, Calm please stop. Are, is, stop. Are we ever going to have the me. last word here? Be right. Yeah, believe me. Squad W try, does not want to come out here. Yo, Asmin Gold, try please try go relax. ahead. The only thing I was trying to say, right, is that Hassan is saying that because of the Kurds, these uh, communist revolutionaries that you're talking about that are killing people are killing ISIS, I think that Hassan is saying because they're killing ISIS, they're still acting in uh you know a, a good way is that basically what you're saying son i said the ypg in an effort to build uh, a, a, an autonomous nation state for themselves is behaving in a way that is morally justifiable more so than a person who's literally going up and and walking into a mosque full of innocent people and murdering them and the fact that it's this difficult for these two people who were so confident in their perspective to come out with an example that's a little bit better than oh the people that are killing isis is the same as this guy who fucking went well, into it and shot a oh, mosque okay Should let, we let's understand find how another, stupid this point is well I, I i feel like finding examples in each side is like you know who's the biggest loser i mean everybody ends up losing out but the bigger conversation i think is that what type of conversations and what type of discussions that are happening now primarily online are potentially leading to more of these people committing these violent acts and that can happen on both sides yeah, well, so okay, I think, well, well more, I, so I yeah. think, hold on, okay, so this, I have to speak to this both sides thing. So I think the general problem is that right now we've seen a radicalization of, of white people, right, of these very right-leaning identitarian okay. type people happen around the world that's leading them to commit more terrorist attacks, right, more, um, at more, um, uh, not only terrorist attacks, but like uh, ethnically motivated terrorist attacks. Um, the problem is that to both sides that argument or to do what Nick did when he said so eloquently earlier that everybody can commit acts of violence, that type of statement is ultimately vacuous and it gets us nowhere, right? If you present a problem and say, hey, here's a specific problem of these people, they go, well, everyone has problems. I mean, you can say it in a nice way, but it doesn't really address any of our issues, right? So well, the, when, you, when, you, when you look at something like right-wing extremism is being platformed in a lot of places online and people are being led to commit, you know, acts of extremism inspired by right-wing groups and then Say well, the USSR also had extremist shit, or like the Kurds have communist parties in different countries. Like I don't know if these are like if it's relevant to the conversation. Well, I wasn't right? trying mm -hmm. to draw a similarity in terms of the output or anything like that. I was just trying to say that both of them occur, and yeah. the types of radicalization and the way that people are radicalized is both happening online and it's kind of happening in the same way. And so how- do Yeah, you but it attack? doesn't seem to be happening on the left. That And that, from what well, I'm familiar with, I haven't seen like people go out and actually- How about Steve Scalise? Well, how about well, re when regardless, Steve Scalise was shot regardless at that of that, regardless well, of what's happening on the left or the right, you still want to address it in basically the same way. And what direction do you, do you guys think that we should take in terms of preventing more of these situations from occurring? Do you think that 
there's any sort of responsibility on these. Yeah, I mean, I would argue that right wing rhetoric that right wing rhetoric that centers around how other races are inferior or ought to be removed or ostracized from a country or that treats these people as foreign invaders or as replacing white babies. I think these this is like a pretty obvious style of rhetoric that leads people down a path towards wanting to violently remove these people. Right. When you've got somebody telling you that foreign people in your land are destroying your culture and outbreeding you and interracial interracial relationships are immoral and wrong, then I think it, it's pretty obvious that it's going to lead some people towards, you know, enacting acts of violence against these groups of people. Okay. Uh, can, can I get a rebuttal here? Because yes, you may. Mind, yes. I, I think, Nick uh, yeah. or Sargon, please go ahead and uh, have a rebuttal. Right. So, as, so, real quick though, Nick, as soon as we finish this, let's tie this up and and make your points to why this is relevant to the um, original point, which is the manifesto. Uh, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, sure. So, the he says it's vacuous to say that everybody has violence and it gets us nowhere. Well, what the claim is, is that right wing rhetoric, right wing a political ideology is inherently violent. He says that this talk about so-called inferiority or exclusionary rhetoric, othering, as they call it, is inherently violent. And, and of course, this is obvious. We can look at a number of other political movements. We're talking about politics. Politics is serious business. Take a look at what's happening in Israel and Palestine. This is a good and relevant example. In Palestine, you have people that are legitimately protesting what's happening in Israel. You also have terrorists. That's no secret. You look at Hamas, you look at Hezbollah. I think there's a legitimate a reason for them to be. But there's also militancy going on. There's also terrorism that's happening. They're using those kinds of tactics. Now, would anybody say that to have BDS on your campus for anybody to talk about Palestinian rights online is inherently radicalizing the people that are in Palestine right now? Would anybody make that argument? Would anybody make the argument that the Young Turks, by virtue of them talking about communism and socialism is radicalizing the communist Kurds in Turkey to commit terrorism in Turkey. Or for example, and you keep saying there's no examples, you can't point to examples. How about the 2017 congressional baseball shooting when somebody who was writing on Facebook about how Trump is a traitor, Trump has to die, whatever, goes and tries and kills politicians. In Texas, this happened two years ago, there was an atheist who shot up a church and he was it was no secret, the kind of political motivation. So, of course, it's Wait, not can to you say, expand on oh, that? excuse me, excuse me. It's not to say that, oh, we can therefore do nothing. We're, we're totally immobilized. And this is a, a meaningless statement. The point is what you are trying to do is actually worse than the problem. You're taking this as a pretext to silence your political opponents. When violence happens all the time, people have all kinds of ideologies and all kinds of different times and places and everything else. And it's it's pretty obvious what's going on. People like Ann Coulter, Tucker Carlson, Pat Buchanan, people like that, they're not calling for people to shoot each other in the streets. We're calling for some kind of reconciliation. We've brought in 60 million immigrants in 1965. That's a very big number. Your Whether family you members included, thing, right? That's really funny. Whether you think that's a good thing or whether Wait, you think why is that funny? Are you not? Well, so are you not? Okay. A minority? Please, whether you finish, think that's yes. a good thing or whether you think that's a bad no, thing. No, I do think it's that a good is thing. a very important change that's taking place in the country. And people that are opposed to that, it seems like there's no position that you can have that isn't economic. Basically, the only opposition you can have to the country being transformed in one generation in that capacity is, well, the quality of life is diminishing economically. Not that people cherish their traditions, their customs, their texture of life that existed previously. And nobody's calling, by the way, when they talk about that for terrorism, mosque shootings, whatever. But you're saying that anybody who even addresses that problem is in the same category. It's disingenuous. It's dishonest. You're only exacerbating the problem. Okay. Um, thank you for the filibuster, Nick. The difference, okay, the main man. difference well, that we like mentioned. Passive aggressive. You're such the a- main, The main difference honestly. that we mentioned time and time again that you just conveniently hop over is that the idea of saying people should get universal health care is not actually going to push someone to go out and, and, and shoot Stephen Scalise, okay? However, Stephen Scalise's own personal perspective, for example, like uh, aligning himself uh, with the KKK and saying that he's the David Duke without the baggage, that sort of perspective has historically led to many violent things, and it continues to this day. That perspective is actually damaging and violent versus saying stuff like, we should get free po uh, college education and free health care. And you can't, if you can't distinguish between the two, I don't know what to tell you. Why are we okay. even having a conversation? Well, I, I think that what uh, you're saying, Hassan, I... at its core is actually very true. And the, the, the conversation isn't necessarily about, like, should people be able to talk about political issues? Is it where do you draw the line? 
and well, you so, draw can the I, line. Can I and, go ahead. Go ahead. This, this, this was that was unbelievable, son. Right? You're you're talking about seizing the means of production. You're not talking about healthcare. You're talking about seizing the means of production. And that alone has caused more deaths than anything else. But he's a reformist, a, not a revolutionary. He's not saying to do it violently. He's saying I don't care what, what he's does it mean saying. To seize? What I'm Can saying he peacefully is, seize something. Yes, because currently they're no. being currently your surplus value. The surplus value from your labor yeah, is being extracted. I don't, I don't care and about the your profits justification. Profits are actually son. being pocketed I, by people that you have no I, control over. I don't care is, about your justification because no, it's not, not a justification. I'm trying to describe the concept to you. This is like saying I democratic the socialism. Concept. This, I is like saying, this is like saying social democracies in Norway, right? This is like saying the, social democracies in Norway, or even yeah. your country, where the health, uh, like yeah. that, has Normal a healthcare program country, that you yeah. enjoy, is uh, was was brought about ultimately and is moving towards ultimately like a violent end. It's insane. I didn't say that. I didn't say that because they were not socialist. These are not socialist countries. Countries that are not, socialist, but they're no, social they're democracies with He's, higher levels so, of socialization and a, so, and a robust wait what and yeah, a robust, and, and a, a robust protections for private property. You want oh. the end of private property? That's going to have to be done with violence. There is no question of it. Well, Hassan, you're okay. not you, different well, to the Nazis in this regard. Different. You need to own it, Hassan. That's your <laughs> okay. moral. Theory. The difference is the extraction of private property was ultimately a violent care. one and i think I that we can evolve beyond it however however <laughs> and and countries have including norway where they have yeah. nationalized their extraction industries so obviously there are examples right there are examples okay. of nations that are closer to you than they are to fucking me where they've been able to do this through a democratic process by educating yeah. the populace and then but voting on these sorts of things so obviously you're goal. incorrect ending private property is not their goal it's the same as nationalization, building Ending public infrastructure and building public housing all, and getting to a point, which is my perspective, getting to a point where it is no longer necessary to have private property. One can still maintain <laughs> personal property. I'm sure it's a distinction that you're oh. unfamiliar with is, is well drastically different than saying, I want to make sure that everyone that doesn't look like me is 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 yeeted off the fucking border wall. That's, and I don't your, give a fuck. that's your bigotry. That's just your bigotry versus theirs. Wait a second. Wait. Do you not know the distinction between private and personal property? So I'm well aware, thank you, Destiny, but that's not okay. the question. All right, just making sure. Okay. I, also, okay. I like to that's point that in all idea. of this. I like uh, that we just skipped over the idea. My, my, your bigotry I, is against the rich, Hassan, and you want to see them suffer. His I, bigotry oh, might well be against... Has any, person, has any person ever become rich in isolation? Or has... Who cares? Who cares? You have a bigotry. But it's justified, but my bigotry is justified, Sargon. I have a really good rationale. It's not bigotry. It, 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 it is bigotry. Tell me it's how a wealthy bigotry. person has. Tell me, give me one example of a billionaire who has become a billionaire without exploiting labor. But I'm no justifying it. But I'm justifying the violence and the bigotry. You, you assume that the rich people have no moral standards at all. I gave you an that, example that of nonviolent ways. I gave you an example of nonviolent nationalization that has happened yeah, yeah. in multiple in places, country, including in the country that you live in. I gave you examples of why this is not bigotry. But if you're too stupid <laughs> to think that Nazis and socialists are the same, then I don't know what to tell you. The methods oh, are God. the same. You can't reach your goal without becoming a fascist. Oh, That's Jesus. why every socialist regime ends up looking a lot like a Dude, well, it wasn't. A lot of socialist regimes socialism. have nothing to do with socialism, and a fascism and socialism are like two diametrically opposed ideas. Not really. One is a if one is built upon the principle of inclusion. One is built upon the principle of exclusion. Okay. One is inherently yours violent. is also built upon the principle of excluding rich people. You fucking halfwit. Explain to me how a wealthy person becomes wealthy without. Explain to me how a wealthy matter. person becomes wealthy. It doesn't matter how they become this. That's still the fundamental the crux you of your matter. ideology. The point is that they become wealthy off of people not like yourself because you know you are a YouTube creator, but they become. Really? wealthy off of exploiting the labor of How overseas or even people in your country. Wealthy? Who did Mark Zuckerberg exploit? L virtually every single employee that he's ever Bullshit. hired. Bullshit. Bullshit. Profit is theft, Sargon. Google That's the difference. <laughs> and this is an economic difference. Of <laughs> I, I think that's really good. Like, like, what you fail to understand is oh, looking oh, at yeah. our current, yeah. looking at you our remuneration processes yeah. right now, and, and saying that we should have a different perspective on it is not the same as looking at different ethnic backgrounds and saying, well, their skull uh, measurements are off, so they need to go. It's a different bigotry, Hassan. I agree. <laughs>
Uh, no, it's not a different. Oh, no, it's like arguing it's with like a middle schooler who just read Marx. No, uh, you just can't seem to accept that you actually do have bigotries, prejudices. You oh, have, wait, like, wait, hold on. Do we all like? Does anybody here think we all and, realize that some violence can be have prejudices right? too, and theirs are ideological. You just well, take exception to theirs. Wait, I hold on. This is before. this is the most big brain point I've ever heard in my life. Okay, first of all, everyone in here knows that like some violence can be justified, right? We all agree with this, right? No, one's yeah, no Destiny, what are you talking about, big guy? Well, you, Nick, you are liter you are literally laughing, saying, here you are justifying violence. Yeah, of course. People justify violence all the fucking okay. time. Okay, yeah, sure. But, but you're talking about, you're talking about the same kind of violence that we're talking about with New Zealand. You're talking about political violence. First, You're okay, this is a deeper, no, 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 we're talking, these are much different types of conversations, right? If you want to no, have a right. conversation about right. whether or not the government should, I mean, they are, Nick, you're not this dumb. I, as much as I hate to admit it, I know that you You're understand such this. A, I love these tactics. I love yeah. these. It's not a tactic, tactics. but I know that you it understand really there's is. a distinction here. Trying to you kill people of a certain racial group. Wrong, so you do this. I know you're really not that dumb or blah, blah, blah. I know, Nick. Nick. The justifications that somebody would use, okay, to attack uh, a, a group of people based on their race is going to be a lot different than the justification somebody would use to enact violence on groups of people for economic reasons or for reasons they that they perceive being oppressed. The same, it's to the same violence. Everybody has justification. We have justifications to target groups right now, of course. The, Sargon, do you yeah, think we, we have do. justification? Do you think we should kill terrorists? Yes. You, yeah. Wow, you're justifying violence. Like, yeah, no yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, of course. Are you a bigot then? Yes, against terrorists. No, that's not what. I, I honestly I, have I an open bigotry against people who enact violence. I, I don't yeah. know. I think there's a big difference between being a bigot against somebody because of like what they believe or what they're voluntarily doing versus who they are. Like, okay, but birth. a rich person is that thing. Yeah, well, but the, the, point point is, the, deeper, the deeper the part of this, this. The, no, well, no, the point, Carlson, no, 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 I don't want to close. Here we go, here we go. The, 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 argue, the philosophical guy. argument, and I don't want to fucking defend this because I'm not a goddamn communist, okay? But the philosophical <laughs> argument would be <laughs> that capitalists exist in a state of perpetual violence, okay? And that the reason why people think that you need to upend that part of society is because they are perpetually enacting violence on a group of people. So, of course, you have a right to to return that with violence in kind. Much the same way that if somebody was walking into your house, oh, my God. What if we could say then that Muslim immigrants are mm -hmm. perpetually enacting violence against the native population. Sure, and, and that's an argument. And and committing yeah, political you could, we can have that argument. That's thing. fine. That's an argument that you that's can have. Good. If you want to have that argument, that's fine. So a communist would argue that a rich capitalist is perpetually enacting violence against society by extracting plus labor value from that society, sure. And, and an alt writer would argue that every single immigrant that's a Muslim would also be enacting violence on that culture just by purpose of existing there, or by virtue of existing there. If you want to take on that argument, we can do it. I for, I have a, I've got a small inkling that a person arguing in favor of communism, even though I disagree with them, is going to have better arguments for their economic system and justifying violence against capitalists than somebody that says they want to kill people that are brown. That's just a guess. Yeah, everybody be should wrong. be censored then. Everybody should be censored because there is an argument to be made because every argument can intrinsically lead to violence in some form that is illegitimate or against the state, then nobody should be able to voice any controversial well, opinions at all. Except that's not true because I just said there are, forms, there are forms of violence. That's all that is acceptable. No, except no. there are forms of violence we agree are okay, are ethical, right? There are I forms of violence that societies we believe are ethically yeah, justified. That's why we nuked Japan yes, in yes, World War II. Against criminals, against criminals or terrorists or enemies of- Not the, against criminals, against enemies of the state, against people that- different. What you're no, talking they, about they, is they, entirely different. You're saying that anybody who, who talks about, for example, demographic change is somebody who they're hateful rhetoric can lead to hateful actions well by the same principle all things equal somebody talking about how the capitalist class is perpetually violence against people and stealing the product of their labor somebody who takes it through to their logical conclusion will say well clearly the government isn't going to seize the means of production i'm going to go and do it myself and so that's if you're advocating course, for if you're, advocating, yeah, if you're advocating for revolutionary reform of the united states then sure i don't necessarily disagree well, with we're that. not advocating but for I don't. revolutionary removal of people when you make videos if, if you're somebody like lawrence no if you're making videos talking about how what western society is being destroyed that the white man is going extinct that we are being outbred and forced to, to take on this multicultural cut culture by jews that are trying to outbreed and destroy white people how can you not think that that it's going to lead to some people. Well, fuck. Maybe we should fucking kill yeah, these yeah, brown people. Yeah, like people talking about how our elected representatives are in bed with the KK and the and they're hurting black people and they're stealing the product of their labor. How could you not believe that the only conclusion is to take up arms? The difference is maybe no, that sure left wing so. people are just pussies who don't follow through to their logical conclusions. You know, Hassan wants to talk about people stealing the product of their labor. I'm this tough communist. I love communism and everything. 
but he doesn't actually want to do anything about it. He doesn't actually even believe yeah, that. That's cool. Wait, no, if that's actually all that. that's, that's your argument, then you just made then you just made the argument for us. If if that's gonna be your argument, if that's listen, if that's gonna be your argument, then you've just made the argument for it. Left wing people are pussy, so I don't really care about hateful rhetoric on the left. If right wing people are gonna go and actually fucking kill people, then that's the rhetoric I want to stop. Thank you for agreeing with me, Nick. Thank you for making your argument for us, Nicholas Fuentes. You're missing there. Is that you think people are actually not just pussy? There are plenty of left wingers who have done lots of violence, especially in the past when left wing ideas were less dominant. Oh, okay. Which yeah, you know what came out. You know what came about as a consequence I, of left wing violence. For I, I don't example? care. The I don't care. Weekend, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> I, 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 this I is care. the difference. You when right wing violence gets to a fascist perspective, you have the Holocaust. When left wing violence, especially like it did happen you in America, you have a whole lot of yeah, I know. You build trade unions and you have the weekend. Tell yeah, me which one is a better, more desirable outcome. Genocides than the fascists ever accomplished this on. Please explain to me which one is a more desirable outcome that you enjoy every no single day. No genocide is more desirable. Let's do something that doesn't result in a genocide. Let's well, what if you genocide terrorists, though, Sargon, by using your definition? Yeah, you wow, well, I don't think, think terrorists are an ethnic group. So. Well, I mean, you said you could be bigoted against terrorists, right? Can, so can't you genocide them as well? They're not an ethnic group. Okay. So, gotcha. But anyway. Well, not really, because like, genocide, I mean, genocide see. doesn't even have to be against oh, an ethnic okay. group. It could be a national oh, race, uh, <laughs> racist, <laughs> fucking religious. Okay. Wait, I don't understand. Okay, but real let, quick. Let's, let's bring this back to the original point of the shoot. Thank right? you. Because we you. actually yeah. know what radicalized him. Being a part of any political group wasn't the thing that radicalized him. I mean, we've got loads of people who are part of political groups that aren't going out and doing shooting. That's not so For this, I specific going to France and actually seeing mass immigration to France and that combined with a terrorist attack of Eba Akalan, which I'd never even heard of, but this was a Swedish girl who was run down. And it was this that he was sat in front of the graves of the, um, the World War II dead and looking at the crosses stretching off into the distance. And for some reason, he got it into his head that, okay, he has to go and kill a bunch of Muslims to make a statement to stop them. And really, if you want to know the people who actually inspired him, he lists them. I mean, he calls, what was it, Anders Breivik Night, just or something like that. That's his real influence, like these actual radicals who have done something. In the same way that I'm sure the communist terrorists in India and whatever will cite some communist revolutionary like Lenin or something as their particular inspiration. People who actually went and did these terrible things. This is this is the real reason. You're sure, Anything but not really. Hmm? Again, some... the part the problem is the problem is you're sure, but not really. When you look at Anders Breivik, which is a great example, what is he doing? He's going out and killing a bunch of fucking Marxist teenagers because he thinks that killing Marxists is an honorable goal because there yeah. are people like yourself on the internet who try to make the fucking same argument that like Nazis and communists are all inherently proof, dangerous. Proof and if he sides with the any, Nazis in that one, we go back to we go back to World War II. It again, Hassan, it's just history that proves this. Like Where nothing. Your, I, what, you've been Googling for the past 15 minutes. You still haven't been able to bring up fucking stats. I'm disappointed. I've actually put it in the chat. You do you this for a right? living, brother. And you I've have a put it in the British chat, accent. Hassan. You can look. It's right there. It's right there. You're just not looking. And because, I don't know, this kind of pricks your... One, pricks your okay. Again, I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand the difference between a cell, a group of people who are fight. Which, by the way, I don't even advocate. You don't even know who's you, doing A group of people it. fighting against the government doing it. versus a group of people fighting against the government versus oh, the a government literally butchering and genociding people. There's a difference between the two, right? Uh, presumably, yeah. Okay. So if you understand that, then why do you keep bringing up examples like Rojava? Or why do you keep bringing up examples of like people fucking going against like a militant, uh, uh, like Chinese state even, or an Indian state or anything what? like that? That is, that is literally fucking wiping them out. They're not like, literally when, wiping when them out. We call what happened in uh, Myanmar genocide because it's mm. the state systematically eradicating the Muslim population. We mm. should call what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan also genocide, but we don't. <laughs> Because that sort That's of violence, in your world. eyes and in the eyes of the Western world, is justifiable. Genocidal. No, what? it's not. I don't. No, I don't agree. I'm not a supporter or anything. But it's not genocidal. Okay. Dude, yeah. Whatever. Do you understand argument. the difference that the Iraq War was a systematic attempt to eliminate? <laughs> yeah. Iraq? How do you feel like here? Yeah. How do you feel? I don't like agree with it, but that's just preposterous. Well, well let, let's go ahead. Let's <laughs> okay. get into this. Actually, just for a minute. Real, widespread, widespread killing, real quick. widespread killing of a group of people in one country. Okay is not oh. justifiable, and yet you consider it to be justifiable. That's what I'm saying. What? I don't consider the Iraq War justifiable. Yeah, okay, we're not in favor do. of that. 
I don't okay, think it's but you don't you don't see it as a subcategory of terrorism, which you happen to have a different perspective on. That's no, my terrorism point. can only be done by non-state actors. Oh my god! Definition. All right, never mind. Let's just move past <laughs> this just point. Doesn't we're... even know the definition. By we're definition, not, terrorism cannot be by the state. Okay, my point. You guys are not understanding my point. No, you're not understanding the whole conversation. There is a... man. Okay, there are different forms of violence, okay? Structural yes. violence, such as people dying in poverty or people dying oh, yeah. because they don't have access to shelter or food. Then there's systemic violence perpetrated on marginalized communities, oh, or right. there's the kinds Again, of violence that the state brings, uh, whether it be foreign intervention that's military-based, uh, or domestically, uh, the, 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 uh, military, the militarized police force killing minorities and whatnot in an unjustifiable manner. But the uh, difference is, you look Iraq at that sort of, people. you look, or poor people, it doesn't matter. You look at that, you look at that oh, form of good. violence, and you have no issue with it because you find that to be the norm. Because you were still benef we, we you were a beneficiary of the status quo. So the we, people we that are fighting issue. against that, the people that are fighting against that, in some instances, are actually awful people and, so and they're fucking maniacal and genocidal and whatnot again? and fuck those people but then there are reasonable like destiny was mentioning there are reasonable uh, uh revolutionaries who are who are still enacting some sort of goal that you now even take for granted such as having a weekend or uh, or a number of different things that leftist revolutionaries have brought I about i don't have weekends Hassan. but anyway the, oh the my point god being, you know what i mean the five-day work week sargon yeah, sure. I, I, I look. I'm ending saying, child labor. I, like, look, Hassan, I'm not saying that the left has done nothing good. Right? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that communism is inherently violent and genocidal against a certain demographic of people in society. In the same way that Nazism is, there's a reason that these look like kissing cousins. There's a reason that in Germany in the 30s, so many communists became Nazi. It's very. There's a reason why every fascist leader was wait, a socialist. Wait, why do you hold on? Wait, wait. Why do you think okay. socialists became Nazi in the in Germany? The, I imagine there are lots of reasons. Well, the the main reason was because that's how that political party positioned itself, right? Like the reason why they rebranded to National Socialists was to win support from those groups. They're, like the word oh, so privatization not... was the word privatization was literally invented to describe what Nazi Germany did to industries. Yeah, but th like, this is also a really sort of shallow understanding. No, this is this no, is no, actually, actually what happened. This, I, yeah, this, no, no, no. I, yeah, I'll explain to you why you have a shallow understanding. Pause for a second, Destiny. Right, the point that the Nazis had was to, in Hitler's words, and I quote: "We socialize people because property is that's for the losers. That's a, that's like Nazism is like socialism on steroids." You, you realize that the first concentration camps that Nazis started were actually for socialists. Like, th yeah, probably, don't do this, him. Probably. Why wouldn't sector. they be? Why wouldn't they be? I'm not well, because saying you're telling me that they were the. Are... They are not, Nazism had Nazism had nothing to do with socialism or communism. Well, it's not socialism not, or communism on steroids. Demonstrable falsehood, I can imagine. It's literally in the it opposite all of the business business owners started with, with the Nazis. Nazis. Real quick, yeah. real quick, I need to pause you guys for some reason. Uh -oh. I don't know why. Every it's only it's only when Sargon speaks, Discord just like it loses connection and it mutes. Like so, like let's fix this. Let's try leaving and rejoining. Give me one second. Let me hide this camera. It, it I think only... if Sargon, no, I, I think if Sargon just moves a little bit closer to the mic, no, no, it's, it's, it no, just isn't... no, 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 it, it's not, not close enough. No, no, it's not a mic issue. Trust me. I, I hear it. There's a disconnection in Discord. It's it's, it's not a mic issue. Trust me. There's there's okay. an actual freeze of the stream. Okay. Okay. So hmm. I, I'm I'm gonna read. I'm gonna recall and uh, Sargon, if you just leave the group, I'm gonna re-add you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the shit going between Palestine and Israel is caused by radicalized online people, and not the fact that Israel's Hello. killed like nine. Give me one second here, guys. I'm resetting Discord. Hey. Um, okay, I'm we're back. back. Fab. We switched the sides. It's a reverse, but okay, here we go. We're ready. I reset the server. I did everything I could. There, there was some weird disconnection, and I, I moved the server to the east just to see. Um, um, all right, here we go. Let's continue. Sorry about that, guys. Um, Terabuck, if you're watching, please change the nameplates around. 
All right, continue. I'm so, so rather, sorry. Than, rather than getting into a long discussion about Nazism and communism. Um, I mean, yeah, because uh, you would lose because history. No, I've already won. Oh my God, why? Why? why do you have to be so juvenile? Can we not I've just proceed to because a more he, relevant because You're talking issue. to 27,000 people and you have not, you don't even have the basic understanding of what happened in Nazi history. Like, are you, you familiar don't. with- We're trying to refocus life, the I mean, conversation here and you're okay, like, okay, okay, there are Hassan, so many- Have you read, have you read Mein Kampf? <laughs> no, I have not. But you then have, but you still- How the fuck do you know the Nazis thought? How do you know? Wait, what? Wait, like, what? How, so how wait, 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 because I haven't know? read Mein Kampf, you think you have yeah, a better well, understanding? Wait, wait, wait. Have, have you read the Quran? Quran? Wait, wait, wait. Have you read the Quran? Guys, one at a wait, time, Wait, have you read please. the Quran? Yes, I have read the Quran. From cover to cover? Oh, that's impressive. Yes, okay. I have. Yeah, which, of the, which, of the, which of the Hadiths? Well, wait, which of the, get off which my had, shelf. Uh, which of the Hadiths have you studied? I'm curious. Because I know you criticize Muslims a lot as well. these things. Because you don't know what the Nazis thought. Like, I'm not kidding. You guys... Don't seem to understand. Wait, the, the sort of, wait. The, do you the, think the, that? Do you think that just because I haven't read Mein Kampf, I haven't done enough? Like, I, I don't have. The, I, I would uh, think uh, that understanding, understanding of, of Nazism. Of what was, happened in Nazi history? Like in Nazi Germany, the Weimar Republic. Do you know what the Night of the? Why the, the okay, Nazis explain did to me what, what the, they without did. Without googling right now, can you please walk me through the steps of what happened when the when the when the socialists were purged? What? Oh fuck! I gave it away already. Um, what, oh, God, God damn it! I fucking gave it. disaster for you, man. Okay, have okay, you read okay, Das okay, Capital okay. as well? Have you? Are can, you actually you the most? Well I, I, I read about guys one at a time. Please let Sar so, let Sargon speak, and then Destiny can you or Hassan can read the Night of the Long Knives. Please. No, why would I? Why would I? I'm talking well, about the philosophy behind Nazism. I am, so I just want you to inform me because maybe I'm missing something important. Yeah, you are definitely missing something important, right? I'm talking about the philosophy of Nazism. What happened then? At that night. No, I don't think you understand what I'm saying, Hassan. I don't right? think you know. Uh, you're right. I'd have to Wikipedia it. To see exactly. But you just said you fucking. Oh my no, no, God. Hassan, you, oh you're not God. following what I'm saying, Hassan. Right? I would have to look up the series of events that happened because that's an event, right? But I'm talking about the the why. Why did that happen? And you so don't. Glad you read Mike Goff, though, dog. Please let yeah. Sargon finish. I read the Go Communist ahead. Manifesto. I read about two thirds of. Nick, what are you doing? Capital. I think you know more than fucking Sargon does, probably for the worst reasons. But Sargon, please go ahead and finish. Uh, well, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say here because Hassan seems to be muddying the waters. Well, but, it's just. Um, but going, can going we, back to. We the... try and stay on like one strain of the debate. Yeah. It keeps doing. Okay, okay. I know more about Nazi Germany than you do. <laughs> I have read my cough, but do you even know? It's like, can we just focus on now? It's about you know communism versus Nazism. I want to return back to but the. That is a really good question. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay right. So is... the, the the point, right? I think that there's a rise in right wing terrorism because the the radical right is being suppressed, and I think it's being suppressed by the radical left. And I think they know that they're doing this. I mean, this is something that's obvious. This is something that they're constantly harping on about. That blah blah blah. And I think that Nick's point was right. I think that when people aren't they believe they don't have any way of democratically redressing their concerns, like addressing them and, and actually having them like at least acknowledged then. And when they get persecuted from, yeah, I think that radicalizes them. And so I agree. I think we are going to see a, a big spike in right-wing terrorism. And I think the only way to stop that is, is either, I mean, God knows what kind of tyrannical methods the communists would indulge in, or we can take the liberal route and just ask them what their problem is. I'm yeah, curious. Okay, can you okay. can you what would be a sample conversation be? So let's say the New Zealand shooter is is coming up to you and he's he's got his his gun in the trunk or his multiple guns in the trunk and he's ready to go. Well, I think and... at that point it's too late. <laughs> okay, so I think he's I think he's done at that point, you know. Do you think you promote rhetoric that's like inclusive towards um towards like people of other cultures or other colors inside your country or do you think you're more exclusionary? That seems like a weird question to ask. Do we promote rhetoric that is inclusive of other cultures in my country? Yeah, like, so for instance, like, would you say something like, I'm uncomfortable with so many people from different cultures immigrating here, I don't think they belong in my country. Would you be the kind of person to say that, or? No, I wouldn't be the kind of person to say that. Okay. But someone who would say that would definitely be punished in many various different ways. Well, but basically what I'm trying to get at is what, what is your prescription? So so a, a person on the left oftentimes would say um, we shouldn't, I'm, and I'm using left in like the progressive sense here, a person on the left would say we shouldn't platform radicalizing speech that could cause other people to go down this tunnel of, of becoming hateful of other cultures that will lead mm. some of them into killing people. So I'm curious, what is your prescription to stop that from happening? I think that's Wait, you think what part of that is false? I'll let you know if you just stop interrupting me, Destiny. Okay. Um, I think that Nick's right. I, I think these people existing and having a voice isn't what inherently radicalizes people. I think it's when they feel they can't do anything 
And when they're getting suppressed and frankly oppressed is when they start radicalizing. I actually think that having Nick on this is a really good start. This kind of, let, let's just hear what they have to say. And we don't have to agree with them, right? But the, what we shouldn't do is pathologize them and like anathematize them. I think that that's what really makes people radical. And I'm not saying this as someone who agrees with their perspective. I don't. But there might be some things that they're saying that are true, and maybe we should actually listen and like pay attention to the true thing and adopt it as part of ourselves, as part of what we believe, because it's a true thing. Okay, because can you tell you me what's true? Deny that, okay, okay, well, the birth rates are true, you, right? Can you, you, do you, you deny that? You deal with Nazis a lot. You talk to them. Like I'm not I saying you're in favor of them. But... Well, wait. How do how do birth rates get us? How, how do birth rates get? How do birth rates get us to people need to be excluded from our country? Like when people talk about birth I'm rates, not, they're not. No, no. Listen, I'm I'm not saying people need to be excluded from anything, right? No, no. I'm you might not be. Yeah. That's their concern, right? It was the okay. first three lines of his manifesto. It's the birth rates. It's the birth rates. It's the birth rates. Right. Okay. I think there might be a group of people who are concerned about the birth rates. Is there a legitimate conversation to be had there? And yeah, there actually is. Yeah, they're genuinely it's like the Danish government, a well-known Nazi government, have actually tried to take steps to rectify this. There is something there. So, so I, what, I think what, that I think the argument that Sargon is basically trying to make is that the people on the right that are extreme are marginalized so much that they commit acts of violence because they're yes. marginalized. And if they were allowed to promote, not necessarily promote, but at least express themselves, they would be less likely to commit these acts of violence because they had a place to express themselves. Is that basically what you're saying? I agree. That, that okay. is exactly what I think. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, but that's actually doesn't... true. There was a guy, there's a guy called Christopher or Christian Piccolini or something, and his whole shtick is that he's the former neo Nazi. He was a big neo Nazi in Chicago, and now he's this left wing activist. And uh, he's, he's gone after me. He's gone after a lot of people like that. And um, what he says, and it's interesting because his prescription is always just become left wing. I'm going to give you an exit. You just got to become left wing. You just got to bend the knee and so you know, Nazis we'll get you can out of here. Convert. Right. And, and but what's interesting is he says, how does a person get radicalized? He asked that question. He says, well, people get people get isolated. That's the main thing driving it is people get isolated. People are disillusioned. They lack direction. And that's when people prey upon them and use them and, and whatever else. And so people are saying, well, the solution to people getting radicalized by hearing so-called extremist rhetoric is to further isolate them, is to make it so that they have no sanctuary anywhere. It's to make it so that they're the most persecuted people, can't talk, their family can't associate with them, friends can't associate with them, they can't be employed, they can't have a Twitter account, they can't be on Facebook. What do you think happens to a person like that? Now, on my show, for example, we talk about let's affect change within the system. Let's find strategies where if you have a problem with immigration, you could get involved in the party, you could vote your way out of this, whatever, but there's a path forward for you if you have these particular inclinations or these particular views. But what happens is, is, and this is something we've been talking about all the time, and it's not even to justify it, understand, it's not even to rationalize it. It's to say that in any society, you have people who are problematic. You have people who, whatever reason, whether it's you know, poor childhood or they're mentally ill or whatever, you have people who they get possessed by an ideology, they get possessed by some sort of a, an obsession, and they become problematic. Instead of taking these people and forcing them out on the side into the darkness where we can't see them, where they may get bad ideas, where they perhaps buy firearms or whatever, instead, if there was somebody who was out there saying, yes, fertility rates are declining, um, you know, if you look at this group of people around the world, they're on the decline, and society is changing radically in a very short amount of time, and, and there's a concern to be had there. There's a legitimate concern about that. What is a settlement? What is a compromise we can come to where everybody can live together? What's a compromise where, you know, we can sort of negotiate this change in the coming couple of decades? I think if that were present, you wouldn't see so much radicalism. But what happens is, and I'll tell you, a lot of people go off the deep end, even farther, farther than anybody that I know, they'll say that, well, it was, I was shut down and that sort of vindicated everything I thought. I started saying these things. I was shut down. I was censored. Something happened to me, whatever. And that's even with my views, I was about to be hired by Ben Shapiro unironically at the daily wire before I started asking, well, what's the deal with foreign aid to Israel? What's the deal with some of these things that are going on, which are obviously objectionable. And instead of people debating me, instead of people saying, well, here's the reason and, you know, here's maybe what we're doing about it. Here's a middle ground. They said, uh, if you talk about that again, 
like you'll never work again. If you keep talking about that, we're going to disassociate. We're going to call your boss every okay. day. And they did for weeks and say you're a racist and try and get you fired. Okay. And I said, oh, OK, so clearly there's something to what I'm saying here. There's something to some of these questions. Well, I don't, I don't so, know about that. I, I do feel like it's kind of like a false assumption to assume that whenever people tell you to stop talking about something or they stop you from talking about something, you automatically assume that that's because what you're actually saying is true. I, I don't know if that's always accurate, but basically what Nick and Sargon are saying is that these extremist opinions are bred in isolation. So Destiny and Hassan, the question I have for you guys is, do you feel like it would be helpful to the society to bring these extreme opinions of the right into the fold and actually have conversations about them rather than ostracizing these people from the community entirely? In a, in a, in a very careful manner where, where you can catch bad faith actors, so like Fuentes is somebody that I would consider a bad faith actor. If you have a ca very careful areas where you can catch people out on them lying, yeah, I would say that there's value in it. But when I want to go back and focus on is more of this idea that people get isolated, right? When you talk about isolationism, or you talk about, or not isolation, when you talk about people getting isolated from society, you're not saying like you're isolated because you're not allowed to go out and talk about the birth rates and how horrible Jews are. That's not the type of isolationism that's happening, right? When people are isolated, we, we mean more things like people don't have very many friends in society, or people are spending too much time on social media, people aren't connecting with their family as much, people aren't you know, doing whatever things in society we do to kind of like keep us connected. It's possible to bring somebody into society and have them feel like their life has meaning and purpose and they have shit to do that doesn't involve platforming them saying, you know, race realism truths about fucking, what did Charles Murray say in the bell curve or some shit? Um, I think it's a really dangerous and, and bad dichotomy to imply that we either have to hate and, and destroy and get rid of everyone in society that disagrees with us or we have to bring literal white nationalist Nazis like Richard Spencer to the forefront and have real conversations about whether or not Jews control society. Um, I don't think it has to be one or the other here. Yeah, I think but you, you just talk about bad faith. Hang on a second. Hang on. So the, the thing is, you're taking the most extreme. What Nick said was actually really reasonable, right? I think that if Nick walked up to a regular person on the street, who'd not involved in politics, and said what he had said previous to you, Destiny, I think they'd say, well, yeah, of course that's a concern, which is presumably why the Danish government were doing something about it. Okay, but you, you've you've done, keep going you, back the no, no, hang on. Yeah, that's just an oh. easy example, right? Because it's, it's a liberal society where this is a problem that they've noticed and they so, took steps to address it, right? But you set it up as, right, we need to exterminate X people or whatever. That's not what, like, we would want to talk about. Like, anyone, like, any anyone who wants to have a dialogue, obviously we would take good faith, sensible, level-headed actors who would say a lot like what Nick has just said there. Like, this is, this is the radical sort of, like, if you want to characterize them as the the sort of extreme right, okay, let's characterize them as extreme right, right? That that's what their concern is, and really, it, I think it, it comes down to the sort of like the three driving motivations of Enlightenment philosophy, right? Liberalism is for liberty, socialism is for equality, and fascism is for security, right? That they're, they're the three. If you're going to give them charitable motivations that pe that drew people to them, that's what the, that's what you would accurately, I think, all three groups would agree with those with those assessments right you, the the security one is being completely shut out of the dialogue and it's not fair to those people who happen to be afraid right i mean there was a study that said like 30 percent of people in society they reckon are just primed to go fascist they're not they're, they're perfectly normal happy liberal people until a certain set of conditions are met and then boom you know fascists and I don't want to see 30% of the population radicalized into fascism, but I think if we keep going further and further to the left, then that's what's going to happen. And I'm really scared of that, man. I am really scared of that. So and so you, I think that the way saying. to stop that is to moderate and to sort of bring that, these people to the center. Well, I don't know about you bringing them to the think center. That someone is going to be able to push you into thinking, because you admitted, Sargon, that you yourself are not a racist person, right? You're a liberal. Yeah. Do you think that any at any point, is the left going to get too crazy so much so that you're going to start thinking, well, maybe blacks and whites can't live together? No, but I'm not. Then don't the you opinion. think that it's kind of impossible? Like, Listen, I'm just, look, well, no, I, no, I, no, I, I don't reason why I'm asking you this question is because, no, this notion that people, uh, like, racism is social conditioning, okay? Um, I, I know that Nick will probably try to argue from a more, like, naturalistic perspective and, and, and claim that, you know, this is a, a, a normal thing. Um, but it's not. It's social conditioning. And I, I think I, you I, understand I, that as a liberal. And the point I'm trying to make is that the point I'm trying to make is that, look, destiny debates fucking right wingers all the time. I'm sure. fully on board with talking to even Nazis. 
-hmm. as long as the other side is well equipped to deal with the misinformation as long as the other side is well equipped with a with an understanding of not only history but the kind of historical revisionism that nazis or fascists engage in okay well, communists and what well, yeah well, no well, you're then, right you are well, no, you well are then you guys do correct. kind there of are definitely you're... certain factions that that will probably engage in historical revisionism as well but that doesn't i mean i'm not one of those people well, so you're i don't know why you think this is a gotcha moment but you're practicing what sargon is saying then is to bring i know but the difference is extreme. but the difference is okay what is the platforms difference? don't know how to deal with this because the 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 profit motive feeds into it because the the profit motive feeds into the fact that like <laughs> conspiracy theory channels are 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 being heightened because more people are uh, more people are watching it and this misinformation is the only access that most average uh, citizens have and then on top of that nick is not correct when he says isolation but alienation occurs where you feel alienated from your labor where you feel alienated this, from this your is just marxist rhetoric man. <laughs> it's on. really this is, this is pure marxism it's well, so I'll weird give you that an you're example. trying to, I, I so give you guys you're to shut down my speech when i'm trying to have a normal conversation I, I where i admitted I that think, I, I somewhat agree with your perspective yeah, I don't by think trying to claim that it's marxist rhetoric how is it any different than people saying anything marxist rhetoric that's not an accurate that's not an accurate way of fucking dealing with what i'm trying to say try to please for a brief moment, Sorry. give that same level of charity that I've just offered to you, I, yeah, I apologize, and and, I apologize. and take in what I'm trying to say. Okay. <coughs> well, Hassan, the is point I was trying to make ahead, before I got derailed is that these people feel alienation. It's not isolation. Okay. If they felt isolation, they wouldn't. This wouldn't happen in fucking Norway, like a majority white country. You know what I mean? Or it wouldn't happen in uh, places like New Zealand, like. The, these people don't feel isolated and they're a minority, and that's why they're going and killing uh, people. They feel alienated. They feel like they have no purpose. And then they go back to these like weird mythological underpinnings of of like Nordic mythology and 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 uh, haplo groups and the and the replacement that is occurring somehow. And never really look at it as these are our fellow men and women who are coming from different parts of the world who are just going to readjust into our way of life. And ultimately make it better. Okay, can I? Can I respond if, to if that, people please? like America. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Right. Um, the 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 thing, the problem that I have with your theory, and the reason that, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to hand wave as Marxist, but I I think that this is your prism, your ideological lens that you're viewing it through, because I mean you can't really account for someone like Elliot Roger with that sort of rationale, because he was a rich kid. He didn't do any labor. He didn't feel isolated from his labor, alienated from his no, labor. I, I didn't just say alienation from labor. I said alienation from their fellow men and women. Okay, sure, right? But that wasn't because of economic factors, right? That For him, that was social factors. For um, I, can't, I can't actually remember the Christchurch shooter guy's name, but for him, again, that, that wasn't economic. He clearly had money. He traveled a lot, you know? Um, you can he be did. alienated from your labor and make a lot of money. I don't think you understand that. Yeah, but he that wasn't his concern. That wasn't his That's concern. Not, he, these people aren't doing violence. Alienation doesn't mean you're doing violence because you uh, aren't making enough money. I know. <laughs> okay. I, I know. It's it's because you don't feel invested in the work that you do. I'm, right? okay. I'm kind of curious on this point, Sargon. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, um, so it, they have other reasons, and they tell us these other reasons. And for some people... These reasons are racial. That's just the way they feel. For Elliot Rogers, it was sexual. You know, for they, each one of these has their own particular motivations. Some people, sure, and it's not to say that it's never that people feel alienated from their, their labor and their work, that they're just doing the same monotonous, droning, you know, work all day, every day, and they feel frustrated and, you know, bored or whatever. It, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but we have plenty of cases where that's not the case. So I think that in some cases, sure, it will be appropriate to apply a Marxist analysis in that regard, but in others, it's it's not a panacea. It doesn't answer all the questions. Are you? Do you speak up as much when people try to alienate Muslims in society? Because this is how ISIS does a lot of its, or did a lot of its targeting for recruitment as well. Yeah, it's a real problem. So, do you well, agree that, that it's maybe bad that we demonize Islamic culture or demonize Muslims so much, or you know, yeah, obsess over things like? I, I don't think we should demonize anyone. So you don't think that maybe you've engaged in a little bit of that alienation? No. You don't know. No, you don't. You're not hypercritical of Muslims no, or hypercritical of Islam. Is the sounds Wait, what did you say? Why alienation? No. Oh, okay. Wait. Well, let's Nick. What were you gonna say? I yeah. can see you're um, trying to say something. Well, the Muslim thing is just kind of uh, 
you talk about bad faith actors. It's funny because I think, you know, we were trying to make a good point, trying to find some common ground. It's like, what about this other thing? I mean, you're not totally consistent on that. So Wait, that, what am I not inconsistent? What am I inconsistent on? Can you tell me what I'm inconsistent on? Tell me what I'm inconsistent on. Can you please tell me what I'm inconsistent on, Nick? Nick, I swear to you've talked to me and again twice as much in this debate as I have you. Tell me where I'm inconsistent. The point that I'm trying to make here is you talk about both you and uh, both Destiny and Hassan talk about, um, you know, well, maybe maybe we could platform people who are reasonable. Or they say, well, what is the point where we could platform somebody who holds views that are even no, adjacent to this? No, you can platform unreasonable because people. Because you say, please. So, so you guys say, well, you know, there's no, there's no point. Destiny says there's no point at which you could platform this appropriately or it'd be very difficult to find a way that you could do this responsibly. Hassan, I, I, I guess your position is, you know, I'll debate these people, but whatever. A really good example, which I think sort of sheds some light on this, is, um, is anybody familiar with the scientist James Watson? James Watson mm -hmm. who discovered DNA. You may you know the this guy example. that's been outed by the entire academic James community. Watson. Are you going to try to say that the guy James that discovered Watson DNA said, is like an authority on this guy? guy. Oh my gosh. God. This so is James literal Watson. Nazi propaganda. Holy okay, shit. I refuse afterwards then, man. Refuse afterwards. Right? Honestly. Yeah. So gives there's just no self-control. monologue here. on like, Jesus no self -control. Christ. And you, and you want to know why? Because you know I'm about to completely blow up your whole no, I, because, because you're about to cite a guy that has no background in intelligence or IQ research whatsoever. And you're about to fall down on the authority of the fact that you discovered DNA. Like, that's an authority for him to speak on his knowledge. Please let Nick finish and Destiny can rebuttal. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Sheesh, for crying out loud. So James Watson, well-respected economist. He's lived his whole year. They say that his discovery where he won a Nobel Prize was maybe one of the most discover one of the most important discoveries in the history of science. Now I'm not a scientist, so I'm not one to speak, but he's respected, he's well regarded, he's earned his keep. Now, a couple of years ago, he said, and many others have said the same thing, that there are group differences in intelligence. And he said it as a passing remark, as part of a talk. It was a very passing comment. And by the way, the numbers are basically true. This is not really a controversial thing. People like Charles Murray, many others have talked about it. He said very simply, there are group differences. If you take the average of one group and you take the difference, or rather the average of another, there is a difference in IQ. He didn't say, therefore, he didn't say, and that means, and make a value judgment. He said those he differences have a genetic said, basis. This is something he didn't that's say there's happening. just he a difference said, they have a genetic basis. Excuse me. He simply said, this is something that is true. He got his Nobel Prize revoked. He got shut down from every university. He's not allowed to speak anymore. They're taking everything. This is one of the most famous, important scientists in the history of the world. And he issued a mea culpa. He said, I'm sorry. I was reckless. I didn't really mean that. But they completely deplatformed this guy. He actually... I don't think they took his Nobel Prize away. He had to sell it because he's literally running out of money because nobody will host him anywhere. He can't get a job in university. And so when you look at something like that, you really begin to wonder, at what point does this system tolerate any kind of dissent? You have to wonder, maybe maybe it's not so much uh, you don't see left-wing terrorism because it's not inherently violent, but because there's no reason for them to commit asymmetrical anti-state terrorism. A right-wing person is on the outs. They're on the fringe. Who do they have to look up to in media, government, anywhere? A left-wing person, you've got you've got all these major corporations. Are we going to do one point or is he just go off on my okay, well, like five minutes yeah, fucking talk? Like, like, holy let's shit. Let, like, I know this no, is like a shtick. Like, I, like I don't mind how, doing it one-on-one. I like one, how everybody like, else gets to talk as long as they Dude, want. Nick, wait, hold on. Nick, Nick, Nick. I will, I will bet you $500 right now. Do you want to bet on who's talked the most here? Nick, Nick, Nick. Do you want to bet on who's talked the most right now? You don't shut the fuck up, Nick. Nick. Okay, so for, for reference, for our last debate, Nick pulled the same thing too, where he said he felt like he talked for twice as much as me, and somebody went through and counted the hours, and he talked for two hours to the one hour of conversation that I actually yeah, had. Yeah, that's my show. Okay? That so, was my yeah. show. Okay, okay. This isn't you still said that you felt like you talked twice. Okay, guys, guys, please. This, this will get us nowhere. This, guys, please. Hey, 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 listen, please. Nick, wrap it up. Wrap it up, Nick. In the next 30 seconds, wrap it up. Destiny, rebuttal. Let's get back to the point. Let's wrap this point up, conclude, and let's get to the next point. All right? We're, we're, we're very behind. Okay, thank you. Destiny, please rebuttal. This guy's obviously not even listening, so... Sure. So well, what you're literally doing is like the like we can all go on Wikipedia and read an appeal to false authority. Just because you're the discoverer of DNA does not give you the ability to speak with any sort of authority whatsoever on intelligence research. That. Then why are you so upset that the scientific community was so outraged when he started making opinions or or making statements on the genetic heritability or whatever a fucking IQ?
It's I'm not saying that, that because of his position, his claim was particularly true or relevant. The point was to say— Wait, wait, no, no, wait. No, no, why are you surprised that his are Nobel was Are you going to let me answer the question you just no, asked? No, because if it takes you, you 20 fucking minutes to answer a pretty simple question, I'll let you do another fucking diatribe on some up. random fucking Nazi factoid. I'm just curious. Why do you the think that somebody— is, why Here's, here's why I bring it up. Here's why I bring it up. The point being is, here is somebody— We're not talking about the leader of the KKK. We're not talking about a neo-Nazi ideologue. We're talking about a well-regarded scientist— The fact that you're well-regarded means you have even more responsibility to your speech, claim, Nick. And even a, even a tiny little thing like that, he was completely obliterated and wiped out. The point was— Obviously, no dissent is tolerated by anybody. You say, well, it, we have to handle responsibly. No, hold on, no, wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, no, no, come on, dude. I can't, okay. dude. I can't let him just go on, dude. Holy okay. shit. Like, it's right. literal Thank race realism. Absolutely. So he didn't just make okay. one random comment. He literally said there was a genetic basis for differences in IQ. Which is correct. Black. Which is you don't correct. Know. Firstly, firstly, even if that was correct, he would know fuck all about it because he's not an intelligence researcher. I don't, maybe you don't believe in science. He's a genetics he's researcher. He discovered just DNA. He's so talking about that, a genetic claim. Okay, so do you think that every single person that studies DNA knows everything about DNA? Is that all just like one? Yeah, that's what I believe. Because, that's because that was uh, one chapter. I believe everybody because knows one everything. Chapter, exactly. Because that was one chapter in your sixth grade biology book. You think that every single person that has ever studied DNA. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, okay. I, I think all, all right, that. Cool. I think okay, all that's that. cool. All right, no, that's awesome. So maybe I can yeah. educate you or some of your yeah, audience yeah, here. Yeah, so intelligence research in and of itself is a massive fucking field that spans several disciplines between psychology, between biology, between fucking, between so many different fucking things that are involved in this, okay? And the people that are, the people that debate this are also multidisciplinary people that have spent their fucking lives researching this. The fact that you have discovered the double helix or the fact that you've made important contributions to certain types of DNA research doesn't give you the authority all of a sudden to speak on things related I to I never said that. I never said that. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait okay, so then answer this question. Hold on, wait, so answer this question. Me. Okay, answer, okay, so, okay, 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 let me like hear that. you. Let me ask you a question over here. Let me ask you a question over here. If you didn't say that, then why are you surprised when somebody that is held as an esteemed researcher or scientist starts making incredibly irresponsible statements out Outside of his field of expertise, why there are you surprised go. when the scientific community would disavow him? The point being is this. You just said it was an obviously <sighs> controversial and broad subject. He offered a view which is heterodox about that subject. And even in spite, and, and the point was to illustrate that he is not a political operative. He, he did not march at Charlottesville. He was not the leader of the KKK. This was somebody who was apolitical, a scientist. And he could not, again, offer a contrary opinion on a controversial scientific genetic matter without being completely wiped out. And again, it's not like he wrote a book about it. It's not like he wrote a book about, here's why these people are inferior. It's not like he delivered a lecture about it he your argument is supporting that my point of view that, that the fact that he was held on what his belief the fact was that he was the subject the fact that he you don't even let me finish the question right. both of you both of you both of you, no, both no, of you no. please uh calm down uh yes, Esmingo, please go ahead De destiny said that the reason that people were against him is because he was talking about something he wasn't educated in it didn't necessarily have to do with what if what he was saying was accurate or not is that that's not why he got wiped destiny? out that's not why i get noam chomsky talks about politics Noam Chomsky is a linguist. Does anybody say you can't have a job in a university because you talk about I, politics? I, I, I'm just well, saying. Well, there's an sorry. entirely different concept here. Noam Chomsky's written many books and conducted a fuckload of political research and has also taught political, uh, taught politics at the PhD level to James Watson hundreds of, DNA. if not thousands of fucking students. So it's Discovered a little different. DNA to say, like, doesn't mean you know anything about fucking intelligence. Just because oh Noam Chomsky wrote a book about politics doesn't mean, doesn't he, mean he knows about politics. <laughs> Yeah, because he's a fucking linguist, Destiny, by your standards. No, but yeah, but he has published papers relating to political he's things. Obviously, capable Nick's of educating people on on politics at Nick's at point institutions. Is not about that. You're missing. Uh, well, Nick's what point. is what is really the argument? I, Nick, I feel uh, Nick's this point. Is, I'm sorry. So here's for merely commenting on this. this yeah, James Watson this, was destroyed. Yeah. So here's the point. The but point is, is that. Wrong. The point it's is, is okay. that somebody who is held in very high regard, somebody who is very important to the scientific community, grossly stepped outside of his lane, his lane, and started to <laughs> offer, okay. yeah, and started to offer these explanations, Ridiculous. saying that like, well, the difference is an IQ between people sure. is genetic. This was a That's horribly just irresponsible race. statement. It empowers the fuck out of Nazi scum like fucking Nick. Oh. It is, it is not his area <laughs> of expertise. It is not Y'all something he was able to substantiate in any way, such or form. And the fact that you continue to appeal to, well, he was really important, only supports my argument. Of course, he was a really important. So so That's exactly saying, why people like this shouldn't be making these so types of statements. You're saying that the <laughs> statement that he made was untrue. 
like uh, on it's, top of it being outside of his area of expertise it's not something that, that he there studied were differences or, yeah. that were untrue it's not it something has. that he studied or he's qualified to comment on whether or not it's actually true no one knows the answer but right he now it's incredibly heated so why is this, uh, here's what i don't understand why can't we take away that uh that honor like why can't we take away that uh, like um you know his honorary degree or whatever the fuck they took away from him sorry his honorary titles awarded to him like, that's not no you, you don't understand the scope of what we're talking about yeah he well, can't get a job anywhere talking. he had to sell his nobel prize really? he was he's universally ostracized in the academic community i'm so sorry that i'm so sorry that people yeah, by and large have a negative that. opinion of people oh who are God. talking out of their asses when it you comes don't to understand things, you're, especially you're when it's a person in a position of authority you are who's using that position of authority in a dangerously irresponsible manner you are missing the point you're completely missing does not protect you from the freedom of consequences there's no Oh, oh, we're we're completely like, missing the okay. point on this. The, if it happens to the, point, the problem here is that Nick wants that person not to get any sort of Nick wants that person not to get fucking banished from society, not to even get criticized. That's the issue. <laughs> he can get criticized. He can get criticized. <laughs> okay. But but all look, right, are you the are you like, going wait, to be wait, the person who's, uh, who's like, now if I go and watch the Avengers the at the end of the month and I don't like it, should I be banished from society for voicing an uncon or, or rather an unpopular or controversial opinion? Because well, that's what I, you're I saying. The point is it's not simply a controversial opinion. Opinion. I mean, and the fact that you real. keep conflating it or the fact that you keep making it seem as though it's like you you keep minimizing the impact of saying something like uh, there are <laughs> genetic differences between intelligence oh. and IQ, a thing that is the justification for uh, the reason why all of these like unfounded fucking uh, scientific things that we uh, threw away like phrenology and shit and all the race realism that that that's now making a comeback with all the white nationalism that we see. The reason why the reason why it's not just a simple difference in opinion is because it is damaging and it literally fucking justifies the the ethno staters and the violent oh, no, it who want to take action wow. on no it doesn't it does not justify anything well why people why is no, you know, Hassan, it, it only know. justifies what, what, what they think if you agree with the premises they set up okay well, yeah i, I mean, don't I agree don't with those premises yeah. surely you don't either right so look right let's not talk about iq let's talk about height right? Different groups of people have different average heights. This is probably genetic. That's probably just the way things are, right? But that doesn't make them any less human. It doesn't Holy mean shit. that- Is Sargon going full uh, race Less human here? rights. I think it so. Doesn't, it doesn't, you can, you can sit in denial of whatever the, this thing say. And I don't even know why these things are like that, right? But there is no doubt that there are differences between groups of humans in various different factors. That, that is in doubt. That is a highly that, contentious point, Sargon. That's a Sargon. fucking stupid thing to say, Destiny. No, that's not. That there are over really 200. Thing to say. No, no, no. They're, just because there are some <laughs> traits that may or may not be fa uh, that may or may not be factored related to your fucking genetics doesn't mean that we can say something like intelligence, which is a highly polygenetic I'm not, I'm trait. Not about something that can be I'm talking about height. Okay, if you want to talk about height, nobody's going to disagree with you. But this is called a Martin <laughs> Daly, right? You've just conceded the whole point. You've Thank just you. conceded the whole point. So Thank wait, you. okay. So if somebody so were to make the argument, point. some people could have two hearts and some people could have one heart. And I go, well, what do you mean? You're like, well, some people are taller and some people are shorter. Do you uh, does that mean I concede that fucking point? Of course not. This is a fucking yeah, bitch. Yeah, just point. because you there might be variances in height between two different you groups. Why is the this subtle? You guys, dude, honestly, you guys should go fucking publish articles in Nature right now because this is such a heated debate in the fucking research community. You guys can solve it right now. Like. LOL, you guys think that some differences in, in IQ isn't genetic? Well, just look, some groups of people are taller than others. Oh, I've solved the whole fucking issue. If only science were that fucking easy. If only science were that fucking easy. Holy shit, why do we waste so no, much time relax, educating relax, people? Relax, We've got 22 year old relax, fucking relax, Nazis on fucking relax, YouTube relax. over here that are okay. educating everybody on how intelligence research works. Why, oh, okay. why are you getting so okay. upset about this? Right? Look okay, at this. Look at let's, this. Let's go ahead. Let's dial this back for a minute. Oh, I think it's Sargon's agree. argument, Sargon's argument agree, was that because there are differences like height that are naturally observable that vary between different groups of people based off of their ethnicity, then the assumption would be those there could also be other differences besides that. Is that the, what you're saying, point, Sargon? The point is, I mean, sure, I, and undoubtedly, okay, that's what you're I think it would be, okay. I think it would be against the theory of evolution if groups of people who had evolved in different situations didn't have physical differences. I think that would be an impossibility. But the point is, it doesn't matter because, I mean, for example, we don't kick people out of our society for being low IQ. We don't kick people out of society for being high IQ or anything. We don't do anything on the oh, no, axis no, of but, IQ. But I, I think matter. that you, I, I, know that I know what you're saying, okay? And I, I can see that line of logic. 
But I think that you can also very easily concede that if you have some sort of like scientific theory that shows that certain races are dumber than others, that's going to obviously influence the way that people are going to treat and legislate against those different races. I mean, well, I, I don't think we should have any kind of racial legislation. Well, well, that's the problem that I think sorry, uh, sorry that uh, that Destiny and Hassan have with these types of conversations is that they could lead to that legislation. I, mean, I, I, I don't, don't agree. Wanna, I think I, that we're. Well, I, 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 I think the only party. people doing racial that's, that's legislation at the moment are the left, and they seem to want to okay. adjust the balances. And the thing is, right? It's not even. It's not even that we. I mean, like the 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 numbers are what the numbers are. Wait, Why can you explain that? that? Way? Well, you said, I, I just I'm stupid. You, you guys know this. I'm not a very smart guy. Uh, can you explain what you meant when you said the only people doing racial legislation are on the left? Yeah. Affirmative action. Yeah. Do I? I mean, what do you? What do I? What, what sort of examples? Oh, would you okay. Make? All right. That's what he's... Do you think that that's corrective uh, no, legislation I don't, I don't even built think upon should... uh, like I identity I politics I from the past? No, You're like incapable of wait, just focusing wait, on wait the point. Wait a second. Wait a second. I don't think wait that's a, a valid axis. I, I don't right. think that we should get into the affirmative action debate because we do have another topic that we yeah, want to get into. Okay. Yeah, I just want to... And everybody else is going to have a big opinion because Sargon and Nick, and perhaps we do this as well, make a lot of points that in this like matter-of-fact way and it kind of goes unnoticed because, uh, again, they're, they're eloquent speakers and they get to go on for five and uh, sometimes ten, in Nick's case, uh, minutes in, uninterrupted. So I sometimes have to just kind of uh, ask them what they mean by that. Sure. Uh, I'm just a little confused, you know? I'm well, not, they, I, I, I do think that we can do a better job being more concise. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, 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 just to finish that point, the, the whole thing about, like, IQ, IQ's, IQ varies for many, many, many different reasons right and so even if race is a component it's really not a very important component when we know that for example in in my country the study was done working class people can suffer up to a 15 point iq depression just for being poor i mean it it strikes me that that is the first place we should look if we're looking to actually help people become more intelligent if that's a social goal we have then that's definitely something that we can talk about and we can look at and i agree we're not going to start like you know, discriminating against people racially or anything like that. I'm like, that is just the wrong thing to do, but destroying someone's life for, po for pointing out that these things are true or false or whatever. That's wrong, man. It, procedurally, that is just wrong. We shouldn't be destroying anyone's lives for so, opinions. They hold. I, I think that End there are two different, there are two different arguments being made here. Right. And I think destiny, there's the argument that his life should or should not be destroyed because he spoke out of his area of expertise and also his life should or shouldn't be destroyed because he spoke about something that could be dangerous to society as a whole and those are two separate discussions well here if i if i could just because i'm the one that brought up the example so let me because i i feel like we've really just lost and i will keep it brief i will have some brevity here the question was how do we platform people who are concerned about fertility rates, for example, in a responsible way. And Destiny says, well, I don't know how we could platform people who say we hate all Jews responsibly, or we have to exterminate you know, a certain group of people responsibly. I agree. There's no responsible way to platform an exterminationist. I agree with that. But the point I was trying to illustrate is the fact that even somebody who has some degree of legitimacy should maybe be afforded some degree of respect in society. They make a passing remark. Their, their event isn't even about this topic. The topic of the talk isn't even about this subject, but it comes up in conversation. And maybe you don't agree with it. Maybe it could lead to bad things. But he simply observes or gives his own opinion on a scientific matter. And maybe it's not his area of expertise. But he just mentions in passing, I have this heterodox opinion about this subject, of which, by the way, many IQ experts agree. So this is it not wasn't like it's in passing. It was one during radical. Lecture, by the way. It was passing. It wasn't. If you look, it was in a lecture. It was during a lecture. The way that he repeated true. them multiple times. So the point times. is, the, the really, really, delivered. are we really? Can we not can, handle can, it for more than two well, minutes let's, here? Let's, let's well, just like, stop he, right now. The thing is, he's like saying wrong things. Uh, this is so ridiculous. You just can't. You can't wait more than thirty seconds for the trying to downplay everything he's saying. He didn't say this in passing. He said it during his twenty eighteen documentary. He said it in during fucking lectures. He's repeated these on multiple times. That's why he's like problem. Show out for a second. Sure. Go ahead. Yes, Asmongold, please go ahead. So, it uh, like whether he mentioned it in passing or not, whether it was in his debate or not, I, I don't think this is, I don't think this conversation, this point matters. So, let's just skip it. 
Yeah, obviously. Going. Obviously, people are getting hung up on that. That's not my fault. Remember, well, you are also so getting hung up on it because you're now, using language to downplay the way that he expressed it. The, the point is simply to demonstrate. Okay. If you're saying, the point is to demonstrate, if you're saying, what is the responsible way to platform people? It appears that there is simply no tolerance. That was the point I'm trying to get across. Okay. Even if you're talking about somebody who is not an ideologue, like that they're not a Nazi or whatever, but you're not even willing to tolerate dissent on that level, that an expert in the field of science generally cannot make a claim which you disagree with, which you might think could lead to bad things and you disagree with, without his entire life being destroyed. That was the point. Okay. The point is to say that, you know, obviously dissent against the system, no matter how moderate, no matter how infrequent, no matter who's saying it, is not tolerated to any extent. That was the point. Not that he's a scientist and therefore he's correct. And the point was not even about race and IQ. It's about how can we express dissent in a way that is responsible and appropriate because the left seems to not tolerate any of it. Do you uh, feel like that his like and, and just to just to wrap this up, I don't know, Destiny yeah. or Hassan, if you guys want to have any yeah. closing. Let's as we free finish <laughs> that. Let's go ahead. As soon as you finish uh, your statement, I, I want to do the wrap up. As soon as Nick answers that, he, that'll be his wrap up. We'll, we'll go over to Sargon, Destiny, then Hassan, then let's move on. Okay. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I meant to say. The guy whose life got destroyed, it was me. By the way, he sold that Nobel Prize for like $5 million. So also, and he already, already agreed to appear in a documentary in like fucking 2018 already, like related to stuff like this. And he repeated the same views that he had that he first got in trouble for in that documentary. Do you think so, that, uh, mm -hmm. Nick, do you think that in any way it was irresponsible for him to express that? while it's not necessarily his extra uh, sorry his area of expertise i think that's absurd no i think okay. i think people give their unsolicited opinions on areas that are not their expertise all the time oh, what are we all doing here well, what are no, we all doing here if that's like he such a, a crime don't you know i don't i don't think that's entirely true because don't you feel like he has a responsibility as being somebody who is a scientist and whose opinion will by default be taken more seriously to take a larger amount of, uh, you know, caution whenever he's saying things like this that could be interpreted in a way. And I don't think you can necessarily treat the person who even, as you said, discovered DNA as just an average person who's talking about something that they don't know about, especially when it's so close to what he's actually so well known for. No, I, I don't think that's irresponsible at all. I, I think okay. people, I think it's irresponsible to not tell the truth, frankly. You know, so, our so society is falling apart he, because people prefer right. nice lies as opposed to hard truths. And okay, that's so, so, so you're saying what he said was true. Like that, <laughs> I that's am your, saying, oh, okay. I'm saying if he believes okay. what he's saying is true, it's irresponsible to not tell the truth. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead and we get some closing thoughts. Wait, from, okay. Yeah, wait, can I give a closing thought to that? Like, <laughs> well, can, so, can we do guy. Sargon, then you? <sighs> yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go. Sure. Um, the, the, the question about James Watson is it's a kind of red herring again, but it's the, the, the point really isn't the truth or not of the question of IQ. The, the point is he was absolutely demolished for, for saying things, even if it was in lectures and one, that are just politically incorrect. And it was this political incorrectness that got him demolished. It, we don't know. We're about like the, this is the point it's a it's still a, a huge field that has so much disagreement within it we haven't got a certain answer on this but for him giving one perspective that may or may not be correct he got absolutely smashed and that's that's the problem that's what we that's what nick was speaking to earlier about the the radicalization nostrilization and, and the demolition of people who hold these what are quite out there out their views his wasn't like he wasn't like he said he wasn't a nazi he wasn't like a kkk guy he wasn't you know picking up a gun like the christchurch shooter he was a professor and so now we're at the, we're at the point where we have to find a way of finding these lunatics and kind of rehabilitating them and i agree that people who want genocide obviously not them obviously not them they can just be like in the chat when they're watching or something and going yeah 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 you know gas everyone or whatever it is you know but get the people who are not advocating for that and ask them okay what is the concern that you have and what truth do you think you have and then we can analyze it and see if it's correct and then if there's something true about it then the onus is on us to take that into consideration like the birth rates in Denmark and whatnot. That is a true thing, and we should consider it. But the thing is, as soon as we start doing that, then it kind of undermines the foundations of a lot of leftist ideology. I mean, like Hassan earlier said, well, we'll just bring in people from elsewhere and they'll become like us. It's like, okay, but that's not happening in, in Britain in many parts, and it's not because they can't. 
but because they're not incentivized to be so because of the sheer number of people who have come in. And that's the, that's really the problem. It's the number rather than the, the like where they've come from. Um, but, oh, okay. And that's the, that's the true thing that I think needs to be spoken. Yeah, I, I, I do remember that statement. Yeah, Hassan. Well, actually, you know what? Let's not even get into that. It, it, uh, yeah, I, I was just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's um, go. Destiny, go ahead. Let's go in and have, let, let, let Destiny, please uh, uh, take your time. Say everything you need to. Same as Hassan. Uninterrupted, guys, please. Same respects. Go, go ahead, yeah, Destiny. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have a lot. I mean, we're, we're revolving around this one topic a lot of this James Watson guy. Like, when you're a scientific researcher, there are certain standards that we hold scientific researchers to. We rely on these people to give us truthful pieces of information because we can't do this on our own right we drive cars every day not because we are chemical engineers that can put together engines but because we rely on people getting you know the facts correct at a higher level before we ever get the actual product this is true in every single part of our lives we rely on people to know what they're talking about when it comes to policy we rely on people knowing what they're talking about when it comes to engineering when it comes to scientific theory when it comes to physics right when, when our microprocessors are put together um, these people are held to like a higher level of responsibility when it comes to public discourse because we look up to them so much so when you get somebody that is an esteemed professor or has done research or has stolen research or has done something in order to, to publish a finding that we consider very important, then it is absolutely critical that this person realizes that every statement they give is going to be extremely scrutinized and held to a very high standard. You absolutely have a responsibility, not only to public discourse, but maybe even to humankind as a whole, or at the very least to your own scientific community, to make sure that you are not irresponsibly disseminating horrible information that you have no right to talk about in a public forum. It's just absolutely horrible to do it. And I hope that, I, I know that most scientists, because most of them disavowed Watson when he did it, understand this incredibly important concept that is like the underpinning to how scientific people or communities function at least in, in this planet so you think he should have a higher uh i guess like expectation of like his yeah absolutely it's like it's it's a cornerstone like to a like scientific position. discourse okay. yeah that yeah okay. that, for, uh, yeah where we exist it's now it's not yeah. like they killed the guy they took well, away right. the honors like this is the thing i don't understand like if you're uh, not if you're well, if you're an institution that wants to maintain its integrity and you take away the honors uh from this dude that you you had honored originally for for going around and 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 damaging that institution, then yeah, that's completely understandable thing to do. Can I come back at that just for a minute? I, I do feel like also that is a little bit counter to what you were saying about like the whole like being able to, you know, support yourself and everything. I think like a very core tenet of socialism is being able to support yourself and speak out and not have to worry about that kind of stuff as much. And whenever this person like removing his honors, I think is absolutely downplaying what actually happened apparently is that he's unable to find a job, which destiny says is untrue, but let's assume that it is true. Whenever you're completely disbarred and removed from the society that you're able to make a living in, I think it's much more severe than just having your honors removed, especially whenever you're living and your means to support yourself and live uh, is, is, and is part of it. Well, I mean, like the thing is you have to look at it from the institution side as well. Like who are you going to force somebody to take on like this person who's kind of like ostracized no, themselves you're, from you're the side of the community? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's a two part thing. I just feel like, I, I feel like you can look at it from both directions. Yeah. And, I, well, I mean, uh, you I, can, I but like, yeah, like, so like, it would be like if let's say I'm in the game community and I'm like, I, I just don't think anyone Honestly, should play like, video the games ever. I said that is because mm -hmm. the like talks a lot about like socialist stuff. Sure. And yeah. I do feel like that was kind of a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry that um, I don't feel that bad for the race realist who sold his Nobel Peace Prize and okay. made a fuckload of money at the age of 90. And the and it's not like it's not like he's uh, he's he's rejected from society altogether. The institutions that had honored him in the past have taken away that honor. It's if if we if this is the price that people like Nick Fuentes cannot even come to terms with for someone who disrespects the scientific method and uses their position of authority to spread, uh, uh, you know, race realist bullshit, then I don't know what we can do. There's no corrective measures that are uh, appropriate. And the problem that I have with this entire conversation is that, like, uh, Nick and, and Sargon want to be the ones who put the corrective measures in place. They want to be the ones who, who decide what gets to be said and what doesn't. And that's what's really frustrating to me because Throughout the conversation, they tried to make it seem as hard as possible. With, with all of their might, they tried to make it seem as though communism and Nazism was equally <sighs> as damaging and equally as violent in regards to ideology. And, um, communism was and, and it's, it's very easy and demonstrably, uh, I mean, you can easily show uh, the, that this is not true. Agreed. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Well, that was, I, that I was a very nice, long discussion without any interruptions. You guys can learn from me and Sargon.
Okay, great. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next topic. Well, I, I hate I hate to do this, chaps, but it's gone four o'clock in the morning here. Okay, you gotta go. I have to duck out. I, I, I have really to leave in twenty ask. minutes too. I, okay, Starbucks then, is gonna okay, close. I need that, a hot chocolate. Okay. In, in that case, should we just skip to the last short thing for twenty minutes and, and wrap it up? Uh, do it. Sargon, if you're okay with that. Uh, on, honestly, it's nearly half four, so I'm I'm gonna have to flake. Okay, okay go. if, if that's the thanks, case, thanks, let's fine. just let's call it right uh, here. I mean, like honestly, we had a lot of discussions, and even though we only had three of the uh, planned topics, I think we talked about a good half dozen things that were really important. We had a lot of good discussions, and I think everybody probably learned something out of this. And so, thank you everybody for coming on and being part of this. I mean, it was a uh, huge success. I would was. consider this show a huge success. Yeah. So, thank you everybody for being part of it and I being agree. reasonable. And also, another thing that's really important is being willing to come to the table and talk to people who you might completely revile, completely disagree with, and still be willing to have a conversation and be relatively civil. That's really important. And I think that's what is going to lead to any sort of like positive change one way or another. I so thank you, guys. I completely thank agree with all that. Thank you very much for inviting Asmund, me. It's, thank it's been really good fun. Go ahead, yeah. so, it's been really good fun. I've, I've really enjoyed it. having the back and forth. I think it's been really valuable. Yeah, it's been. I'm th I'm th I'm thinking of uh, making this a once a month or once every six weeks thing, and uh, you know, bringing on new people, getting new perspectives, and you know, if if you guys would all like to come on again, more than welcome to. Um, Asmongold, thank you so much for co-hosting, guys. Asmongold has been such a good friend. He supported me, supported the show, supported everything. Nick Sargon, thank you for coming on. Destiny and Hassan, as always, thank you so much for supporting me as well. Um, and. I, th I think it was a great show. It was very positive. It was it was it was good vibes. You know, despite some of the arguments and disagreements, that you guys still kept it civil, kept it mature uh, to certain levels. Obviously, there was you know um, some banter back and forth, but I think that's natural and normal. Um, other than that, thank you so much, Sargon. I, I know your time zone is completely opposite from ours. Like you said, it's f or not. I guess not completely opposite. It's four a.m. over there. It's late. Thank you for making an exception, coming on and making that's time fine. for that. Nick, thank you for reaching out. Hassan and Destiny, as always, uh, thank you both so much, Destiny. Amazing guys, uh, please shout your channels out. I know, I know. Uh, Destiny, are you going live after this? Yeah, probably. Okay, guys, please check him out at Twitch.tv/destiny. That's D-E-S-T-I-N-Y. He's he's a great guy. Um, uh, past the politics and past everything else, he's a great dude, awesome person to game with. And in the politics uh, section, he's also a great guy, and he has a good heart and he has good intentions. Um, Hassan Abi, same thing. Twitch.tv says Hassan Abi. H-A-S-A-N-A-B-I. Um, also, it, you know, I'm trying to put the politics aside because I want you guys to see these people as human beings. They're good people. All of them. Good hearts. Hassan has a very good heart. Good intentions. I don't endorse this message, by the way, but. Okay, well then. Uh, yeah, me well, either. Here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. I know. Uh -huh. wow. I'm saying. I know Destiny Great, and Hassan. You don't, you don't want to say these things. Just for the record, well, you, you don't want to say record saying these things. I'm just going to no put class. that out there. No class, okay, then, okay, you know what? I'll keep it simple. <laughs> Twitch.tv is just me. I'm so sorry. Like, that my, uh, my intentions were, you know what? It doesn't matter. Twitch.tv. Here we go. Listen, you can do you. Okay, I love you, buddy. Twitch.tv is just Hassan Abi, guys. Please check him out. Um, Nick, I believe you're having a show after this, correct? That's right. Yeah. America First with Nicholas J. Fuentes. I'll be going live uh, probably in 10 minutes or something. Okay, and what is you your Twitch? Uh, well, it's not on Twitch, but my Twitch is Nick J. Fuentes. Awesome. Um, if you want to shout out your YouTube or whatever you do outside of this, you're more than welcome to. All right. Yeah, well, thanks. I'll be live Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. America First with Nicholas J. Fuentes, just a political podcast, and I'll be going live, like I said, about 10 minutes after this. Okay. And then Sargon, um, thank you for being here as well. Um, you're, you're, you're actually very calm. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, I've had a really good time. <laughs> it's, it's been really good fun having the back. Um, my YouTube channel is Sargon of a Cad. If you put it in the Google machine, you'll probably find me. Um, and yeah, I, I I consider myself just a liberal centrist. And you know what's funny is that like 20 years ago, I was I was firmly defending the left wing from the evangelicals when I was arguing with people on the internet. And now it's very interesting how I'm defending like the right wing from the left. I, it's I, it's I've like you never had any principles at all. That's, well, no, I'm my sorry. principle is to to actually stick up for the people being bullied. Yeah, the poor Nazis who are being bullied. No, 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 I don't yeah, they are. Guys, they are guys, being that's that's like, right. This is topic I mean, four that's now. literally yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, but when they come to bully you, I'll stick up.
You, you hear that, Hassan? He says, well, when people come to bully you, he'll Thanks, stick up for buddy. you, Hassan, too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. People do bully me. It's usually the Nazis, but it's okay. I, I think I, I can deal with it. On my I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say something that I hate myself for saying, but you know what? I actually believe Saga when he says that. Because when I got banned from Twitter, fucking slippery fucking Nick here, along with a whole bunch of other people, celebrated the fuck out of it. When Sargon got banned for Twitter, I told him I'm sorry, and it sucked, and he thanked me for it. And I think when I got banned, I think he said something similar about me. So, amen, Sargon, yeah. even though I hate you. I, I'm... I'm I believe what you would say. Plan. And I, I just want to say, I, I, from Twitter. How about that? No, no, no. I, and I, the thing is, it's I legit believe that experience. you guys have approached this with good intentions as well. Like, I, I honestly believe you, Hassan, you have good intentions. I just think that you're falling into a worldview that is, I honestly, kind of destructive. And Destiny, there's like, when, Destiny's one when, of the best debaters I've ever seen. He's unironically one of just the best debaters in format, if nothing else. So, you know, it's it's been a real pleasure to be in like good company. Honestly, it really has. But um great. right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot yeah. off, but thank um, you again for everything. Yeah, everyone. thank you guys so much. Have a great, great night. Asmongold, once again, thank you so much for co hosting. I'll see you next time, yeah. hopefully on the show as well. Uh twitch.tv says Asmongold, twitter.com says Asmongold, correct? That's it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, thank you guys. Have a great, great night. I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.